And good morning, everybody. We welcome you to the Indian Gym in Broken Bow, Nebraska, the site of the first ever Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Hi, everybody. I'm Brent Apperson, Sports Director at Casing and I KBBN Radio. Throughout the day, I'll be joined by Jeremy Scheip and Gavin Higgins as we bring you live video stream coverage of the first ever Girls Basketball Showcase. And again, the site will be the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow. What a great event. You can kind of feel the excitement brewing as the fans continue to come in. And you know that this is a special event and a special day. You just get the feel of it as you walk into the gym today. We've got four great girls basketball matchups. We're going to start with a top 10 battle between number one ranked Pleasanton out of class D1 against the number nine ranked team out of class C1, Adams Central. That will start our day, and then that'll be followed by North Central taking on Malcolm. The third match of the day will be Mullen against Louisville, and then it will conclude with Broken Bow against Oakland Craig. All four games today will be on our live video stream, which you can access on our Facebook page, YouTube, and Twitter feeds. Again, I'm Brent Apperson. Great to have you with us. And as you view the video stream for our first game coming up, we want to say thanks to these sponsors that you'll see flashing across the screen in front of you today. And they include Mead Lumber, Palmer Monument, Geared for Sports, Agland ATV, Grocery Cart, Insurance of the Heartland, Shelter Insurance, Biero Wireless, Downey Drilling, Triple Blast Boutique, Pleasanton Processing, Bubba's Smoke Shack, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, BD and Broken Bow, and River Stop Convenience Plaza. All right, we welcome into the broadcast area the guy who will help me call the first game for you today, and we say good morning to Gavin Higgins. Hi, Gavin. I am giddy with excitement. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. First walking in here, uh, of course, the gym was empty when I first walked in to help set things up here in the booth. And as fans started to come in, the music starts playing. It just has that feel kind of almost like the state tournament a little bit. It just kind of has that, like, here we go. These are going to be some big matchups and a great one to start us off. And, and Coach Cooksley, when he was putting this together, talked to you, Brent, about how – you know, people want to see different styles of matchups. They don't want to see D1 versus D1, D2, D2. They want to see, like, what we've got in front of us. Number one, D1, Pleasanton, and number nine, C1, Adams Central. This is going to be a phenomenal matchup. Yeah, you bring up Kelly Cooksley. He's the head basketball coach for Broken Bow, and this is really kind of his brainchild. Uh, he, like so many, have attended the Heartland Hoops Classic for the past several years, which is held at the Heartland Event Center in Grand Island and, of course, features some of the top boys basketball programs, not just across the state, but even across the nation. Mm -hmm. And as he was sitting at those and watching them, he's like, man, wouldn't it be cool if we did something like this around girls basketball? Now, these games were originally to be played at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, but unfortunately, because of the COVID situation, they had to move venues. So Broken Bow opened up their gymnasium. All of the teams competing said, yes, that will be a fine venue. They're all here today. And as you mentioned, it should be a great day of basketball. As we start to think about our first matchup of the day, wow, what a matchup. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a great way to get us started. Pleasanton, we know about what they have done in the past several years. Class D1, their number one ranked. They went through last season undefeated, won a state championship. They actually come in with a 40-game winning streak coming into today. Now, that's a little bit shy of the state record, which is 111 <laughs> in a row by Guardian Angels Catholic, but still that 40 number, Gavin. What an amazing run that Coach Arnsdorf and his girls have had at Pleasanton High School. Yeah, they really have. And you, and you think about, you know, teams like, like GACC, you talked about that 100 plus uh, winning streak that it's going to be hard to match when you talk about, you know, the area of, you know, GACC being able to pull kids from all sorts of different cities. Pleasanton really doesn't have that advantage, but Arnsdorf has really coached these girls really, uh, really well over the last few years, not only to, you know, continue to shoot the ball even when you're having a bad shooting night, but he hangs his hat on defense. Of course, uh, Coach Arnsdorf was at Sand Hills Thadford when I was there, uh, when my sisters were there, and that is what he preached day in and day out. You know, not always are you going to have a great offensive night, but defensively, you can hang your hat on the defensive side of things, and you can uh, you, you win games on defense. And I think when you look back at uh, last night's game, Broken Bow was able to squeak one out against Holdridge. They did not have a good shooting night, but defensively, 
that's what kept him in the game and allowed the victory, and, and that is something that Coach Arnsdorf preaches every single day to these girls. Well, Pleasanton has not lost since the semifinals of the 2019 state tournament. Meanwhile, Adams Central, 7-4 and four coming into today's game. They were a state qualifier last season in Class C1, knocked off Broken Bow in the C1 district final to get to the state tournament a year ago. They made it to the semis. They lost to North Bend in the semis, but then defeated St. Paul in the consolation game last season at the state tournament. This a very quality team. Some key contributors from that state tournament run a year ago are back for Adams Central this year. They're off to a 7-4 and four start, but when you look at the teams that they've lost to, teams like Broken Bow, they've lost to O'Neill. Those are top 10 ranked teams in Class C1. So this is a very quality team, a quality program. They're top 10 ranked in C1 by the Omaha World Herald. And, boy, again, it just sets up to be a really great matchup. Yeah, when you look at Adam Central's schedule, you just talked about they lost to O'Neill and Broken Bow their last two games. But 11-0, 10-1, earlier loss to York Class B school at 11-0. This team, while their record may not jump out at you, has been tested 100% all year long. A big victory earlier in the year against Wood River in overtime by one point. So Adams Central, while you know their schedule you know screams to you, while we haven't had the greatest year, that is don't look at it because this is a phenomenal team with a lot of talent coming back. Well, it's going to be a lot of fun, and we'll have all four games on a live video stream for you today on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. We're getting close to the start of game one of the Girls Basketball Showcase. Pleasanton and Adams Central coming up. This is the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. And again, we're here at the Indian Gym in Broken Bow, Nebraska, side of the first ever girls basketball showcase, getting ready for our opening game of the day, Pleasanton against Adams Central. And let's run down your starting lineups now. First off for Pleasanton, Casey Pierce, a 5'8 senior. Natalie Siegel, a 5'6 senior. Isabel Pates, a 5'9 senior. Katie Lindner, 6'0 senior. And Chelsea Fisher, a 6'2 junior. The head coach is Jordan Arnsdorf. Some of the stat leaders for Pleasanton coming in, Isabel Pates averaging 12 points a game, as is Katie Lindner. The leading scorer is Casey Pierce, averaging around 14 points per game. And Chelsea Fisher also in double figures at 10 points per game. 
now for Adam Central. Their starting five will be this. Jessica Babcock, a 5'7 junior. Libby Trosh, a 5'7 junior. Rachel Gooden, a 6'3 sophomore. Caitlin Scott, 5'8 senior. And Cami Wellenseek is a 5'11 senior. The head coach for Adam Central is Evan Smith. We didn't have any statistics available to us for Adam Central, but I had the opportunity to see this team at the end of last season when they played Broken Bow in the Class C1 District Final. Libby Trosh is a very quality basketball player. She and Babcock present a very good backcourt for Adam Central. But Gavin Higgins, what I'm interested to watch is the battle on the interior. You've got Chelsea Fisher for Pleasanton, who is 6'2". Rachel Gooden is 6'3". That battle on the interior will be fun to watch in game one. Yeah, you expect the ball to move around a lot, and I'm sure that that's what both teams are going to try to do is enter it into the post, trying to get those shots that they can around, uh, around the hoop. But we know both teams can shoot extremely well from the outside. If you look at Adam Central, they've been putting up 58, 63, uh, 46 points, 48, uh, 41 points, excuse me, and a loss to Broken Bow. So the outside shooting will also come into play. Pleasanton, you know they can shoot well. Uh, over 70 points in a couple of games, uh, one against Silver Lake. They've put up 59 against Ravenna, uh, 66 against Anselmo Myrna. So this is a game that you expect to just launch up there and when it comes to points, and it is going to be a phenomenal matchup between these two. Our partner for video streaming that we are doing this season on Central Nebraska Sports Source is Viera Wireless, and we want to thank them for providing high-speed wireless internet to video stream high school sports along with some of our radio broadcasts on KCNI KBBN. Stop by their store in Broken Bow at 841 South D Street or call 872-1535 to find out how Viera Wireless can provide you quality services with a plan to fit your needs and budget. Here we go. The tip is on the way, and it's controlled by the Pleasanton Lady Bulldogs. Pleasanton with the basketball as Adam Central matching up man-to-man -man defensively. They'll dump it down low. Here's the kick out, a three on the way, and that is in and out, no good. And they battle for the rebound, and getting the rebound is Fisher. The putback is no good, but Pleasanton there again for the offensive board, and they maintain possession. Lady Bulldogs swinging it around the perimeter, trying to attack the middle of that Adam Central defense. They dump it down low. Backing in is Pierce. Pierce will kick it off, kick it out. This is Katie Lindner with it. She'll dump it back down low. Taking the shot, Fisher off the back iron, no good. Again, they fight for the rebound, and again, it ends up in the hands of Pleasanton. So the Lady Bulldogs getting another crack on the offensive end. Just over a minute gone here in game one of this girls basketball showcase. Isabel Pates looking to drive, she'll score, and she's fouled. Great attack there by Pates, but it's all set up from those rebounds from Pleasanton. Adam Central not quite getting the box outs they needed. Three rebounds for Pleasanton on one possession to open things up, and that'll give them opportunity to uh, have a three-point play here. Pates makes good on the free throw. So Pleasanton takes the early lead, 3-0, with just over a minute gone here in game one of this girls' basketball showcase. Some backcourt pressure applied by the Bulldogs. Patriots able to break it, though, and a reach-in foul is going to be called against Pleasanton. Rachel Gooden had leaked out to the offensive end, and probably a good foul by Pleasanton because if Gooden catches, she probably scores. So the Patriots will inbound it. With the basketball is Caitlin Scott. Scott will give it up. Going baseline with it is Babcock. They get the ball inside and able to score is Cami Wellenseek, 5'11 senior. And the Patriots are on the board. Pleasanton three, Adams Central two. A minute and a half gone here in this opening quarter. Pass deflected out of bounds. It'll stay with Pleasanton as the Bulldogs will inbound on the baseline. Pates to throw it in. Make that Siegel to throw it in. And the inbounds pass comes to Linder. Pleasanton basketball, they lead by one. Trying to drive is Pierce. Pierce will give it up. As again, Pleasanton swinging it around the perimeter, looking to attack.
the middle of this Adams Central defense. They try the lob inside to Pierce, but the pass too high to handle as Pleasanton turns it over. Again, the backcourt pressure applied by the Lady Bulldogs as Adams Central will look to take it the length of the court. Caitlin Scott sends it back off to Trosh. Now ahead to Babcock. Babcock throws it away. The pass deflected up into the air and into the hands of Katie Lindner. Lindner will pass it off to Pierce. Spin move in the lane, puts it up, but first a whistle and they're gonna call a travel as Pleasanton turns it over. Good move there, but now that defense was right in front and caused a little bit of an issue. Just unable to get it up with, in time was Pierce. Good defense by Adam Central. Opening quarter, 5.39 to go, and there's a steal in the backcourt by Pleasanton, and then they throw it away and give it right back to Adam Central. Well, as we came on the air, we kind of talked about how these two teams definitely know how to play defense, and <laughs> we're seeing that early in the first two and a half minutes. Babcock into the lane, finds the open player, knocking it down well and seek again. The 5'11 senior puts Adam Central in front, four to three. Skip pass over to Siegel. Siegel will put it on the floor, bring it to the elbow, over to Pates, and now in the corner it goes for Pleasanton. Skip pass across, here's a three on the way, and that's off, no good. With the rebound, Libby Trosh for Adam Central. Pass deflected, knocked out of bounds. Good active hands by Katie Lindner as the ball goes out of bounds, but will stay with Adam Central as they'll inbound on the side. Adam Central with the basketball. Pleasanton picks up the defense in the half court. Skip pass across to Trosh, and now Babcock between the rings. A three on the way, and it is good! Knocking it down, Lauren Scott, 5'8", sophomore who has checked in, and Adam Central leads 7-3 over Pleasanton. To the elbow area is Lindner, gives it up. Now with it, Pierce. Pleasanton looking for Fisher inside. They find her now, and then she gives it up to Lindner. Shot up, and we've got a foul coming against Adam Central. Lindner able to get inside. Katie is fouled, and she'll step to the free throw line. Four twenty-one to go here in the first. By the uh, by, the way, foul committed against Lauren Scott, five-eight sophomore, her first. As the free throw attempt by Lindner is off the mark, no good. Again, four twenty-one to go in the opening quarter. Adam Central with the lead, seven to three. At the line, Katie Lindner. Second free throw on its way, and it is no good. Missed them both, and the rebound pulled down by Lauren Scott. Pass ahead to Babcock, who cannot hang on to it. Glances off her hands out of bounds, and the ball belongs to Pleasanton. The press has worked pretty well for Pleasanton, and Adam Central's been able to break it a couple times and get some easy shots on the offensive end, but those turnovers right now, Pleasanton's got to take advantage of. Natalie Siegel with it, top of the key. Pleasanton again looking for something on the interior, but Adam Central really kind of sagging off even a little bit with their man-to-man, -man, trying to guard the inside against Pleasanton. Here's a three on the way, and that is off the back iron, no good. They fight for the rebound, and coming out of there with it is Katie Lindner. Nice pass inside, the shot up is off the mark, no good. They fight for the loose ball, it's still loose. Still loose on the floor, they'll go to the floor to fight for it, and a jump ball will be called. Possession arrow will give it to Adam Central. So Rachel Gooden coming back into the lineup for Adams Central. Katie Kimberly is in as well. Trosh and Babcock remain on the court along with Lauren Scott for Adams Central. Again, the backcourt pressure applied by Pleasanton. Adams Central trying to break it with the pass as they send it over to Babcock. Now back to Trosh. Trosh with the dribble will bring it across half court with three and a half to go here in the first. Again, Adam Central with the lead, seven to three. Trosh open for a three, and it is good! Libby Trosh from downtown. 
Adam Central shooting the ball well in this opening quarter, and they now lead by seven. Pleasanton basketball, Katie Lindner looking to drive inside, puts it up a little bit short, no good, and the rebound controlled by Adam Central. They'll look to run. Here's Lauren Scott. Ball knocked away from behind, and Pleasanton comes away with it. Lady Bulldogs with the basketball, crossover by Pierce, spin move in the lane. Staying with her though, Trosh, she'll give it up. The shot up from deep, it's off the mark, no good. Rebound fought for, and we're gonna get another jump ball. This time, the possession arrow will point to Pleasanton. Getting shots up, just can't quite get them to fall yet. Another substitution coming in for the Patriots. Brianna Stroh, 5'9", junior, will come in. Trosh will get a break. Inbounds pass comes to Katie Lindner. Lindner off to Molring, who is into the game now for Pleasanton. Molring will put it on the floor, dribble to her left, and then hand it off to Pates. Back to the top of the key for Lindner. Two and a half to go here in the opening quarter. Adam Central 10 and Pleasanton 3. Pierce looking to drive, now gives it up. Well, Adam Central has really been playing some tough man-to-man -to -man defense as Pleasanton tries to attack it now as we near the two-minute mark here in the first. Pass down low, good receive by Pierce, and she took an extra step. Well, Casey got bumped a little bit as she tried to make her move to her left, and the official calls the travel as Adam Central has the ball, and they throw it away on the inbounds pass. Pierce takes it away in midair. So we'll see what Pleasanton can do with two minutes left, and they throw it away. With the steal, Lauren Scott sends it ahead to Babcock. Babcock in the lane, has it blocked, but a foul will be called. I think that one's gonna go against Siegel, just her first team second for Pleasanton, but will put Babcock at the line. Babcock to the free throw line, shooting two. And the first is good. Well, at, Gavin, if you're Adam Central, uh, I mean, this game could not start any better for you. Yeah, shooting it really, really well, able to break the press. A couple of turnovers here on some missed passes, but the thing is, is even when they've turned it over, though, Pleasanton hasn't been able to capitalize and go on the other direction on the offensive side. A couple of three-pointers from Scott and Troush have really kind of extended this lead. Babcock makes the second. So with a minute 50 left to go in the first, Adam Central leading 12 to three. Pleasanton scored those three points early, but has been cold since. Here's a three, that's off the mark, no good. They fight for the rebound, and it's controlled by Libby Trosh, and then a timeout taken by Adam Central as Trosh gets trapped in the corner. A minute 37 left to go, first quarter. It's Adam Central 12, Pleasanton 3. This is the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. So after the timeout, Adam Central with the basketball, Trosh to throw it in, enters it into Wellenseek. With it now, Kimberly. Kimberly will hand it off to Trosh. Trosh being pressured as she tries to break the timeline and now throws it ahead to Caitlin Scott. Back over to Trosh, a minute 20 left to go here in this opening quarter, and a steal by Katie Lindner. Lindner to the rim, layup good. And finally, Pleasanton back on the board as we near a minute to go here in the opening quarter. Pass ahead to Wellenseek, skips it across. Now it's Kimberly with it, pull up jumper, short, no good. Rebound controlled by Natalie Siegel of Pleasanton. Siegel sends it off to Molring for a three, off, no good. Rebound though, Pleasanton and the putback is good. 
Give it to Fisher. A run from Pleasanton here in the final minute and a half, and they are to within five. Now the backcourt pressure applied by the Lady Bulldogs. Kimberly will send it ahead to Trosh. They got a hurry to break the 10, and they just do. The lob ahead to Caitlin Scott, and then the pass intended for Gooden rolls out of bounds. The ball goes back over to Pleasanton, and Gavin, this is a nice little run by the Lady Bulldogs to close out the opening quarter. Yeah, really have been held, have been really cold here to start, but now that's a great way to start building momentum as you head toward the second quarter, able to kind of cut back into this lead. Regan Weisdorfer has checked in now for Pleasanton as we play out the final 30 seconds. Pleasanton with the ball. Fisher dumps it down low, intended for Molring, but Adam Central knocks it away. Babcock lobs it over to Scott, saves it from going out of bounds into the hands of Trosh. The runner in the lane is off the rim, no good. Rebound good and putback wouldn't go. And the rebound to Pleasanton with eight seconds to go. Six and now five to go in the quarter and a travel gonna be whistled against the Bulldogs as Adam Central will have 4.7 seconds to work with before the quarter is over and they will inbound on the side. Caitlin Scott, 5'8 senior, will throw it in. Trosh handles it. To Babcock, two seconds to go. She'll throw it up at the buzzer, and it is no good. So in game one of the first ever girls basketball showcase at the end of a quarter, it's Adams Central 12, Pleasanton 7. This is Central Nebraska's Sports Source. And we come back out as we get ready to start the second quarter. Game one of this girls basketball showcase. Adam Central with the ball and the lead as we start quarter number two. Patriots up 12 to seven. Trosh, a three on the way, and it is off the mark this time. No good, they fight for the rebound and able to pull it down is Chelsea Fisher for Pleasanton. At the other end, Katie Lindner. Lindner gives it up to Pierce. Pierce dribbles to her right where she'll be checked by Trosh. Just underway, second quarter, Adams Central 12 and Pleasanton 7. Pierce on the pass fake, drives baseline, throws it out, pates the open look. It's off the back iron, no good. They fight for the rebound. Oh, wow, what a save by Siegel. Oh. And that went up on the rim and almost went through the hoop. <laughs> and now a loose ball at the other end. The ball knocked around. Trosh right at midcourt, able to save the possession as she finds Scott with it. The pass intended inside for Gooden, knocked out of bounds, and they'll say it goes off of Pleasanton. Can't believe that almost went in. <laughs> well, that was just a wild little sequence, wasn't it? <laughs> Adam Central with the ball. Patriots owning a five-point lead as we have played about a minute here in the second quarter. Trosh, another look for three. It's good. Libby Trosh, another one from downtown. Adam Central, 15, Pleasanton, 7. Pates will dribble to her right, gets into the lane, and then leaves it for Pierce for the three. It's off the mark, no good. But the long rebound chased down by Pleasanton. Lindner to the rim, puts it up and scores. Katie Lindner, the six-foot senior with the score, and now a steal by Lindner. Lindner had it taken away. The ball is loose and finally controlled by Pleasanton. Pass inside to Pates, puts it up and scores. Adam Central 15, Pleasanton 11 as the Bulldogs have climbed to within four. Pleasanton fans in attendance starting to pick up the chant of defense and they force a turnover. 
Adam Central did not break the half court line in the 10 second count and Pleasanton has the ball. Really good defense, just so much pressure forcing that ball to go back into the backcourt as they were straddling the line and instead of stepping across into that trap, she decided to go back into the backcourt and that forced that 10 second call. So Pleasanton with the ball, trailing by four. The lob inside to Fisher in traffic. Somehow she catches it, but has the shot blocked and taken away by the Patriots. Libby Trosh will lead the break back the other way. Trosh will bounce it over to Scott. Scott skips it back over to Babcock. Babcock on the shot fake, goes inside, puts it up. Short, no good, and a rebound controlled by Pleasanton. Lady Bulldogs with the ball, down by four. 5.35 to go here in the second quarter. Linder will look to drive, dumps it down low to Fisher, she scores! And the Bulldogs are the within two. Again, that backcourt pressure applied by Pleasanton starting to bother Adam Central a little bit now as we play in this second quarter. Libby Trosh, and now they send it out to Babcock. Babcock checked by Siegel, back to Trosh, Adam Central. Gets it to the high post, but the ball knocked away. Trosh looked for three, short, no good. And the rebound controlled by Casey Pierce. Under five minutes to go. Pleasanton with the ball down by two. Katie Lindner sends it inside to Fisher. Outside it goes. And now Pierce top of the key. Casey will look to drive, gets to the rim. The shot up, rolls off the rim, no good. They fight for the rebound. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by who? They're going to say it's off Pleasanton and Coach Arnsdorf wants a timeout. Boy, it's been a great start to this girls basketball showcase. First half of game one, 4.41 to go in the second quarter. Adams Central 15, Pleasanton 13. This is the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. to go second quarter. Game one of this Nebraska girls basketball showcase. Inbounds pass for Adams Central as we come back to action out of the timeout and Adams Central turns it over. Well, if there's a difference that you feel from quarter number one to quarter number two, Gavin, it's the way the Pleasanton defense has really started to kind of make some things happen here in this second quarter. Yeah, not only that, but their their good defense has turned into better offense. A lot of long shots, maybe not quite uh, the shots they were looking for in the first uh, first quarter. This time they're getting a lot more layups, a lot more easy jumpers, and that's created uh, the ability to cut into this lead and possibly get close to tying it. Casey Pierce gets into the lane. The shot wouldn't fall, but gets her own rebound. Molring back into the game, drives the ball loose, picked up by Siegel, back into Molring. Molring in traffic, puts up the shot and she will be fouled. So Haley Molring will step to the line. I think they're going to no, say it was on the floor. They're going to say it was on the floor, okay. Yeah, Pleasanton has been whistled for only two fouls here in this first half. Adam Central only three. From that perspective, it's been a very well clean mm -hmm. played game up to this point. Pates with a basketball, trying to drive and oh, reaching in and forcing a jump ball for Adam Central was Brianna Stroh, but the possession arrow is going to point to Pleasanton. That was really good getting, there, getting her hand in there, just putting it right on top of the ball and holding it and waiting until she came back down to the floor. 
Adam Central 15, Pleasanton 13. Entry pass into Fisher. Fisher guarded by Gooden, trying to find Molring coming down the lane, but she loses the ball out of bounds. And Adam Central will take over with four minutes left to go in the first half. Again, Adam Central leading 15 to 13. Pleasanton scored early to lead 3-0, but since that point, Adam Central really has led, well, for the remainder of the first yeah, half. Yeah. yeah. Libby Trosh had the ball knocked away. That's loose on the floor and then picked up by Adam Central. Caitlin Scott advances the basketball. Gives it up to Lauren Scott, who finds Libby Trosh. Well and seek, kick out, Scott. Back to the other Scott. And now Scott again. <laughs> if I just say Scott, there's a chance I'll get the name right. Nearing three and a half left to go here in the first half. Adam Central 15, Pleasanton 13. Wellenseek the look from the high post. And Cammy Wellenseek knocks down the shot to put Adam Central back up by four. Six points for Wellenseek. Pates lobs it for Fisher. Good catch and finish. And Pleasanton right back to within a bucket. Wellenseek with the basketball. Here's Scott with it. This is Lauren Scott. Touch pass out to Trosh for a three. In and out this time, no good. Ball ping pongs around and into the hands of Molring. Molring across half court. Out to Pates. Pates will look to drive and now Pates again at the top of the key. A three is on the way. It's good! Isabel Pates, the 5'9 senior from downtown. And Pleasanton has taken the lead at 18 to 17. At the other end, good and good move as she banks it off the window and scores. And she is fouled. Great move there by Gooden. Just taking that right to the hoop immediately and that's foul number one on Fisher. But if it feels like Pleasanton is getting all of the rebounds, they almost are. They're out rebounding Adam Central 14 to 5. Two and a half minutes to go, first half. Adam Central back in front as Gooden goes to the line. Free throws good. So your score now, Adam Central 20 and Pleasanton 18 as we play out the final two and a half minutes of the first half. Adam Central showing a little zone now as Pates. We'll send it to the top of the key. The entry at the high post deflected and knocked into the hands of Trosh, who sends it ahead to Babcock. Babcock going to challenge and ends up bouncing it off her leg out of bounds. So Pleasanton with the basketball. Boy, what a great first half in this game one of the first ever Nebraska basketball showcase. Adams Central and Pleasanton. Adams Central, Class C1. Pleasanton, Class D1. And Adams Central leading 20 to 18 as we now play out the final two minutes of the half. Siegel sends it inside. Now back outside to Pates. Touch pass over to Pierce. Skips it across to Siegel again. Lindner at the high post turns and faces and now gives it up. Pleasanton just sending it around the perimeter, trying to look for something on the inside. Now they get it to Linder in the lane. She'll drive, and the ball is just taken away by Gooden. Adam Central looking to run. Babcock, oh, the pass deflected by the foot of Siegel. And if Siegel doesn't reach out and kick that one away, Adam Central probably would have had a layup. A really good job getting her hand in there. Thought maybe she was thinking about taking the charge, but doing a really good job of getting rid of it early was Adam Central and forced that defensive play. Trosh throws it into Babcock, back to Libby. A minute 20 to go in the half. This is Libby Trosh. She's had a couple of big threes in this first half, but Pleasanton out to check her here. Now she's going to get a look this time, and it's good again. On cue, Libby Trosh with another three. Or was it a two? They're putting two on the board. Foot, I guess, was on the line. So they score Adam Central 22, Pleasanton 18. Pleasanton with the ball, 54 seconds to go in the half. Pierce is going to shoot a three. That's off the mark, no good. Trying to save it is Lindner, but she can't get there in time. Ball goes back over to Adam Central. 47 seconds left to go in the first half. 
Adam Central 22 and Pleasanton 18. Again, backcourt pressure applied by the Bulldogs. Adam Central throws it away. So Pleasanton will get another chance with 38 seconds to go here in the first half. Adam Central will back off and pick up the defense in the half court. 30 seconds remaining first half. Adam Central 22, Pleasanton 18. Siegel gives it up to Pates in the corner. Skips it across, Pierce with it now as we've got 15 seconds left to go in the half. The open look for three, this is Siegel off the back iron, no good, long rebound being chased down by Pierce. Under 10 seconds to go in the half. Pierce, nice pass oh, inside pass. to Lindner, who lays it up and in. One second to go, and that's the end of the first half. Well, partner, I don't think you can be disappointed <laughs> with the way the first ever girls basketball showcase has started. At the end of the first half, your score, Adam Central 22, Pleasanton 20. We'll step away for a moment. We'll give Gavin an opportunity to calculate and add up the individual scoring and some of the other numbers. And then we'll come back and give those to you a little bit later as we work our way through halftime now. This is the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase, a live video stream on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.
first ever girls basketball showcase. Great to be with you here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source, Casey and I, KBBN Sports, providing a live video stream of all four games today. Our first game, Pleasanton and Adams Central, a great opening half. Adams Central leading 22 to 20. And as you watch it on our Facebook page or Twitter or YouTube or any of our social media platforms, we want to say thanks again to the wonderful sponsors who are flashing across your screen as you view the action today. And for this game, they include Mead Lumber, Palmer Monument, Geared for Sports, Agland ATV, Grocery Cart, Insurance of the Heartland, Shelter Insurance, Viero Wireless, Downey Drilling, Triple Blast Boutique, Pleasanton Processing, Bubba's Smoke Shack, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, BD and Broken Bow, and Riverstop Convenience Plaza. Again, a great opening half. Adam Central holding the slim two-point lead as we get ready for half number two. Gavin Higgins has been in control of the book here in the first half, and he's got to look at some of your first half numbers. That's a dangerous thing, I think, to have control. <laughs> you want me to say these are unofficial? <laughs> uh, definitely unofficial. All right. Um, first, we'll take a look at Pleasanton. They're led by Isabel Pates. She has eight points, a three-pointer in the second quarter as the scoring finally kind of took off for Pleasanton in that second quarter. Six points apiece for Katie Linder and Chelsea Fisher as well. They are one for three from the free throw line as a team, uh, have turned the ball over nine times in the first half and had 15 rebounds in that first half. Just could not quite get the ball to go on the hoop, however. Lots of offensive boards. Adam Central turned the ball over 11 times and only had five rebounds. They've been one and done on the offensive side, but they've made that one-shot pay as they put up 22 points here in this morning's contest. They are led by Libby Trout. She has two three-pointers and a two-pointer as well. Six points, Cammy Wellenseek. Three points for Rachel Gooden and Lauren Scott. And then two points for Jessica Babcock on a pair of free throws. Adam Central is perfect from the line, three for three. Five rebounds again for Adam Central as they lead Pleasanton here as we are just about ready to start the second half, 22 to 20. Well, our next game will be North Central and Malcolm will have a live video stream of it for you as well coming up here on KCNI and KBBN Sports. All right, we start the second half. Adam Central opens up with the basketball. Lady Patriots have it. Here's Libby Trosh. Trosh will dribble down to the baseline. Now trapped. Oh, good move to get free. Gets it up on the rim and scores. Boy, Libby Trosh has had a real solid game so far for Adams Central as the Patriots go up by four. Pleasanton ball. Pierce will dump it down low to Linder. Puts it up. No good. Ball tipped around into the hands of Babcock. Babcock crossover. Into the lane, layup, no good. Too strong, but tipped out to Trosh. She lost it, and it's controlled by Linder. Katie Linder going to challenge Scott, puts it up, not able to finish. Ball loose into the hands of Fisher. She'll put it up too strong. Gets her own rebound, puts it up, no good. They fight for the board again, and Pleasanton another rebound. Pierce a three, no good, and this time good and able to control the ball for Adam Central. Ahead to Trosh. Trosh will pull it out, and the Patriots will operate out of the half court. Adam Central 24, Pleasanton 20, just over a minute gone here in the third quarter. Well and Seek will turn and fire. No good. Rebound to Pierce. Casey Pierce brings it across half court, brings it to the elbow, and now they send it out to Pates. Open look for three. Off the mark, no good. Fisher, another rebound, put back good. Pleasanton continues to be strong on the boards. Adam Central 24, Pleasanton 22, 622 to go. Third quarter, oh, open. Will and seek and a great recovery by Isabel Pates, who comes out of nowhere to block away the shot attempt of Will and seek. Pleasanton overshifted on that, rotated too far around, and just doing a really good job of sprinting back and, and able to knock that ball away. Here's Babcock, open look from deep, and that's good. Her foot was on the line, that's a two. Adam Central leading by four now, 26 to 22 as we play two minutes here in the third quarter. Game one of the first ever Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase and it has so far been a great start to the day. 
Pierce will lob it for Fisher. Fisher backing down well and seek, and she banks it in and good. Pleasanton again to within two. Knocking the ball away is Siegel, and Adam Central will inbound. Really patient Pleasanton trying to get that ball into Fisher, and so far she's paid it off, doing a really good job of getting her body toward the basket and making it an easy shot on herself. Timeout on the court, 5.46 to go, third quarter. Adam Central 26, Pleasanton 24. This is the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Out of the timeout, Adam Central with the basketball. 5.46 to go, third quarter. Adam Central 26, Pleasanton 24. It has been tight throughout. Babcock gets into the lane, pull up jumper, rattles around and falls through. Well, when we came on, we talked about these guards, Babcock and Trosh, and they are having a big game so far. Pates goes baseline but lost it. And Trosh picks up the loose ball for Adam Central. Babcock sends it ahead to Scott. Entry down low to, uh, I'll get the name in a minute, Gooden. There you go. Rachel Gooden able to knock it in. And Adam Central now leads by six. Lob down low to Fisher, backing in on Gooden. Trosh comes in to help defensively. Ball knocked away. And it's going to stay with Pleasanton. Good double down there by Trosh as she helped. Double team, Fisher. That's one where Fisher's got to get rid of it a little bit quicker if she knows that double team's on the way. Katie Lindner off the inbounds pass. Picks up the bounce, sends it Pierce's way. Casey Pierce, crossover dribble into the lane, puts it up, can't finish, rebound, knocked around. It's still loose, and it's going to go out of bounds. Off of Pleasanton. 4.50 to go, third quarter, Adams Central 30, Pleasanton 24. Libby Trosh will send it ahead to Babcock. Back to Trosh and now Babcock again. Adam Central swings it around the perimeter, skip pass across to Trosh, open look for three, good again. Noah two, they say her foot was on the line. Libby Trosh, another deep one, and a timeout, Adam Central. 4.30 to go, third quarter, Adam Central 32, Pleasanton 24. Well, we have a correction on the score. Libby Trosh, the shot that she just made, is ruled a three. One official called it a two, but another official overruled it because he had a better look, and certainly where we are sitting, it did look like Trosh was well behind the line. So it's a three-pointer for Libby Trosh, and now the largest lead of the game for Adam Central, as Adam Central leads Pleasanton 33-24. to Fisher dumps it down low. And the ball knocked away into the hands of Pierce. Ball knocked away again, but Pates comes out of traffic with it. Big possession now for Pleasanton, trailing by nine. See if they can get a score. Siegel will look to drive, give it off to Pierce. Pierce will lob it for Fisher. Fisher double teamed quickly. Ball ripped away and taken away by Adam Central. 
Lauren Scott, who's had a good game off the bench, going to go right into Fisher, throws it up, no good, but a foul will be called. Fisher with her second personal. Fouls really not, haven't been a factor in this game at all. Fisher's the only one with multiple, and it's just two. Foul on Fisher, her second. Free throw on the way by Scott, no good. Pleasanton, of course, number one ranked in Class D1, according to the Omaha World Herald. Adams Central, seven and four on the season coming in, ranked number nine in Class C1. As Scott takes the free throw and misses it. Rebound, though, to Adams Central, and then reaching in to rip it away was Siegel, but they're going to whistle a foul. So Adam Central will inbound. Pleasanton undefeated on the season, defending state champion. A 40-game winning streak coming into this matchup against Class C1 Adam Central, but right now the Patriots lead at 33-24. Bounce pass to Trosh. Scott now looking to drive. To Gooden, out to Trosh, a three on the way. Good again. Oh. Boy, Libby Trosh has been red hot today. Such a pretty shot. Great inside out look, and she is on fire. A double digit lead now for Adam Central. Natalie Siegel with the ball. Looking for Fisher down low on the entry. Go to Pates, a three. That's off the mark, no good. Fisher fighting hard for the rebound, and she'll be fouled. Good tough play by Chelsea Fisher on the inside to get the rebound, and then on the putback attempt, she is fouled. But right now the story developing is kind of the play of Libby Trosh and what she's been able to do with the three-point shot as Fisher misses the free throw. And while Adam Central has been knocking down shots, Gavin, Boy Pleasanton has just been having a hard time in this third quarter getting a shot to go down. Yeah, they're getting good looks, but right now the defense for Adam Central is really baiting into some, baiting Pleasanton in some, into some tougher shots and that's created uh, kind of the reason why Adam Central's been able to balloon their lead is they've been able to knock down their shots when Pleasanton hasn't. Fisher able to make the free throw, so Pleasanton is to within 11 now. You get the feel this is a big, important final three minutes of this third quarter. See if Pleasanton can make a run here and try to get this thing a little tighter going to the fourth, and there's a turnover. Lauren Scott, the 5'8 sophomore, just kind of stumbled a little bit and then got whistled for the travel. I think it was Linder on the defense there, really good job of kind of sliding in on the blind side there and just never saw her coming and she was surprised. Katie Linder, crossover dribble, trying to get inside, cut off by Wellenseek. Skip pass over to Pierce, Pierce goes up high to grab it. Pierce, spin move in the lane and oh, they're gonna call her for the carry. Kind of caught it on her hip a little bit on that on that turn. It spun a little bit funny, and she kind of locked it up on her hip and carried it at the same time. Tough place to turn it over. Adam Central with the ball. Libby Trosh. Trosh going to leave it for Wellensee, who puts it up and in. Adam Central 38, Pleasanton 25. A 13-point lead for Adam Central. 2-10 left to go, third quarter. Katie Linder trying to get into the lane, goes up and is fouled. And I love that, Gavin, by Linder. When you're struggling shooting the ball, try to get it to the rim. Linder does and is able to go to the free throw line. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to do when when you're talking about just not shooting it well from anywhere on the floor, but in that second quarter, that is where they really were able to close that gap in a hurry, was hitting some of those layups and those really easy, simple shots, and that's what they're gonna have to do to get back into this. Second by Linder, no good. Well and seek the rebound for Adam Central. Two minutes left to go in the quarter. Ball is loose again, and it's gonna go out of bounds off of Pleasanton. 
Fisher going to come back in. Fisher in for Pleasanton. Gooden and Babcock will return for Adam Central. Two minutes exactly remaining in the third. Adam Central 38, Pleasanton 26. Game one of the first ever Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Pleasanton ranked number one in D1. Adam Central number nine in C1. Well and seek. Out around the arc, lobs it inside. Oh, a block by Fisher, but they're gonna call her for a foul. Really, really good up top. Unfortunately, her body just went right through Ellen Seek, or uh, Scott, excuse me. But that was a really good cut there by Scott to get to the hoop. Third foul against Fisher. Caitlin Scott to the free throw line, and the first one is no good. 146 to go in the third. Adam Central 38, Pleasanton 26. Our next game coming will feature North Central against Malcolm. Scott's second free throw, no good, missed them both, but good in the rebound, and then going up from behind is Lindner, and she's gonna be called for a foul. Coach Arnsdorf, with his hands raised, thought that Lindner came in from behind and got all ball, but the official called the foul, and so Adam Central will inbound. They'll throw it into Babcock. Babcock throws it up and scores. My goodness, Babcock knocked off balance, still able to get the shot to go. Now Pates at the other end. Pates will drive, ball loose, picked up by Wellenseek. And that size of Gooden and Wellenseek inside, 6'3 and 5'11. Starting to create a little bit of trouble for Pleasanton as they try to go inside. Gooden at the other end, puts it up, no good. They fight for the rebound and now a foul whistled against Adam Central. Really good defense down here by Gooden, just standing straight up, allowing the offensive player to go into her body, but just never moved anywhere. Just a great job defensively. 1.15 left to go in the third quarter. Big possession here for Pleasanton. They need a score. Katie Lindner off to Pierce, a deep three on the way. It's good! Casey Pierce from downtown. That brings Pleasanton to within 11 as we have under a minute remaining here in the third. Babcock into the lane, had it knocked away. Pleasanton basketball, Katie Lindner leading the break. Lindner will dump it down low to Pierce. She scores. It's a single digit ball game. Pates going for the steal and she knocks it out of bounds with 42 seconds left to go in the quarter. Talking about that defense, this is almost a mirror of what happened in the second quarter, or in the end of the first quarter, I should say, just really starting to catch some momentum. And this little flurry ignites the Pleasanton fans. Babcock has the ball kicked away by Lindner. And the ball will stay with Adam Central. 36 seconds to go in the quarter. Pleasanton on a 5-0 run, and they are to within nine now. Adam Central 40, Pleasanton 31. Listen, you don't win 40 games in a row <laughs> it, unless you have desire and determination, and Mollring almost came up with another steal for Pleasanton. Babcock able to save it, though. Under 30 seconds to go in the quarter now. The lob for Gooden. Gooden will put it up. Way off, no good. And the rebound controlled by Pates. Pleasanton trying to get a little bit closer before the quarter's over. Great crossover. Pates into the rim area, and she'll be fouled. That goes against Babcock. I have her down for four. Yeah, that would be big if it is. It is. Boy, Babcock's fourth. So Pates will step to the line. Adam Central had built a lead as big as 13 in this quarter. Now Pleasanton's got it down to nine as Pates misses the front end of her free throw attempts. Babcock will have to come out with four fouls. And now the question is, how long will she be on the bench? Pates, second free throw, missed them both, and the rebound pulled down by Wellenseek. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Adam Central 40, Pleasanton 31. Caitlin Scott trying to spin away from the traffic of and pressure of Pates. Pates reaches in and gets whistled for the foul. That'll be the second one on Pates. 
On the board, it shows the fifth of the half against Pleasanton. Adam Central's been whistled for four. Just under 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Libby Trosh with the handle. Trosh dribbling to her left. Four seconds to go. Ball knocked away, and Pierce is going to be fouled. Pleasanton able to knock the ball away. Casey Pierce going after the loose ball is knocked to the floor. Foul is committed. It'll be a non-shooting foul, though. 15 foul against Adams Central with now under one second to go in the quarter. Only our first personal. If you're Pleasanton, you were kind of hoping that maybe her and Babcock could switch fouls. And that's the end of the third quarter. So Adams Central led by as many as 13 in the quarter, but Pleasanton able to make a little bit of a run as the quarter came to an end. And as we get ready for the fourth, your score, Adams Central 40, Pleasanton 31. This is the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. So we get ready for the fourth quarter. It's been a great way to start this first ever girls basketball showcase in the state of Nebraska. Pleasanton with the ball down by nine. Boy, great catch by Pierce. <laughs> a tough pass to handle in traffic, but she does. Casey's gonna launch it. Off the mark, no good. Babcock is back in playing with four fouls and she has the rebound. Babcock driving on Siegel, puts it up, score it, and she's fouled. Incredible ability to get that ball to the hoop. Takes that contact and almost got too far underneath, but ended up working out for her. Siegel gets whistled for her third personal. That's also the sixth against Pleasanton, so the rest of the way, Adam Central will be in the bonus. Babcock misses the free throw. Fisher there for the rebound, and it's knocked away by Adam Central and then a foul committed. Boy, great reach in by Lawrence Scott, who has really provided Adam Central with good play off the bench today. She was able to knock the ball away. Fisher commits the personal, and now Fisher has four for Pleasanton. Again, Adam Central now in the bonus, and Fisher's going to have to come out. Mollring comes in to replace her. Lauren Scott at the free throw line, and the first one is off, no good. Missed the front end, and also a lane violation called. So Pleasanton will have the basketball just underway in the fourth. 7.40 to go in the game. Adams Central 42, Pleasanton 31. Adams Central really has led the majority of the way. Pleasanton led early 3-0, led 18-17, but that's been it. Adams Central has led the rest of the way as Pleasanton throws it away. Pleasanton just a little bit out of sorts right now. Adam Central running a zone defense, but they're uh, allowing the ball to go into the corner and not, you know, kind of trapping that deep and trying to prevent anything from going to the middle. Libby Trosh, who's had a great game today for Adam Central, gives it up to Scott. Lauren Scott over to Wellenseek beyond the arc. She'll put it on the floor, dribble to her left. Wellenseek cut off, kicks it out. Now they find Lauren Scott again. Lauren to her left, gives it up to Trosh. Trosh looking to drive, nice pass. Wellenseek will put it up, but first a whistle, and we're going to have a foul before the shot. That'll send Adam Central to the line, though. Patriots are in the one and one. Let's see who it goes on. If it goes on Siegel, and it does, that is her fourth. So Siegel with four, Fisher with four. And four for Adam Central is Jessica Babcock. 
Free throw by Wellenseek, missed it, missed the front end, and the rebound pulled down by Katie Lindner. One minute gone here in the fourth. Adams Central 42, Pleasanton 31. Molring deep on the wing, puts it on the floor, driving on Wellenseek, gets to the rim but can't finish, and the rebound tipped out to Caitlin Scott. They send it ahead to Trosh. Trosh will put it up and score. Boy, Trosh able to absorb the contact and still get it to go. Ball deflected out of bounds at the other end. It'll stay with Pleasanton as they inbound on the side, and Coach Arnsdorf is going to call timeout. 6.32 to go in the game. Your score, Adam Central 44, Pleasanton 31. This is the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. I want to say thanks again to all of the great business sponsors that are flashing across your screen during our live video stream of this opening game of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Back to action now. Here's Casey Pierce getting into the lane, puts it up, and she'll be fouled. That'll be just the second on Libby. And the sixth team foul against Adam Central. So on the next one they commit, Pleasanton will be in the bonus as Pierce makes the free throw. Well, still plenty of time left. 6.25 to go in the game. Pierce at the line trying to bring Pleasanton to within 11. On its way, good. So Adam Central with the ball and an 11-point lead. Pressure applied to the backcourt by Pleasanton. Babcock able to break it down with the bounce. Gets to the rim but missed the shot. Rebound pulled down by Pierce. Pleasanton running. Nice pass to Pates. Puts it up and it's blocked from behind. Wellenseek pulls it down and now Adam Central wants a timeout. 6.07 to go. First game of this Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Your score, Adam Central 44. Pleasanton, stepping up in class to face Class C1 Adams Central today. Pleasanton coming in with a 40-game winning streak, but Adams Central has played extremely well here today, and the Patriots lead it by 11. Libby Trosh trying to get to the lane and to the rim. Puts it up, no good. Rebound to Pleasanton. They look to run. Casey Pierce leading the break. Nice move. Gets into the rim area. Puts it up. Can't finish, but she will be fouled. Well, you watch Pleasanton play, Gavin. You look at these seniors. Man, what a career. Mm -hmm. uh, just think about all the things that this senior class has achieved for Pleasanton in all areas, not just basketball. I mean, you, you think about you know, the, the, the players that are on here, their volleyball team, incredibly talented. You've seen how high many of them can jump, which pays off there. Of course, very talented basketball-wise, and I know that on the track, there's many of them that are very, very good runners. So Pierce makes the second free throw. Adam Central with the ball, leading by 10 now. Libby Trosh off to Babcock. Babcock playing with four fouls, being guarded tightly by Lindner. Pates coming out trying to apply the double team, but 
Babcock finds Trosh, who now throws it over to Scott. Ball is loose on the floor. They fight. They scramble. No whistle yet. Play continues, and this is going to be an over and back. It go, actually goes out of bounds, and it's going to belong to Pleasanton. It was, it was really weird because the thing is, is nothing really happened. The, the Adam Central girl went down to grab the ball, and Pleasanton just stood there and waited, and she went to go through it, and it went by everyone. And a foul committed in the backcourt. Libby Trosh was chasing after the loose ball against Casey Pierce. And Trosh is going to get whistled for the foul. This is going to send Pierce to the free throw line. Well, if you're looking to come back, which Pleasanton is, uh, this is one of the recipes to do that, and that is get yourself to the line. Now can Pleasanton knock shots down from the free throw line? This is a one and one. The front end from Pierce, yes. That was the third foul whistled against Libby Trosh. Each team has been whistled for eight here in this half. Free throw by Pierce, made them both. And the Bulldogs are to within eight, the closest they've been in a while. Babcock into the front court. Babcock floater up, no good. Rebound good, and oh, she may have gotten away with a step. Gets her own rebound off the miss, though. Adam Central with the ball. Libby Trosh handles now. Five minutes left to go in the game and a steal by Katie Lindner. Lindner forces the turnover. Lindner driving in on Scott, skips it across to Pierce. She'll drive inside, puts it up, taken away by Gooden. And now taking it away, Pierce. Casey Pierce bounces it to Lindner. The ball just kind of bouncing around all over the place, and now Lindner will back it out as Pleasanton tries to reset it in the half court. Pierce, the spin move, a whistle, and a travel. Yeah, just a little bit out of sorts there. Adam Central not really holding on to the ball, and, and uh, Pleasanton doing their best to try to poke it away. May have gotten away with maybe a, a foul or two there, just reaching too far across, but really nothing taking place. And I think a big stat thus far, Pleasanton has yet to score a field goal. All of their points have been off Casey Pierce being at the free throw line, and that is five of them. Adam Central with the ball, 4.25 to go in the game. Adam Central 44, Pleasanton 36, and a turnover for the Patriots. Pleasanton with the ball. Again, we still have plenty of time left. 4.21 left to go. Natalie Siegel comes back into the lineup for Pleasanton. So for Pleasanton now, you've got Pates, Pierce, Lindner, Fisher, and Siegel. Fisher playing with four fouls, trying to get position down low. They skip it across to Pates. Pates goes baseline, puts it up, can't finish, but a foul will be called. That one will go against Gooden. That will just be her first, so foul that you can live with, but on the other side of things, now Pleasanton has a chance to score with the clock not moving. This will be a two-shot foul. And the first is good. By the way, that's the ninth team foul against Adam Central. So on the next one, Pleasanton's in the double bonus. This to bring the Bulldogs to within six. On its way. No good. It rimmed out. Ow, but Wellenseek could not secure the rebound. And it will be Pleasanton ball again. Now you like what Coach Arnsdorf is doing with Siegel and Molring. Siegel, I think, has four fouls, right? If I remember correctly. And so Correct. he's rotating her and Molring in and out. Now that they're on offense, Siegel is back in. Siegel throws it in. Siegel handles now, working against Trosh. And now they swing it over to Linder. Dumps it down low to Fisher. Fisher will put it up and score. It's a five-point game. Libby Trosh at half court. Oh, oh, she may have gotten away with a carry, and she throws it away. A steal, two on one break. Linder to the rim, scores! And Pleasanton is to within three. Me, oh my. Here's Trosh at the other end. Libby Trosh being guarded tightly by Pleasanton. Lady Bulldogs were down by as many as 13 in the second half. Now they trail by three. Timeout. 
three, 26 to go in the game. Maybe I should say in regulation. <laughs> Adam Central, 44, Pleasanton, 41. The first ever girls basketball showcase. Listen, you know that the idea for the event is great, but what makes the event is the way the games play out. Absolutely. And can you get a better start than this? <laughs> Pleasanton was down by 13. They are now down by three with 3.26 to go in the fourth. Adam Central with the basketball. As we continue playing the fourth quarter and Adam Central's gonna throw it away again. And all of a sudden, Gavin, the Patriots are having trouble just hanging on to the ball. The thing is, is Pleasanton isn't doing anything crazy. They're just trapping in the corners. They're forcing Adam Central to those sides, and Adam Central's going willingly, but then they pick up the ball. That is a cardinal sin on that trap. Back it out, get it around to someone who's not trapped in the middle. Fisher gets the ball, puts it up. Oh, cannot finish. Ball though to Pates, puts it up. No good, they fight for the rebound. Good and is knocked to the floor. And. They're going to give the ball to Pleasanton good and going up for the rebound, and she's like, my goodness, man, I was knocked to the floor, but there was no whistle, so it's going to be out of bounds off of Adam Central. Pleasanton with the ball. Boy, the Patriots have played so well in this game, but now Pleasanton making a charge. Oh, we got drama to the final three minutes. Great defensive play by Gooden, who knocks the entry to Fisher away, and Adam Central has the ball. Just under three minutes to go. Adam Central 44, Pleasanton 41, Libby Trosh. And we got, what a foul. That's a good call. Linder had her arm in there trying to tie it up, but being really strong with the ball was Trosh, and she just ripped it away, and it left nothing left to grab, and Linder just hooked onto that arm. For Linder, that's her second. This is a one and one for Trosh, and the free throw is missed. Rebound to Pierce, 2.43 to go. Pleasanton ball down by three. Pierce will throw it out to Siegel. Gives it up to Pates, and now Linder at the top of the key. Oh, she thought about trying to tie it. Now Siegel will launch, and that's off the mark. No good. Rebound, though, to Pates. Pates off to Linder. She'll try to tie it, and it's off. No good. Pates, though, another rebound for Pleasanton. Out to Casey Pierce. Pates will try to tie it. No good. And the rebound controlled by Gooden. 2.15 to go. Adam Central with the ball, leading by three. Jessica Babcock playing with four fouls. Throws it out to Caitlin Scott. Gives it up to Trosh. And now Wellenseek will fire and score. Oh, a big bucket for Cami Wellenseek. Patriots back up by five as we go under two minutes to play. Pierce to the rim, score it, and she's fouled. Casey Pierce has come alive in this second half. Five points in the third quarter, and she now has seven in the fourth. She has been playing exceptionally well. And another big fact, that's Troush's fourth foul. Pairs to the line. Trying to make it a two-point game, she does. Adam Central 46, Pleasanton 44, a minute 50 left to go in the game. Here is Babcock being challenged by Mulring. Babcock keeping the bounce alive, and we've got a foul out on the perimeter called against Pleasanton. That's the 10th team foul against the Lady Bulldogs, and so Babcock will go to the line to shoot two. Foul was on Molring, her first.
first one by Babcock. No good. This will keep it at a one possession game regardless if she makes or misses it. And right now, you almost expect Pleasanton to get the rebound as they have over 30 rebounds here in this game compared to 15 for Adam Central. Second free throw by Babcock. No good, missed them both. Good and fighting for the rebound, but it's into the hands of Pleasanton. Pleasanton ball down by two. Pates with it. Off to Siegel, a minute 35 to go in the fourth. Pleasanton will enter it down low to Fisher. She'll turn and face, kick it back out. A minute 28 to go. Adam Central 46, Pleasanton 44. Who's it off of? They're going to say it was knocked out of bounds by Adam Central. Pleasanton ball. What an amazing way to start this girls' basketball showcase. What a game. Casey Pierce will bring it into the fourth court. A minute 15 to go. Pleasanton with the ball, but down by two. Linder will throw it up and a jump ball is going to be called. Scott came in from behind and forced the jump ball. The possession arrow will give it to Adam Central. Really good job coming in there, Scott, just putting her hand right on top of that ball. And I think the, the jump actually came on the attempted shot right before that, but able to tie things up and give the possession back to Adam Central. Backcourt pressure applied by Pleasanton. We near one minute left to go in the fourth. Babcock able to bring it across half court with the bounce. She'll fire, it's off, no good. Rebound pulled down by Fisher. One minute to go, Pleasanton basketball down by two. Lindner skips it across to Molring. Molring to Pierce, 50 seconds to go. Pierce, spin move on Wellenseek, puts it up oh. and scores! We are tied! <laughs> Time out, Pleasanton! 43 seconds left in the fourth, a tie game. This is the Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Well, Pleasanton has battled back from what was at one point a 13-point second-half deficit, and they have come all the way back to tie it. 46 all with under a minute to go. This Boy, both these, both these teams want it, don't they? Oh, I mean, man. you can just feel it. Both teams want this game so bad. And what a great way to start off this first-ever girls basketball showcase. Pleasanton's going to put on the pressure, and then, and Adam Central has struggled to handle it thus far. Babcock will handle with 40 seconds remaining. Pate's applying the pressure. At, no, it's Molring applying the pressure as Babcock will bring it across half court. Babcock keeps the bounce alive, cross over to the left, and now finds Wellenseek. Wellenseek will give it up to Trosh. Over to Babcock, 24 seconds to go. They dump it down low to Gooden, and she scores! Adam Central leads by two with 18 seconds to go. Pleasanton basketball, 13 seconds. Pierce, top of the key, cut off at the high post, nine seconds to go, and Coach Harnsdorf wants a timeout. Boy, clutch shot by Rachel Gooden of Adam Central. The Patriots lead 48-46. Eight seconds left. What does Coach Arnsdorf draw up? I mean, you got to go to Fisher, don't you? I mean, or Fisher Pierce. and Gooden. Yeah, Pierce has been shooting really well, too. Pierce is definitely one that, that likes to take it off the dribble and go to the hoop. And Fisher and Gooden have been battling underneath this entire game. It has been a blast to watch these two fight. And... Uh, I mean, I don't know. You've, you've got options if you want it. If you're Adam Central, I definitely think 
you almost run maybe a triangle in two where you run a zone on everyone else. Ad or Pleasanton hasn't shot well from the outside, but right now your two most dangerous players are Pierce and Fisher. You force someone else, you got to force someone else from Pleasanton to take the shot. And if you're Pleasanton, you would think you would like to get a shot up in about the first three seconds. So mm -hmm. if it's a miss, you have a chance for a rebound. Eight seconds left. Pleasanton with the ball on the side. They trail by two. And they'll throw it into Pierce right at half court. Six seconds to go, now five. Pierce will dump it down low. This is Lindner, puts it up. She's fouled. And it's going to send Lindner to the line with 1.8 seconds left. Lindner's got to knock them down, both of them, to tie the game. This is a position that, you know, as a senior, you dream to be in. A chance to tie it. The first one. No good. Well, now with 1.8 left, I would think you have to miss it intentionally and try to get a rebound. Second free throw attempt by Lindner. She does, but she did not hit any rim. So the ball's going to go over to Adam Central. Just over a second left. And about all Adam Central would have to do is just get it inbounded. The thing here is if you're going to inbound it, just throw it down to the middle of the floor. They, they might want to check the clock. Six tenths ran off the clock, yep. and I don't think they should have run off. It was 1.8 when the free throw was taken by Lindner. Now, she did not draw any iron, so I don't think any time should have went off. This should get reset to 1.8. Let's see what. Definitely 1.8. But, I mean, if I'm Adam Central, I just throw it right to the middle of the floor. You've got a six-foot player and Rachel Gooden at the other end. Just let her touch it, and that'll end it. Trosh to throw it in. Trosh got to get it in. She does. Well and seek fouled immediately. And we will be pretty much right at one second left. But this will be two shots coming for Adams Central. So certainly if you make them both, I mean, the lead goes to four. So certainly it's over if Well and seek makes just one of two. Pleasanton could maybe hope for a prayer at the end. Well and seek free throw off the mark. Point nine is what is showing on the clock. Adam Central 48, Pleasanton 46. Lady Bulldogs with a 40 game winning streak coming into this one. They step up in class in this girls basketball showcase to play top 10 ranked Adam Central coming out of class C1. Well and seek will shoot, misses. Oh, the rebound to Scott and that's it. And Adam Central has won over Pleasanton 48 to 46. What a phenomenal game and a great way to start this first ever girls basketball showcase. We're going to step away for a moment. Gavin is going to total up the numbers and then we'll come back on and share those with you. Our next game coming up will feature Malcolm undefeated and top 10 ranked in Class C1 against North Central, who is top 10 ranked in Class C2. That'll be coming up, but again, your final here in game one of this girls. Stay tuned, our final numbers will be coming at you in a moment. This is the Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.
And we come back to the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow, the site of the first ever girls high school basketball showcase. And what a showcase game to oh, start off the showcase. My gracious, Pleasanton and Adam Central going down to the final ticks of the clock. Adam Central had built, I believe it was as big as a 13 point lead in the second half. And then Pleasanton was able to make the comeback. They got it tied at 46. Rachel Gooden then makes a shot to put Adam Central up 48 46. Pleasanton had the ball in the final 10 seconds with a chance, but could not get the shot to go down. It was uh, Katie Linder who was actually fouled and went to the free throw line with 1.8 seconds remaining in the game. A chance to tie it from the free throw line, but then she missed the first, tried to intentionally miss the second. It did not draw iron, and then Adam Central was able to uh, throw the ball in and run out the clock and get the win, 48-46. Huge win for Coach Evan Smith and Adam Central. For Pleasanton, we see their 40-game winning streak that they had coming into today end. But, boy, what a great game as Pleasanton. Boy, Class D1, they step up to play Class C1, top 10 ranked Adam Central. And both teams, Gavin, put on a show today. Yeah, it was incredible. Uh, you know, you saw Adam Central... Uh, they struggled a little bit handling the ball, but they were able to get it down the floor and, and really able to score when it counted. And Pleasanton, you know, they were down. They had they could have hung their heads. They could have went, oh, no, we're not going to come back. That's a C1 team. We don't stand a chance. They didn't say that. They came down the floor. They shot a ton of free throws in the fourth quarter, and that really helped springboard them to be able to tie the game. Unfortunately, just really one shot was the difference in it and uh, just an incredible game between these two teams. Uh, we'll look at some of the stats first with Pleasanton, 18 turnovers, but 30 rebounds. They rebounded the ball exceptionally well, especially on the offensive board. I wish it would have kept offensive rebounds because I'm guessing that was half, if not three quarters of their total uh, was on the offensive side. Again, 30 rebounds in that game. Pleasanton was led with 15 points by Casey Pierce, all of them coming in the second half. She was 6 for 7 from the free throw line, all of those free throws also coming in the fourth quarter. 13 points for Chelsea Fisher. Uh, she was 1 for 2 from the line and 9 points apiece for Pates and Linder. Uh, they were 2 for 3 and 1 for 6. So as a team, Pleasanton shooting all right from the free throw line, something that they'll want to uh, continue to work on as the season progresses, 11 for 18 as a team. Adam Central, 18 turnovers. They were out-rebounded. Uh, they put up half of the numbers that Pleasanton did, but Adam Central really was able to put in the, the uh, shots they needed to and really didn't have to rebound all that often. They ended with 15 rebounds. They were led by Libby Troush. No surprise there. She had four three-pointers and uh, also had a couple of buckets in there as well. Ten points apiece for Jessica Babcock. She was two for three. Five from the line, also 10 points for Cami Wellenseek. And then other scoring points, seven for Rachel Gooden and three points for Lauren Scott. Uh, as a team, they did not shoot well from the free throw line. I'm sure Coach Smith will be, you know, going right at that number. They were three for 14 from the line, something that, you know, down the stretch as we get closer into conference and even farther Possibly in, in sub-districts, districts in the state tournament, free throws are big down the stretch. A couple of opportunities to really put the game away. They didn't do that. Pleasanton was able to come back, but down the stretch, they were still able to win it. But uh, just a phenomenal game. And if you're going to have a, uh, if you have to have a game to open up the first ever, you know, event like this, you would probably just copy and paste that every single time. <laughs> Phenomenal game between Pleasanton and Adam Central. Well, like we said uh, a little bit earlier uh, during the video stream, uh, you can come up with the idea for an event, but what's going to make the event are the games, right? Mm -hmm. Well, man, what a great way to get it started. Uh, great game. Pleasanton falling to Adam Central by two. 48-46 will be your final as Adam Central improves to 8-4 and four on the season. Pleasanton now 11-1. Hey, that's, ju that's just the, the first one, folks. We got three <laughs> left. And coming up on the court next will be Malcolm against North Central. That'll be the next game. And then the third of the day will feature Mullen against Louisville. And then we'll conclude with Broken Bow against Oakland Craig. By the way, for those of you watching on our video stream, when we get to Mullen and Broken Bow, those games will also be broadcast on the radio on KBBN 95.3 FM and KBBN 
Sports.com. Before we sign off for this broadcast, we want to say thanks again to all of the great video streaming sponsors that you were able to watch flash across your screen during the Pleasanton Adams Central game. One big shout out to Meat Lumber, Palmer Monument, Geared for Sports, Angland ATV, Grocery Cart, Insurance of the Heartland, Viero Wireless, Downey Drilling, Shelter Insurance, Triple Blast Boutique, Pleasanton Processing, Bubba's Smoke Shack, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, BD Broken Bow, and Riverstop Convenience Plaza. Thanks to all of you wonderful businesses sponsoring our live video stream of Pleasanton and Adams Central from the Girls Basketball Showcase. All right, uh, North Central and Malcolm on the court now taking their warm-ups. We're probably 25 minutes at least away from uh, starting that one, so we're going to step away for a bit. And then when we come back on, Jeremy Scheip will move from the camera to the microphone, and he'll assist Gavin Higgins. They'll have the call of our second game coming up on our live video stream, which you can access on all of our media platforms through KCNI, KBBN Radio, and also Sand Hills Express. We're on the Sand Hills Express Facebook page. We're on Twitter, at KBBN Sports, and we're also on the uh, uh, KCNI, KBBN YouTube page as well for all four games from this girls' basketball showcase. What a great way to get it started. Malcolm and North Central will be coming up next. Again, you are viewing and listening to the Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.
Welcome back to the Indian Gym here on Central Nebraska Sports Source. I'm Gavin Higgins. I'll be calling game two for you. And I'm also joined by my broadcast partner, Jeremy Scheib, who was on the video earlier, but is now on the uh, back on the uh, speaking side of things <laughs> instead of controlling the camera this time. Well, we had a great first matchup between Adam Central and Pleasanton. And now we go into game two, Malcolm and North Central. North Central coming into this one at 9-2, ranked number 10 in Class C2, according to the Omaha World Herald. And Malcolm, an undefeated season thus far, and they are ranked number 4 in Class C1. We can't be here without some wonderful sponsors making this video broadcast possible, and they include Mead Lumber, Palmer Monument, Geared for Sports, Agland ATV, Grocery Cart, Insurance of the Heartland, Shelter Insurance, Vieira Wireless, Downey Drilling, Triple Blast Boutique, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, BD and Broken Bow, Sand Hill Equipment, Lashley Land, G&V's Market, and The Rock County Hospital. Thank you to all of those video sponsors making it possible for us to be here for the, girl, the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase being held here in Broken Bow. Well, if uh, Game 2 is anything like Game 1, Jeremy, we are in for an absolute treat. North Central having a great season thus far, coming in at 9-2. and two. Their only two losses are to teams who are having possibly even better seasons. CWC, who is currently 9-0, and zero, and they lost only by four points to CWC and then fell earlier in the O'Neill Holiday Tournament, 52-39. So a team that has definitely been tested, and you expect them to put up a a great fight against an excellent Malcolm team. Well, what a lot of people say is that the sign of a good team is beating the teams that you are expected to beat, and they've done that this season. But like you said, drop that game to CWC at 9-0 and and O'Neill at 10-1. and But uh, got a good win to open up the season against Boyd County. They handled them pretty well, 60-22. to Boyd uh, County sitting at 6-5 and five right now. And then here recently got a win over St. Paul in the O'Neill Holiday Tournament. A 6-5 team beat them by a handful of points and also beat Summerlin on the road. So they've got some good quality wins, but I think this would be the highest quality win on their schedule for sure if they can pull it off. Malcolm Clippers, as I mentioned earlier, currently riding an undefeated season. The Omaha World Herald ranks them at number four in Class C1. Malcolm has a couple of big wins on their season earlier against Cross County by 14 points. Also 9-3 Weeping Water, 43-29, uh, and then looking down the list, also have big wins against 9-1 Centennial at 50-39, and, and that Centennial game, Malcolm, their only loss, uh, Centennial, their only loss is to this Malcolm team that we'll see here this afternoon. And uh, Malcolm, they're known to put up a lot of points, but their defense has also been something that they hang their hat on. And we saw great defense in the first hat, in the first game, and you expect that defense to continue here in the game number two, Jeremy. Well, you look at the amount of points that they allow, and that just automatically is a stat that you can follow into uh, being the sign of a good defensive team. Uh, the only time that anyone has scored over 40 points on them was Louisville, a team that we'll see later on today. They beat them by one point, 43-42, but 42 points is the most points that this Malcolm team has allowed this season, and I think that's very impressive. Game number two, Malcolm North Central coming up right here on Central Nebraska Sports Source. We're going to take a look at your starting lineups. First, the Malcolm Clippers. They look like this. Jocelyn Small, she's a 5'3 senior. Ashlyn Seahigh is a 5'8 senior. Alyssa Fordick, she is a 5'2 sophomore. Diamond Sedlak, a 5'9 sophomore. And the young trend continues with a 6-foot sophomore, Emma Brown. The Clippers are coached by Andy Klepper. North Central Knights at 9-2 and, and ranked number 10 in Class C2 by the Omaha World Herald. Rel Boosinger, she is a 5'5 junior. Kelly Munger, a 5'6 senior. Addison Anderson, a 5'4 freshman, excuse me. Jenna Halleck, a 6'0 junior. And Addison Lindsay, a 5'7 senior, rounds out the starting five for North Central. The head coach of the Knights is Alex McCleary. Sponsors bringing this to you includes Vieira Wireless. Vieira has been a great partner with us at KCNI, KBBN Radio over the past year. 
Of course, the coronavirus causing problems from last year and continues to cause issues this year. But thanks to them, we are able to bring incredible action to you in the sports side of things. So a big thank you to Viero for providing high-speed wireless internet to video stream high school sports along with some of our radio broadcasts at KCNI KBBN Radio. Viero Wireless offers internet service across five states with the greatest coverage in Nebraska, Colorado, and Kansas. Fixed wireless internet from Viera Wireless is available to an estimated 646,000 people, making it the 82nd largest residential fixed wireless provider in the U.S. by coverage area. Malcolm and North Central game two of four from the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase here in Broken Bow. Pleasanton fell to Adams Central earlier by just two points as a layup essentially sealed the game for Adam Central. We'll have North Central and Malcolm coming up in just a couple of minutes. And then later on this afternoon, Mullen and Louisville, they will face off in session number two. And then the nightcap rounds out with Oakland Craig and Broken Bow. Jeremy, it, we've got some great basketball on hand. Of course, this coming from the Heartland Hoops Classic, the idea uh, where this, where the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase came from. And so far, Coach Kelly Cooksley of the Broken Bow Lady Indians, things couldn't have gone any better right now. Yeah, they're, they're having a great season so far. And you know what? I, I, Kelly Cooksley is standing over there on the other side of the court. Uh, he's got a mask on, but uh, I know that he's loving seeing all of this come together. It was kind of his, uh, his idea. I saw him at the Heartland Hoops Classic last year. And I can see those gears turning in his head. And uh, it's all come together. And uh, it's being hosted in his team's home gym. He wanted to make it happen when it was un unable to happen at uh, uh, UNK. He said, well, what about the Indian gym? And I think, you know, we're a little bit biased, but I think the Indian gym is a great site for about anything that can be held in a gym. The atmosphere in here is just amazing. and. Uh, it, it feels great, and it's a, a great place to have an event like this. The bar was set high in that first game, though. <laughs> we'll see what we get out of this second game. Malcolm and North Central as they step onto the floor. North Central be, will be the visiting team as you view the screen in front of you. They are wearing their black uniforms, white numerals, and then white uniforms for Malcolm with the blue numerals. So both teams, blue and white, as they step to the center circle as we are nearly ready to start game number two. A great contest. Class C1, Malcolm. Class C2, North Central. And we are underway from the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow. Game number two of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Classic. North Central will control the look on the inside to Lindsay. Ball moves around for the Knights. The defense from Malcolm stepping up big as they start in a 2-3 zone. Anderson enters it in down low, but it's knocked away as Malcolm will go the other direction on the offensive side after the turnover. Fordick brings it across for the Clippers. Sedlak looking inside, can't find anything. Turns it over to Brown. Now far side as the ball works right back to the middle. Nice little toss out on the top to see high. Malcolm trying to find something on the inside, trying to make those cuts in the middle on the man-to-man -man defense from North Central. So far it's paid off, keeping Malcolm out of any attempted shot. Looking to drive this Fordick on the left side. She gets the runner to go, and Malcolm takes a 2-0 lead. Full court zone pressure here from Malcolm. North Central able to get it across, but it's knocked away and headed the other direction with it is Small. Small up the left side will go at the rim, and she'll score the layup. 4-0 lead in favor of the Clippers of Malcolm. Well, quickly you see what Malcolm wants to do. They want to do a lot of pressing, and they want to get lots of shots up at the hoop. Turnover by North Central as Malcolm will have a chance to take a 6-0 lead here early in the first quarter. 6.25 on the clock here in game number two. Top of the key is Seahigh. Looking inside, one dribble goes back out to the far side to Sedlak. Sedlak, a couple of dribbles of the left hand. Ball works back around to see high. Near side with it is Small. We'll continue to dribble around. And then taken away 
by Munger, I believe. A correction that is Boosinger, but it is knocked out of bounds. Good defense coming back to knock it out was Brown, but North Central will control underneath their own hoop. Well, that's a breath of fresh air for the Knights because previous to that turnover defensively, three offensive possessions resulted in turnovers for them. We'll see if they can get their first score here. Inbounds pass goes to Anderson at the top. They'll go near side. Three-pointer on the way from Boosinger, and it's good. Boosinger splashes home a tray, and that takes the goose egg off the board for the Knights. Now trailing 4-3 to three here in the first. Portick across half court, standing, waits, able to get it to Sedlak in the far side corner. They'll enter it into the post, Brown. Ball works its way around. Fake the pass, it's small, she'll put up a shot, no good, as Boosinger brings in the board. She'll come the other direction, down the line, going coast to coast, hands it off to Hollick, but then it is tied up by Malcolm, and they will get the ball on the alternating possession. That's just a tough pass to handle. You're going full speed, and you're trying to pass the ball from yourself, going full speed at the knees of your teammate who's standing on the block completely still. So, tough one there. Jeremy Scheib, I'm Gavin Higgins. Brent Apperson on the camera here for game number two. Malcolm with a 4-3 lead here with five minutes left in the first quarter. Looking to drive. Good shot there from Halleck. Can't get it to go, though. And North Central with the board. Coming the other direction. Munger throws it ahead on a streak coming from Weevil House. Came into the game, but it'll be knocked out of bounds off the hands of Malcolm on after the ball was knocked away, but it will stay with North Central. I like the idea of pushing the ball up the floor and really trying to get Malcolm on their heels there. Uh, Knight's fortunate not to turn it over there, though. Ball goes to Munger at the top of the key. She gets it to Boosinger on the far side. Back to Munger. Now to Cosgrove, who just came into the game. Entry pass, goes it down low, but then it's taken away, and then a double dribble will be called on Seahives. She took it away and took one big dribble and then kind of lost it, grabbed it with the other hand, and then dribbled it one more time. One tally in the turnover category for both of the teams there in about half a second of game time. Three-pointer up on the way from Weeble House, and she scores it. That gives North Central their first lead of the game, 6-4. to four. Small with it in the far side corner. She goes with the runner, can't get it to go as Boosinger comes away with the board. Headed the other direction, throws it ahead to Lindsay, can't get the shot to go, and then a fight for the rebound as that'll tie things up as the ball will stay with North Central. Good thing the whistle came, because that was pretty close to turning into a rugby scrum there. <laughs> we'll have a couple of substitutions for Malcolm. As, oh, sorry, Gavin. Oh, you're all right. Small and uh, Sedlak will come back in. Big key early in this game for North Central defensively, those defensive rebounds. They've got three of them. Malcolm has not gotten a second shot opportunity, any trips down the floor. Ball is knocked away and taken by Malcolm. Denton, who came into the game, comes away with the ball. She'll hand it off to Small, who will bring it up the court. And the half-court offense are the Clippers. Finding something in the middle as just a little bit too much pressure coming from Allie Cosgrove as she'll commit the foul. Our first foul of the game. We've played four minutes and seven seconds of this first quarter. Game two of four here from here in Broken Bow. The Nebraska Girls Basketball Classic. Pass goes inside as they're able to get it to Brown. Brown kicks it back up top to Small. Small spin move back to the middle of the floor. Defensive pressure for North Central really preventing anything on the inside. And speaking of defensive pressure, a steal from Anderson. Anderson throws it ahead to Cosgrove. Cosgrove able to spin away from the from the defense. She's trapped. She'll throw back up top to Anderson. They'll work their way around to the far side to Boosinger. Cross court pass to Cosgrove. Cosgrove looking to drive, backs it out. Tosses it over to Halleck, works the way around, but that will go through the hands of Boosinger and out of bounds. The turnover gives the ball back to Malcolm. Boy, these, uh, these bullets in the feet by North Central are really stinging right now. They've got the lead on the scoreboard six to four, but Gavin, they've turned the ball over six times already here in the first quarter. This lead could easily be much wider if they're able to take care of the ball in the half court. Fordick will bring it across half for Malcolm. 
She'll drive with the right hand after the screen kick out. Good defensive pressure prevents a three-pointer, but a great drive from Sedlak as she scores the layup, and we're all tied at six apiece. Ball is knocked away, and it will stay with North Central. Substitution as Weeble House will come back into the game. Lindsay will take a seat for North Central. Pass goes across on the far side to Cosgrove. North Central continuing to work the ball around well. Just haven't been able to get very many shots except for that one right there. A great little layup from Jenna Halleck as the junior scores it and gives the lead back to the Knights. And she owes her teammate one on that one. She put it right in a spot where she could put it right up to the rim immediately. Small with the drive, but it's blocked and headed in the other direction is Boosinger. Behind the back move from Boosinger. She's looking to go coast to coast, but we're going to have a foul called. I believe that will go on C-high, and that will put the ball back underneath the basket for North Central. But one thing I can tell really early here, Gavin, is these teams match up extremely well. Uh, even with a couple of subs on the floor every now and then, I, I'm not really seeing a talent gap all that much uh, across the board from down in the lane out to the wings. This is fun. Even match as the score is just two points in favor of North Central. Right now, North Central has been perfect from the three-point line. That'll be a long two, but it splashes home. As in the book is Cosgrove with the long two. Malcolm coming the other direction, trailing by four here with under two minutes left in the quarter. Ball goes inside to Fordick. Fordick can't get the shot up, and a rebound brought in by North Central. Going the other direction is Anderson. Anderson gets it knocked away, and taking it away is Malcolm. Ball kind of got bobbled, but it goes the other direction with Fordick. She can't get the shot to go. Rebound brought in by Brown, but then she's going to travel and turn it back over to North Central. Both teams looking to push as North Central leads 10 to 6. And the Clippers want to talk things over. North Central 10, Malcolm 6, back right back here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Game number two of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase features North Central and Malcolm, and North Central going the other direction, but it just goes through the hands of Munger as Malcolm will head down the floor to the offensive side. They'll go far side to Small. Small, left-handed drive, knocked it away. Now able to control it is Sedlak. You're right, Jeremy. These two teams match up almost perfectly on every single facet of the floor. And right now, the defense for North Central has prevented anything on the inside. Three-pointer on the way from Fordix. Splash! We didn't see very many three-pointers in the first game, but both of these teams are lighting it up from distance here early, under a minute. North Central still leading, and then that'll be a foul as Boosinger goes right through Fordick. She's got to reset her ponytail after that hit. <laughs> That's the football equivalent of putting your helmet back on. Able to, I think, take the brunt of that on the shoulder. Did Fordick when she stepped in to take that ball away. But definitely a, a physical hit there from Boosinger. Foul committed, 40 seconds left for Malcolm to work with here in the quarter. See high goes inside to as the ball is turned over from North Central, and that was Brown with the shot. Brown maybe a little bit frustrated there, trying to phys physically force her way to the bucket. And we'll have substitutions aplenty for both teams. 
34 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. North Central still leading 10 to 9 after trailing 4 to 0. Small, long two-pointer on the way. No good. Rebound brought down by North Central. Coming the other way is Boosinger. 26 seconds left. She pushes up the floor, able to get it far side. We'll work it right up to the top of the key to Anderson. Now with it on the near side is Lindsay, and then we'll have a foul called. Now it'll go against Elkins, who came into the game just a bit ago. Correction, they call that on Jordan Denton. 5-5 junior picks up her first foul. 13 seconds. Ball is tipped away. Malcolm will have a chance at the last shot if they want it. Small goes the other direction. Throws it ahead to Small. That's Jasmine Small. So Jordan Joslin to Jasmine. Two seconds left. One. Deep three. No good. Just missed off the back iron off the hands of Anderson. We end quarter number one. Malcolm North Central. The Knights with a 10-9 lead here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Welcome back to the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow, quarter number two of game number two between Malcolm and North Central. The first ever Nebraska girls basketball showcase as Malcolm controls it in the front court. Boosinger trying to give an attempt to steal that one away from Alyssa Fordick, but Fordick's able to gather it back in. She'll bring it to the near side of the left hand, goes with the runner, up no good. Backside rebound brought in by Weeblehouse. They'll go the other direction, throw ahead, as that one will be well long and out of bounds. That was Anderson staying corrected with the board. And I still don't have Malcolm. Now, these stats are very unofficial, but I don't have Malcolm for a rebound yet. That's because North Central has turned the ball over offensively so many times, 11 so far in this game. But they're kind of evening that out on the other half because they're limiting Malcolm to no second, second chance opportunities. Small as the ball is entered into C high. C high will be fouled and will head to the line to shoot two. Munger picking up the foul. Three team fouls for North Central, two for Malcolm. Ashland Seahigh, the 5'8 senior at the line. First free throw is up and no good. Spin of the ball and a couple of dribbles as Seahigh will look to tie things up at 10 apiece with her second free throw, and it is good. Now we will also come into the game. Lindsay will take a seat for North Central. Weeble House will inbound it, get it to Boosinger. Weeble House now in the middle of the floor, back to Boosinger near side. They'll go across court. Good defense there from Brown to knock it away as that might have been an open layup for Halleck. Yeah, Emma did a good job of getting back on defense, and you know it's so easy to back into the lane in those situations and take your eyes off the situation further up the court, but she kept her eyes up and stuck her hand out there. And then a turnover from North Central as the pass was too high. It was not contacted by anyone, so they'll go back to throw it on the far side of the floor. Defensively, North Central playing well, but just not holding on to the ball as much as they would probably like here in the first half. Small with it. 
up top to Brown. Brown works it up to the far side to Fordick. Fordick with the right-handed drive, and then contact to be called on the floor. It'll be on the baseline for Malcolm. Yeah, just a little bit of a hand check there. Uh, Boosinger was doing a good job trying to stay in front, and she almost did, but got a little handsy on the hip. Seven minutes left here in the second quarter. Three-pointer on the way from Fordick. No good backside rebound. Will be gathered in by North Central, and then it will be tied up. Correction, North Central does get the timeout before Malcolm is able to get the jump ball. So with 6.50 left here in the first half, we're all tied, 10 apiece, North Central and Malcolm. We'll come back to the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase right here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Welcome back to Broken Bow as North Central controls coming out of the timeout. Ball on the far side to Boosinger. They'll go near side, enter it in, but it goes off the hands of Halleck. Ball on the ground, brought in by Boosinger. She'll stop. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound by Halleck. Halleck going to kick it back out. Anderson with it. Now the three-pointer on the way. Far side off of Munger. Can't get it to go. Boosinger with the board. She can't get the layup to go, and North Central will rebound it once again. Munger goes to the top to Anderson. Anderson deep, three, no good, and that will be knocked out of bounds off of the hands of Halleck. Well, this is an interesting stat line here earlier in this one, Gavin. I have North Central winning the rebounding battle 10 to nothing right now. They're really just getting things off the glass. All tied up at 10 apiece, six minutes on the clock here in game number two between Malcolm and North Central. They're going to enter it into Brown underneath. Good pass, and cannot get the shot to go, but coming in for the board was, I believe that was Denton, but she travels with it, and the ball will go back to North Central. One of the hardest things in the world to do is to pull down a rebound in traffic and tell yourself to go right back up with it without shuffling your feet with no room to dribble. Weeblehouse will bring it across half for North Central. Weeblehouse throws it ahead to Munger. Munger, three-pointer on the way, near side corner, no good. Long rebound brought down, but standing out of bounds is Denton. The three-point shot was there for both teams here early, but it's been pretty quiet from the field thus far. So I was going to say, those, those open shots are there. If they start falling for either of these teams, we're going to really quickly see the nylon get a workout. Ball works back and forth for North Central. Far side is Anderson. She'll so throw it to Boosinger. Boosinger on a run. Good pass to Weeblehouse. Weeblehouse will be foul, but can't get the ball to roll in. But Weeblehouse will have a chance to pay it off at the free throw line. This one's going to go on Malcolm's Ashlyn Seahigh. This is her second, so she's uh, only the second player on the court with two fouls, North Central's Boosinger has two as well. First free throw is good by Weeblehouse. A couple of substitutions here for North Central. Allie Cosgrove and Addison Lindsay both come into the game. Lauren England will also come in. She is a 5'7 sophomore for the Clippers. Weeblehouse. Her second free throw is good as well. Two-point lead to North Central here with 5.24 left in the first half. Going the other direction with it quickly is Small. Small jumps off middle of the lane. Shot no good. Rebound brought down by Brown and Weeblehouse, but it's ripped away by Brown. It'll go to Small, and she'll get the jumper to go, and that ties things up at 12 apiece. Weeblehouse in the backcourt throws it ahead to Cosgrove. Cosgrove high toss. Able to gather that in somehow was Lindsay. Now they'll go near side to Cosgrove. 
into the corner. Now entry pass into Weeble House. Back out to the top to Munger. She'll throw it over top and just a little bit too high for Cosgrove to handle. It'll go out of bounds. Well, this is where the coaching staff of North Central reminds their players that the bounce pass does, in fact, exist. Lots, saw lots of chest passes and above-the-head passes that time out. Sometimes, you know, two passes over to the corner is just as fast, if not faster, than that one skip pass. Joslyn Small works the ball up the floor for Malcolm. Corner entry into Sedlak. They'll go back up to the top to Ashland Seahigh. Pass goes into Brown. Brown with the layup. Can't get it to go. Rebound brought in by Munger. Munger brings it across half. Throws it ahead. Looking for Cosgrove. Cosgrove works her way back around to the middle of the floor. Tosses it into Ooh. the third row into the stands and out of bounds as Malcolm will control. Well, and what caused that for... North Central, that throwaway, was the defensive pressure of Laura England. She was following her all the way around, keeping her hands out, just being right there and applying that pressure while she was dribbling caused her to put extra mustard on that pass and caused the turnover. Sometimes it's the little things, and it was there. All tied up at 12 apiece, 421 remaining here in the first half. Game number two here from the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase in Broken Bow. They had Pleasanton and Adams Central earlier with Adams Central winning it by two and a fantastic game, and we've got another great game here in front of us with North Central and Malcolm. Brown with it way out at the spike line. He'll go on the left side of the floor to uh, Denton as the ball will now work back up to the top of the key to Fordick. Malcolm just trying to find, trying to get it to Brown on the inside, but the defense has been stellar for North Central, preventing anything. Cross course pass near side to Denton as the shot comes up from Brown with a rebound, and then we'll have a jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Knights of North Central. Boosinger comes back into the game. Also back in is Jenna Halleck. Boosinger brings it up the floor, tosses it ahead to Halleck. Halleck gets the pass tipped away. They're going to try to move it quickly ahead with Fordick. Fordick goes right at the rim, but it's knocked away. Good block coming off the hands of Munger. Boosinger going the other direction. Coast to coast. No one stops her, and it rolls in and gives North Central a two-point lead. Fordick with it for Malcolm, working her way around. Trying to get it up the floor as we'll have a timeout. Malcolm wants to take one as it was not looking good in the backcourt for the Clippers. 3.04 left here in the first half. North Central 14, Malcolm 12. Malcolm with the ball out of the timeout. 14-12. 2.55 remaining here in the uh, first half. Top of the key with it is C High. They'll work the ball back around. Three-pointer coming up off of Fordick. No good. Brown with the rebound. She'll be fouled. She'll be at the line to shoot two. We'll see who the foul goes on. Cosgrove picking up her second personal. Well, the foul's not really spreading around for North Central. That's their second player with two here with uh, close to three minutes to go in the first half. Brown's first free throw off the iron, no good. So the score remains 14 to 12 as of now. Have a quick discussion from the officials as Brown will get a chance at her second. 
Second free throw, also no good, as getting the board is Halleck. Boosinger quickly up to four, throws it ahead, as that'll be a foul on Brown as she went through the back of Weeblehouse. And Weeblehouse did get popped right there, right in the middle of the back. And uh, Brown just trying to be aggressive and go for that ball. But uh, the contact was definitely made. And she appears to still be feeling a little bit on the bench. A little bit of whiplash there from Weeblehouse as North Central will inbound the ball into Munger. Munger top of the key, now boosting her far side. She'll get a screen, look to drive right down the middle of the lane, switches to the left hand, near side. Munger, three-pointer on the way, good! <laughs> Keenly Munger puts in another for North Central, 17-12. Lady Knights, ball up the floor quickly for Malcolm. Stop, looked like she wanted to shoot it. Initially did Sedlek, changed her mind. Now three-pointer coming. On the left side of the floor, it goes out of bounds off the hands of Malcolm. Diamond Sedlick looking for that three-pointer, just a bit long. Boosinger surveys, throws it across court, deep pass. Ball goes off of the hands of Munger, but North Central is still able to control it. Munger far side. She'll work her way back up to the top of the key. 2-3 zone here for Malcolm. Entry pass to Ander. Looked like Anderson wanted to enter it in. Changed her mind. Went with three-point shot. Rebound brought down by Malcolm. Fordick will bring it up the floor for the Clippers. 90 seconds left here in the first half. A great game thus far. As that'll be knocked away off of the hands. Boosting her the other direction. Great pass inside to Lindsay. She's fouled and will head to the line to shoot two. I have no idea how Boosinger got that ball in between all those legs. Yeah, that was quite the pass, and she had a little bit of backspin on it to get it there. And Brown uh, debating the call there. Kind of read her lips there. She said, I didn't even touch her. Well, uh, maybe a, a little bit. But uh, that is Brown's second foul. So now we've got both teams with two players, each with two fouls. So things are going to get interesting here as we work our way towards halftime. Weeblehouse will come into the game. 124 on the clock. Lindsay at the line. Her second free throw is also no good. Over two from the line. Score remains 17 to 12. Ball tossed ahead. Small initially looked at the three-pointer, changed her mind, runs around, gets a, sh a shot from the right side of the floor, and she splashes it in, 17-14. Jocelyn Small, good shot. Ball is thrown back to Weeblehouse, still on the backcourt. They'll able to get it ahead. Now Boosinger, three-pointer up and off the rim. No good. Brown with a good rebound. She'll throw it off near side to Fordick. will bring it across half. Fordick tosses it out far side. Said like the three, no good. It will go over the backboard. And out of bounds, as North Central will have 49 and a half seconds to work with. Well, we wondered if this second game would be able to live up to the bidding that the first game set for us. And so far, we've had some pretty good basketball. Things are tight. The first thing you look at is the scoreboard, of course. Only a three-point game, but on the court, everything's played out very even as well. Boosinger gets the ball knocked away and then does an excellent job of just waiting and tying things up. The possession arrow will favor Malcolm. Boosinger, I think, a little frustrated with herself. Kind of had that look on her face of should have reevaluated that pass, but now she'll have a chance to make up for it on the defensive end as she will guard Fordick, who will bring it across half for Malcolm. Small, near side. Looking to drive around, can't find anything. Entry pass goes inside to see high, and she'll get the layup to go. One point game, 17-16, North Central with the lead. Weeblehouse throws it ahead to Boosinger. Boosinger goes right at the lane, shot goes up, no good. Rebound brought in by Seahigh. Seahigh trying to find someone, able to get it to Fordick. Fordick, five seconds left, going at the rim, kick out. Three-pointer, Sedlek on the way. No good backside rebound brought in by Halleck, and that will bring us to the end of the first half. Well, it's been a back-and-forth game, a close game. Two very evenly matched teams. North Central leads it going into halftime, 17 
Malcolm, the Clippers. They trail by one, 16. Jeremy will add up some of the stats. We'll take a little break. When we come back, we'll take a look at those stats and line things up for what is coming up this afternoon from here in Broken Bow at the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase.
Welcome back to the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow. Game number two between North Central and Malcolm at halftime of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. And uh, Jeremy, things right now, the turnover bug has kind of caught North Central a little bit, but they're paying it off on the rebound side of things and also preventing Malcolm really any shots from the interior. Yeah, it's really keeping them close in this game. And uh, we'll, in fact, uh, we'll run down the scores of North Central here first as they are listed as the home team this uh, afternoon. Uh, we'll start with the leading score for North Central, Brielle Businger. She has five points, hit a three in the first quarter and a two in the second. She's uh, followed up by a couple of players. Well, actually, we've got uh, Hunter Weebelhouse who has four points. Now, I say four. I had her for five, but a, a, a three corrected to a two on the floor has her with four points. Three points apiece for Ali Cosgrove and Keely Munger. They each have a three-pointer in this one and Jenna Halleck has a two-pointer to round out the scoring for North Central. For Malcolm they are led by Jocelyn Small. She has four points in the second quarter and two points in the first quarter for her six. Five points for Alyssa Fordick. She hit a three and a two in the first quarter and then three points for Ashlyn Seahigh and two points for Diamond Sedlak. Uh, one for four from the free throw line for Malcolm. North Central was two of four but like you said, Gavin, North Central really winning the rebounding battle. They've got twice as many as Malcolm. That's a 12 to 6 run right now on rebounds. But I think the story of the first half was the turnovers. Malcolm only turning it over six times by my mark. North Central with 10 more than that with 16. So if North Central can really clean up those turnovers and keep pulling down those rebounds, the points, if they get the ball up towards the rim, are just naturally going to come. North Central will start with the ball here in the second half. We'll switch directions and head to the far side of the floor. Anderson, good job by waiting for that ball to come back down. Anderson in the corner, enters it in, but tried to enter it in, but it's taken away by Small. Jocelyn Small going the other direction. She'll back things out, looks for Brown on the inside, can't find her, so she'll hand it off to Fordick. He'll bring it back to the top of the key. Far side to the floor to Malcolm. Ball works its way back to the middle to Brown. Brown outside the three-point line. High post entry into Seahigh. Seahigh with the layup, can't get it to go, but coming in there is Brown with the board. Three-pointer on the way from Fordig, no good, back iron. Rebound fought four, and then a foul will be called. As that one will go against Diamond Sedlak, who tried to tie up the rebound from Lindsay, but just got a little bit too much arm. Just the first foul on Diamond. North Central brings up the floor. Boosinger. Boosinger and Lindsay play catch a little bit. Boosinger dives to the middle. A couple of drives, throws it up with the right hand. No good. Rebound brought down by Cosgrove. Cosgrove kicks it out to Boosinger. Far side looking for the three. And on the way is Munger. Can't get it to go, though. And... Coming away with the rebound is Malcolm. Going the other direction quickly, right at the hoop. Tried to lay it in there, but Fordick just couldn't get it to roll. As we'll hand it off to Lindsay, who will head the other direction for North Central. Into the corner to Cosgrove. Cosgrove uses the screen, tosses it over. Boosinger, three on the way. It's good. Boosinger. Flashes in another 2016 lead, North Central. Stepping into the three-pointer on the other end is Sedlak. She can't get that one to go, and Munger gets the rebound. Lindsay kind of tripped and fell playing defense for North Central, but luckily for her, Sedlak couldn't quite get it to go in. North Central on the offensive side of the board, throws it in. Good snag there by Lindsay. Lindsay at the hoop, gets it blocked, and Brown comes away with the board. Fordick throws it ahead to Seahigh. Seahigh, good move, but she'll be fouled on the floor before the shot. All right, so Seahigh pulls one out of the bag and pulls the Euro step out. She kind of flashed a smile there <laughs> towards the bench. She really wanted that one to go. We'll see if she gets another opportunity to show us that move. 20 to 16 here in the third quarter, game number two between Malcolm and North Central. Fordick 
Gets it to Small. Small looking to drive the right. He puts the shot up just a bit short. It'll land out of bounds and will go back over to North Central. Boosinger throws it ahead to Cosgrove. Cosgrove back to Boosinger, hands it off. Ball works its way to Lindsay. Lindsay, good move, but I believe that's going to be a travel, and it should be. It was a really good idea to tuck the ball and dive, but I think she kind of lost her footing a little bit about halfway through her second step. When it looked good, right when she was in the middle of the lane, she took two steps, but I think that back toe coming through just tapped back on the ground again. So with the turnover, Malcolm will have a chance to close in on this four-point gap. Small, good crossover move, taken away by Boosinger. Good steal. She'll give it back to Lindsay. Lindsay, dangerous pass, but Boosinger steps in, takes it away. Boosinger to Munger. Back to Boosinger on the left side of the floor. They're going near side to Cosgrove. Boosinger now with a good entry pass, goes inside to Halleck. Halleck can't get the shot to go. Rebound brought down by Malcolm. Throw ahead to Johnson Small. Small ends it into Brown. Brown looking underneath, ball knocked away. It'll go out of bounds off the hands of, I believe that is Munger. It is. Malcolm will inbound it underneath their own hoop. Small with it looking to drive. The floater on the way, back iron. No good, rebound brought in by Halleck. Boosinger throws it ahead to Cosgrove. Three-pointer off the iron, no good. And getting the board is Malcolm. That was Seahigh with the board. Actually, that's Small, Jasmine Small came in just a little bit ago. Looking to drive is Malcolm on the inside. Can't get it to go as ripping the ball away there is Weeblehouse. She'll hand it off to Anderson who goes the other direction. Anderson, entry pass gets knocked away. Able to control it though is Halleck. Halleck dives after the ball, but she slides and rolls over with it. That'll turn the ball back over to Malcolm. Just about halfway through this third quarter, 4.14 left, 20 to 16 in favor of North Central. We'll have some substitutions. Malcolm's gonna wanna play with five players as they get the fifth back on the floor. Quickly up the floor is Fordick. Near side is Jasmine Small. Pass goes inside. Ball on the floor still. Still looking and we'll have a tie ball as the jump ball goes in favor of Malcolm. Well, you can tell by the way that Malcolm is reacting that that pick and roll works a lot for them when they get Emma Brown involved. But North Central, even though they give up some size and some height down there, they're really getting in the passing lanes. And then those things don't matter. If you break up the pass before it can happen, then the shot doesn't even go up at the rim, and that is why they've got this lead. Malcolm, three-pointer in the corner from Fordick, no good. Rebound being fought for, it'll go out of bounds. It will go off the hands of Boosinger, I believe. And on that tie-up, Addison Anderson had to come out of the game. She got popped right around the nose area. It looks like she may have a bloody nose, so she'll be out for a small moment as she gets that work done on the bench. Looking to drive is Fordick, and that is sent back. Weeblehouse right there to return that out of bounds. Possession will stay with Malcolm. Well, you look at Weeblehouse, it's hard to keep a smile off your face after a block like that. She's feeling it. Jasmine Small as a pass it goes inside, but it's knocked away. Weeblehouse will have the other direction, I'll hand it off to Munger. Boosinger. Looking for a screen. Goes back to Munger. Munger will take the screen, but ends up throwing it to Boosinger anyway. Cosgrove with it in the corner. She'll work her way back to the middle of the floor. Boosinger, high post entry into Weeblehaus. Ball is no good, and then we'll have a foul called against Weeblehaus. Brown doing a good job of securing that ball. And she's doing a great job. You hear coaches talk all the time. 
You get the ball, you got to chin the ball. That means get those elbows out there. Don't throw them around, but when you get more arm behind it and you squeeze that ball, it's hard for anyone to get in there, and it earned her a, a foul there. Malcolm will inbound it with 3.17 on the clock here in the third. Excellent game here for game number two. Malcolm into the offensive set. Brown gets it near side to Johnson Small. Small with the drive, but it's knocked away, taken away, and in the other direction is Cosgrove. That was all Boosinger there. Cosgrove able to clean things up. Munger right across half court, but then a timeout's going to be called by North Central as they will retain possession. 20 to 16, North Central still holding on to that lead. You're listening to high school basketball from the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Come back to the Broken Bow Indian Gym here in Broken Bow, Nebraska for the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Game number one between Adams Central and Pleasanton went to the Patriots of Adams Central. It went right down to the wire, and this one is looking like it'll be very similar as we'll have a tie-up, and the possession arrow will favor Malcolm. Well, if we thought the first half was tight, the second half is even more tight because both of these teams have turned the ball over the same amount, and Malcolm only has a two-rebound advantage. The difference is one three-pointer by North Central. Boosinger knocked it in early on in this quarter. Besides that, we've had no second-half scoring. Brown will toss it over near side of Fordick. Fordick with the runner, and it is up and no good as... Cosgrove comes away with the rebound. They'll go the other direction with Boosinger. Boosinger tosses it over far side, looking for Halleck. Now the runner from Cosgrove can't get it to go, and the rebound to Brown. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter. Near side is Sedlak looking to drive. Shot is no good, taken away on the rebound by Halleck. Ball is punched around, and then there will be a turnover. Malcolm controls, small in the corner, back up top to Fordick, the three, no good, a little bit long, and looking to save it, and able to do so is sea high, but it goes to North Central. Munger is going to be, will throw it over to Boosinger, and then a foul is whistled against Fordick, and head coach Klepper has got to be careful. He came a little ways onto the floor, and the official gave him a warning. I think his main argument there was that it was the far side official from where the action was happening when there was an official within 10 feet of it who did not make that call. And then the second foul is called right away on Joslyn Small. And, you know, going back to that point um, about the far side official, you have to remember that he is he has all of the backcourt, so that's still his call even though it is a long way away. Uh, but definitely can understand the frustrations on the distance for sure. Uh, way to give me the official talk, <laughs> Gavin. Come on now, get off of your stool. I'm fine. It was a horrible call. We have a great game here, though, between these two teams. Very well matched. This ball will be turned over, and that will be a foul called against Halleck as she goes right through the body. 20 to 16, 120 remaining here in the third. We just got to get the lid off these buckets, right? I'd like to hear the net snap once <laughs> here in the second half. 
as well as both teams shot to start this game. Didn't think it'd be that way as it'll be a steal coming off the hands of Boosinger. She'll go right at the rim, at the hoop. She will be knocked down, but no foul call. Brown with the rebound. We'll go the other direction, does Malcolm. Looking to push is Fordick. Fordick throws it ahead near side to Sedlak. Sedlak, three-pointer, small, near side, no good. Backside rebound, still fought for, and then going at the hoop and getting an easy layup is Fordick. Only the second basket we've had in this half. And then a foul will be called against Fordick. That is four team fouls against the Clippers, three team fouls for the Knights. 48.5 remaining here in the third quarter, 20 to 18, North Central. We have yet to have one player for either team with more than two fouls. So we're sitting good going into the fourth quarter for some physical play. 37 seconds as Boosinger brings it back to the middle of the floor. Cosgrove to Munger in the corner. Munger, left-handed dribble, staying outside that three-point line. Boosinger looking to drive. She's got a lane if she wants it, and then I'll be a foul. Called against Small. I know Small is frustrated, but you got to get that off arm off the hip of Boosinger, and that time just pushing her down to the floor. Thing is, is, that's only the second foul for Jocelyn, so still looking good. First free throw from Boosinger is no good. Boosinger will have a chance at a second. And she'll make that one and extend the lead, 21-18. 21-18 with 26.7 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Malcolm brings it across half with 20 seconds on the clock. Small. Looks to drive on the near side, good defense, as now she'll get a good spin around, but then she'll be fouled. She'll head to the line to shoot two, does Jocelyn Small. Emotion's kind of running high for both teams here. The, the ball not going in the basket, and that can really cause a lot of frustration to happen. Um, you know, uh, we, we've seen coaches here get upset as of late, and now a little bit of chirping going on from the players towards the officiating crew. Um, so hopefully things kind of cool off here as we head to the fourth and maybe the baskets start to fall a little bit more and that'll help. First free throw was no good from Jocelyn Small and she can't make the second one either. Boosinger with the rebound, she'll go the other direction. Left hand, it goes right around, looking to go coast to coast, jump stop, hands it off to Weeblehouse and then Weeblehouse and Denton tie up the ball. It will stay in favor of North Central, 6.3 on the clock. Boosinger will throw it in for the Knights. Gets it to the top to Anderson. Anderson guarded closely, goes to the rim. Two seconds, one on the way. And then the rebound will not matter because that takes us to the end of the third quarter. As we head to the fourth, the North Central Knights, 21. And the Malcolm Clippers, 18. You're listening to the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.
21-18. The first game went down to the wire between Pleasanton and Adams Central, and this one is shaping up to do the exact same thing. Malcolm and North Central here in game number two of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase, the first ever, and I would uh, bet to say it has been real popular thus far. North Central will be on defense here in the fourth quarter as a runner off the hands of Fordick, no good, but cleaning up the boards and getting the and one is Ashlyn Sehi. That was just good backside rebounding there. Uh, you know, with the short shot, she knew she didn't have time to go and find a body to box out, so she just made herself as big as possible, spread those arms out, and then attack towards the ball. And Sehi will tie it up at 21 apiece. Here we go. Liebelhaus brings it up the floor, toss it to Boosinger. She'll bring it across half court for North Central. Boosinger comes to a stop. Anderson takes a few dribbles. Now we'll work it near side to Munger. Munger, one dribble, cross court past Anderson. Anderson looking inside, gets to Weeblehouse. Weeblehouse shot is short, no good. And it will go out of bounds. The ball will go back over to Malcolm. Well, 21-21 with not even a minute gone here in the fourth quarter. Uh, what do you think the over-under is on both of these teams scoring 21 points in the fourth quarter to equal <laughs> their first three quarters of scoring? Uh, not good, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> Offensively, neither team has been able to really get much, but defensively, they played really, really well. Far side is Fordick. Looking inside, can't find anything. Finally able to get it to see high. See high with the shot, and it's good. And I believe that's the first lead that Malcolm has had since the first half. That's five points in less than a minute for see high, and she now leads all scorers. 23 21, six and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. Cross court pass to Boosinger. Three on the way to take the lead. No good. Rebound brought in. By Florida, guess she'll have the other direction. Malcolm's got numbers. She'll go to the right side, throws it up, and it is no good. But she'll be fouled on the head to the line. Picking up the foul is Addison Anderson. Well, and that's just start smart play there by Fordick. Uh, you know, she could have gone to the left side, but she goes around to the right, cuts through the lane. She doesn't go out of her way to initiate the contact, but she doesn't avoid it either and earns her a trip to the line. Two free throws upcoming for Fordick. First one is good. Three-point lead for Malcolm, 24-21. Second free throw is good as well. Ball will go off the foot of Weeblehouse, but she's able to pick it up, throw it in. Weeblehouse, near side Munger. Three-pointer contested on the way, no good. Brown with the rebound. This is a situation where North Central is trailing, but they cannot, cannot panic. Drive coming off the hands of Small. She can't get it to go. Boosinger with the rebound, knocked away. Ball is loose, it will go out of bounds off of Munger. And Malcolm will have it underneath her own hoop with a chance to extend their four-point lead. North Central appears calm from the shoulders up. And uh, from the shoulders down, they're kind of making some panic moves with their arms and legs here. Shooting the, uh, the threes on the other side, trying to get back into it quickly rather than looking for those shots inside. And then defensively, uh, you know, rather than chinning the ball and taking control of those turnovers, just shooting them out of bounds themselves. Malcolm will take a timeout. I believe it was before the ins inbounds pass. Maybe. Either way, Malcolm's going to take a timeout. 25-21, Clippers with the lead. Don't forget, we've got more basketball coming up from the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. The very first one, and I think we'll be seeing this one for years to come. We had Adams Central and Pleasanton earlier. Adams Central was able to get the victory there and a barn burner down to the end. North Central and Malcolm, of course, right here in front of us at the moment. 
And then coming up, we've got Louisville and Mullen. That will be game number three as coming into that game, seven and five, Louisville in Class C1, and then Mullen Broncos at nine and two, rated number eight, according to the Omaha World Herald in Class D2. They'll be moving up a couple classes to take on Louisville. And then our nightcap is Broken Bow and Oakland Craig, two C1 teams, Oakland Craig at eight and four, and Broken Bow, the number three team ranked by the Omaha World Herald. Both games will be streamed, of course, and will also be available on our radio station, 95.3 FM, KBBN. Lindsay with a steal for North Central. will throw it ahead to Boosinger, who looks to drive. She's going to go right around to Munger. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Rebound. Fought for. Still being bounced around. And it will favor Malcolm. It goes oh, out goodness. of bounds. I am not sure that I even come close to agreeing with that one. It looked like Brown had almost an entire palm on that one and slapped it out of bounds. And uh, you know what? I think the North Central faithful are, uh, are agreeing with me there. Unfortunately, I believe Addis, I can't tell what the number is, but one of the players for uh, Malcolm has unfortunately hobbled to the bench, unable to put much weight on her leg. So we hope the best for her. But right now, Malcolm with the lead, but they turn it over as Boosinger comes down the floor. Boosinger, cross court, long two coming from Cosgrove, and she gets it to go. Boy, much needed bucket there. That really helps out, pulls them to within two, and uh, that's only their second score from the field here in the whole second half. Looking to drive, now the kick out to Johnson Small. Small, right-handed drive, up top to Fordick. Fordick guarded by Fusinger. Now near side to Sedlak. Sedlak gets it to C high, and then that one's taken away, but that'll be a travel. As Really nothing Lindsay could do after she took it. Her legs just kind of come out from underneath of her, and that will give the ball back to Malcolm. And Malcolm really fortunate not to turn the ball over there because that was a forced pass for sure to, to the block. I know you want to get Brown involved and get those really high percentage shots here, but can't make that pass. Seahigh will turn the ball over as she went to attack. And that'll give the ball back to North Central. 4.46 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 25-23, the lead right now in favor of the Clippers, but that'll be another turnover from North Central. And the injured player from Malcolm is Jasmine Small. You know, I think a, a message that both of these head coaches could give their entire teams is deep breaths. We get a calm down here, under five minutes to go. It's a tight game. We've got to value every single possession. Fans from both sides cheering loudly as the pass goes in, but that'll be a foul whistled against Cosgrove as she goes across the arms, and that's the seventh team foul against North Central, so that will put that will put Fordick at the line as she'll have a chance at a one and one. And Cosgrove joins her teammate Munger as the only two t uh, members of their team with three fouls. In fact, actually no players for Malcolm have three fouls on the other side. First free throw is true from Fordick. To make it a two possession game, Fordick at the line and it's good. Fordick a 5-2 sophomore Perfect from the line. That will be out of bounds and will stay in favor of North Central as it goes off the outstretched hands of the Malcolm player. 4-17. As the ball is entered inside, but it's going to be a jump ball and it will stay with North Central. North, North Central just a little bit out of sorts. Yeah, they're out of sorts specifically with passing the ball. Uh, first in the full court, passing the ball way too high. And then Anderson, you know, she was lucky to tie that one up because that one was thrown right at her shoelaces. you got to give your teammates some passes that they can work with. Looking to drive is Weeble House, and she'll be fouled. Just the sixth team foul against Malcolm, but... As she was shooting, she'll get a chance at the line, and I believe that's just the first player for Malcolm that makes it to the 
third personal foul, Mark. Yep, Brown with three, and that was a good move by Weeblehouse. Just a really smart move. She goes in, initiates the contact, has a ball a little bit low. I would almost argue most of that body contact was on the ball rather than the body, but she makes it to the line and takes advantage. She splashes them both as the pass is knocked away, but Boosinger can't quite get there in time as Fordick will be able to control it. Four minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter, 25-27. Malcolm with the lead over North Central. Brown at the top, goes near side to Fordick. Fordick passes it off to Seahigh. Seahigh to Brown, no good. Rebound brought in by Boosinger. She'll head the other direction. Uh, she'll be trapped in the corner, but a timeout will be called by North Central. Smart move by McCleary. Things were not looking promising in the corner there for his girls as they trail 27-25. We'll come back with more basketball here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Coming out of the timeout, North Central will continue with the ball. 27-25, they trail, but this is a time they cannot panic. They panic, they turn it over as the ball is done exactly that. It is turned over. Malcolm will control in the front court. Fordick, far side to Small. Small trying to enter it inside, changes their mind, goes to Brown at the top of the key. Now near side to Fordick. Fordick works her way back to the top, all knocked away, but able to chase it down to see high. Now standing in the center circle is Fordick. Malcolm more than happy to continue to pass the ball around and burn clock. Pass goes inside to Seahigh. Seahigh with the jumper, no good. Rebound brought down by Cosgrove, goes off her foot, but it's saved by North Central, as we'll head the other direction with Anderson. Anderson goes to Boosinger, it'll go out of bounds, and it'll go off of Boosinger. And that honestly was a 50-50 ball anyway. That's a really tough pass to make. Well, that was quite literally the definition of a bang bang play but again <laughs> north central really making those unnecessary passes clear across the court lots of empty possessions 24 turnovers now on the game and you know malcolm they're providing pressure defensively don't get me wrong but north central is really making a lot of mental mistakes when it comes to these passes Looking to drive is Small. Small goes to the rim. Ball goes off the side of the hoop. Knocked away. Small recovers and then a timeout called by Malcolm. So North Central does a good job to rebound the ball, but then Small does a better job to knock it away and take it away and gives the possession back to Malcolm as they lead 27 to 25 as we get closer to the end of this fourth quarter. We'll have some great basketball action coming up a little bit later on between Mullen and Louisville. Broken Bow and Oakland Craig will be our last two games. And uh, it's it's been a lot of fun thus far. I wouldn't expect anything different at a session two. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be fun continuing forward. And, um, you know, a few of the fans have shown up early to catch, you know, these first two games in the early session. And then uh, they'll clear the the whole uh, area out, the whole gym out, and then they'll get ready for the second session. But uh, I want to talk about what Coach McCleary's got to be telling North Central right now. The one thing he's got to tell them is, look at that scoreboard. We're down two. The last 5, 10, 15 possessions, they do not matter. This is a whole new game when we break out of this huddle, and we can make the right decisions from here on out and win this basketball game against a very good undefeated team across the court. So We'll see what North Central comes out of that timeout to do defensively. 
Cannot panic if you're North Central. As the ball is inbound to the corner to Fordick. Three-pointer on the way, no good. Munger will control and throws, throws it ahead to Boosinger. Boosinger goes right at the rim to tie it. Off the front of the iron, no good. And then the ball will be tied up. But it will favor Malcolm. Pretty good look there from Fordick. She just couldn't quite get it to go in. And another good look from Boosinger, but she has the same problem. Quickly up the floor as Fordick just demolishes that pressure. Pa tosses it off to Small. Small with the runner too much. Ball is on the floor, and then that'll be a travel as the only one possessing it was Brown when she hit the floor. These players are going to earn an ice bath after this game. <laughs> it has been very physical. Lots of bumps and bruises, a bloody nose. We've seen a little bit of everything, and lots of players on the floor, too. Boosinger throws it ahead to Weeblehaus. Weeblehaus into the corner to Cosgrove. Cosgrove will work her way back to the top before she passes off to Boosinger. Munger, three-pointer, far side. It's good! 28-27, North Central with the lead. 145 on the clock. Ball thrown ahead to Small. Now near side corner to Sadlack for the lead. That is no good. It'll go out of bounds, but it will go to North Central as it carried off of no one's hands. <laughs> and the uh, the official, uh, she turned around and said, I didn't touch it. Well, I, I did see her touch it from my angle right here on top of it. And the official, I read his lips. He said, I've made the call. Why tell me that? Yeah. Going the other way is Boosinger, but she has it knocked away. Now, this is an opportunity where you got to play tough defense if you're North Central. Any foul by either team sends the other to the line. Fordick, some good moves. Has to toss it off to Brown. Now Small on the near side. Small, looks to drive baseline. She'll throw it cross court, far side to Fordick. Fordick will drive. She'll bring it to the top of the key. One minute left here in the fourth. 28-27, Malcolm, North Central. Throws it near side to Sedlak. Sedlak with the drive, but she's fouled and will head to the line with a chance to tie it, if not take the lead. And that was kind of funny when, when the ball got down there into the traffic. The whistle was blown, and there were so many defenders in the area. All of the North Central players start looking at each other, and Jenna Halleck looked at her team at Weeble House and said, I, I can't believe it. They called that, and Weeble House said, no, no uh, it was me that did the slapping. <laughs> Weeble House does commit the foul, but the first free throw is no good. Second on the way, and we are tied. 28-28, 50 seconds left in the fourth. Will we see our first overtime in our first Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase? North Central, 41 seconds. It's going to be close to a five-second, able to get rid of it. A timeout will be called by North Central. This is shaping up to be a fantastic finish. All tied at 28 apiece. We'll reset things for you. 38.1 on the clock here in the fourth quarter. North Central and Malcolm are tied at 28. 18 fouls for North Central, six for Malcolm. So, Jeremy, when you talk about the defense, it is more important than ever to keep your hands back and move your feet. Yeah, you got to move your feet. You got to stay in front and apply pressure without getting handsy. And this is where coaches say you got to get as big as you can. Spread your legs out to the point where you can move and get your arms out there because you never know where the person you're guarding is going to pass it. So getting your arms out there automatically shuts down two passing lanes out from the gate. So. You know, this is where fundamentals come down. Fundamentals can get you a win here, and that goes for either team. 38 seconds left here in the fourth. North Central with the ball, and it goes right through the hands of uh, one of the North Central players, but it gets knocked out of bounds on the defensive side. And now Malcolm will have a chance to take the lead. 30 seconds left here in the fourth. Malcolm to inbound it. Still can't find anyone. They'll eventually get it to Brown. Brown tosses it back to Sea High. Sea High to Fordick. Fordick trying to enter into Brown. Ball knocked away, taken away by Munger. Good defensive play. 17 seconds, 16. Trapped in the corner and taking it away is, is 
Malcolm, but a timeout is called by North Central, and that could not have been timed any better <laughs> if you're Coach McCleary. Well, and Coach McCleary timed it perfectly, and here's the, here's, I'm going to break this down for you folks. I was looking right at Coach McCleary. He called that timeout about three seconds earlier than the whistle was blown. He had his hand in the air. He yelled timeout three times. Unfortunately, by the time the whistle was blown, the ball had been turned over and was going the other direction. That's why the Malcolm fans in attendance are so upset right now. But that timeout was, in fact, called on time. The official just didn't blow the whistle right away. And that does happen. I can't say that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Seen that happen a lot of times. But, man, what a game this is turning out to be. 28-28 here in the fourth. Now something else to note, North Central is out of timeouts. Malcolm has one remaining. A good time to save that final timeout if you're Coach McCleary trying to save that possession because there was no one defensively for North Central and it would have been an easy layup at the other end. 12 seconds on the clock. Weeble House inbounds it to Boosinger. Boosinger in the lane, blocked by Brown. Five seconds, four, heading the other direction is Malcolm. Long distance shot on the way for the win. No good, and we are heading to overtime here in game number two of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Malcolm, North Central, it's going to take more than four quarters to figure out the winner of this one. We'll be back after a quick timeout here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Jeremy, this has been a blast. So far, the margin of victory between two games is two points. Adams Central and Pleasanton, it was a two-point victory from Adams Central. And right now, we're tied heading into overtime. North Central wins the tip, and Boosinger is able to track it down before it goes out of bounds. Boosinger. Far side, ball will work its way around to Boosinger back in the near side corner. Halleck gets it over to Cosgrove. Shot is a little bit long. It will be out of bounds, and Malcolm will possess. Well, it's pretty simple as we get into overtime here, Gavin. Which of these teams is going to be able to figure out how to score the basketball more than the other team? Well, both of these teams have done great defensively, but who can do it better offensively because it's the points that get you the win. We'll see what happens. Brown with it at the top of the key. Great backdoor cut going to the inside to Fordick, and she'll be fouled. Excellent backdoor cut. Does that foul? I think we'll go on Weeble House, and it will. And that's foul number four for a player who's had a pretty good second half. Fordick at the line. And she scores the first to give Malcolm a one-point lead. Well, I refuse to give you the stat line and jinx her, but she's doing very well from the free throw line. And you know what? This, may, this game for both sides just may well come down to free throws. The second one rolls around and is good. The Malcolm players on the bench holding hands, hoping for the best. Ball is knocked away, goes back into the backcourt. Weeble House tracks it down. Gets to Boosinger. She'll bring it across half. 315 
remaining here in the first overtime. Pass goes around to Weebhouse. Great pass inside, and she scores the bucket to tie it up at 30. Fordick brings it across. Near side, Sedlak. Sedlak takes the screen. Inside to Brown. Brown underneath. Can't get the shot to go, but she'll get her on board and score the layup. 32-30. First overtime, 22 minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the first overtime. North Central in the offensive set. Near side, they'll enter it into Weeble House underneath. Weeble House, great move inside and scores the bucket, and we're tied again. Okay, what happened as we headed it into <laughs> overtime? Now they can't stop scoring. Said Lackett within the corner, she'll dribble back toward the top. See high, enters it into Brown. Brown gets it swatted away by Weeble House. Oh, well, she's fired up. <laughs> she got she got a couple of high – oh, and now she's got to come out of the game. <laughs> she just made that great play. I think the sub was already over there waiting for her, but she's all kinds of pumped up after sending that one back. Maybe a little offensive-defensive sub there. As remember, Weeble House has four. Fordick controls it for Malcolm. Now small with it in the corner. Works her way back toward the middle, gets it knocked away, but still controlled by the Clippers. Fordick right behind the back move, but it is knocked away. Brown is able to recover to get there in time. One minute, 50 seconds on the clock. Overtime number one. Small has the ball. Small looking to drive with the left hand. Hands it off to Fordick. We'll go back up top. Looking to drive is see high, see high is fouled hard as that one will go against Anderson. Well, you know what they say, get your money's worth. And uh, Anderson did. She's got uh, one of her nostrils plugged up. She was the one that had the bloody nose earlier. Boy, this has been a, a true defensive battle between these two teams. If you like defense, this was the game for you. So at the line to shoot two. First one rolls off and is no good. Weevil House will come back into the game for Lindsay. Take a one-point lead, and it's good. See high with the free throw, gives the Clippers a 33-32 lead. Ball thrown ahead. With it is Munger. 90 seconds left here in the first overtime. Weevil House with it, looks to drive from the baseline, left side, and then that'll be a push, as that'll send Weevil House to the line for a one and one. Sedlak picking up the foul there. That's just the second on Diamond. Weeble House at the line, a chance to tie it. Can take the lead as well. Front end of the one and one bounces around the rim. No good. Brown with the rebound. 120 on the clock, 33-32. Malcolm just needs to keep a hold of the ball and shoot nothing but layups. Brown with it at the top. Well, hand it off to Fordick as she works her way to the top of the floor. Pass goes near side to Sedlak. Sedlak looking to drive. One minute on the clock and then a timeout called by Malcolm. 33-32, one minute and one second remaining in overtime number one. We've got a classic here in game number two of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.
as we come back to the Broken Bow Indian Gym. Malcolm with the ball, looking to wane this clock down. They lead 33-32 over North Central. Ball is nearly knocked away by Boosinger, goes off the leg. Boosinger able to get there in time and recover it off the deflection. Fordick controls, 40 seconds left. Small with a drive, goes to the rim, and it's blocked. Coming up with the ball is Munger. She'll throw it to Lindsay. Lindsay trying to get it over to Boosinger. They do, and then we'll have a timeout called by North Central as they'll take their one and only timeout here in overtime. Oh, boy. 33-32. All right, Jeremy, as they go to the huddle, what's each coach telling their players? Well, we'll start with North Central. It's pretty easy there. Ball security and getting a good quality shot. Best case scenario, they bleed it all the way down and go for the game winner. But lots of different coaches have, have different philosophies on this. Do you go for the shot? and leave yourself about three or four seconds at a, for a chance at a putback? Or do you kind of bleed it all the way down and go for the best possible shot that you can get, which is a layup? So that's what they're deciding over there in the north central huddle. Over on the Malcolm side, that's what we talked about the last time there was a timeout. Making yourself big defensively. Don't get your arm hacking in there. If they put up a shot that is looking pretty good, uh, you know what? If, if you're going to foul down low, if they're going to get a good look at it, that's what I said the last time there was a foul. you got to get your money's worth. If you can send them to the line and make them earn it in a high-pressure situation like this, that's what you do. 24 seconds on the clock. North Central with the ball. Munger, well outside the three-point line. Boosinger, 15 on the clock. Boosinger goes to Weeble House. Munger, 12. Cross-court pass is taken away. Goes off the leg of Malcolm, and it goes out of bounds. Uh, those are those skip passes that have been so dangerous for North Central, but they continue to throw them. Sometimes you just can't pass it all the way over there. Make two passes to get it there instead. Six seconds. Five. Munger with it. Boosinger, three on the clock. Got to get a shot up. She puts up a shot. No good. And that will bring us to the end of the game. Malcolm is victorious. 33-32. They're able to defeat North Central here in game number two of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Game one, Adam Central and Pleasanton was a two-point win for Adam Central. Malcolm is able to defeat North Central here in game number two, 33-32. So far, the first ever Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase has been everything and more. Jeremy will tally up the stats. We'll take a break. Don't go anywhere, though. We've got some more basketball coming up between Mullen and Louisville, Broken Bow and Oakland Craig to round out the night. Stick around. We'll come back right back here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.
Welcome back to the Broken Bow Indian Gym. As you can see on your screen, Malcolm is able to defeat North Central in overtime, 33-32 in our second game of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. And Jeremy, the defense from both teams was stellar. Couldn't quite knock down as many shots as they would have liked, uh, but when it came down to the end, both teams just playing incredibly well. Well, at halftime, this game was 17-16 in favor of North Central, and we knew that we were in for a big defensive battle at that point. Really, we knew it at the end of the first quarter. It was 10-9, so these two teams just really had something about having a, a one-point edge at each of the breaks. Let's take a look at some of the stats. We'll start with North Central, the home team, on the scoreboard this afternoon. They were led by Hunter Wiebelhaus with 10, right behind her, Brielle Businger with 9. Six points for Keeley Munger, uh, five points for Ali Cosgrove, and two points for Jenna Halleck. North Central really had some trouble with the turnovers, 26 by my mark for the North Central Lady Knights. For Malcolm, getting the victory by one point with 33. They were led by Alyssa Fordick. She had a great second half, scored six points in the second half, four of which came from the free throw line. She was four for four from the free throw line in the fourth quarter, and it continued on into overtime for her. She went to the line twice, and she knocked them both down. That's how she got her 13 points. Nine points for Ashlyn Seahigh. She had five points in the fourth quarter and also was one of two from the free throw line in overtime. Six points for Jocelyn Small, three points for Diamond Sedlak, and two points for Emma Brown to round out the scoring for Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm really kind of fell down in the hole early on in this game when it came to rebounds. North Central was really dominating them there, but Malcolm was able to turn over North Central, and that really kept them within striking distance. Neither of these teams really were able to gain much more of a lead than I think five points was the largest lead we saw in this game. So a good game start to finish, and let's just hope as we head to the second session of this four-game showcase that the fun continues. Two games, a spread of three points, for two victories here so far. It's been a lot of fun. Malcolm improves to 11-0 after winning that one, 33-32. North Central falls to 9-3. and three. Stick around, more great basketball action on the way. Our next game up is Mullen and Louisville. That will be right back here on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. You're already watching it on Facebook, Twitter, and or YouTube. And we will also be uh, streaming, or we will also have that live on our radio station 95.3 FM, KBBN. This game was brought to you by some great sponsors on the video side. Mead Lumber, Palmer Monument, Geared for Sports, Agland ATV, Grocery Cart, Insurance of the Heartland, Shelter Insurance, Vera Wireless, Downey Drilling, Triple Blast Boutique, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, BD and Broken Bow, Sand Hill Equipment, Lashley Land, G&V's Market, Rock County Hospital, all great sponsors of the second game between Malcolm and North Central. We'll take a break, and uh, when we come back, we will set things up between Mullen and Louisville. Stick around. More great basketball action on the way from the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.
social media platforms today on Sand Hills Express Facebook, also our Twitter account at KBBN Sports, and on the KCNI KBBN YouTube page. And man, have we enjoyed the day so far. We got started earlier today in the Nebraska Girls Showcase. In case you're just joining us and now we are live on the radio, we can tell you that earlier today we have had two thrilling games. We've played two games in this Girls Basketball Showcase and they have been decided by a combined three points. <laughs> that is the excitement that we have had so far today. In game one, it was Adam Central holding on to defeat Pleasanton 48-46. Adam Central top 10 ranked in class C1, built a 13 point second half lead. Pleasanton came roaring back, got the score tied at 46. Adam Central scored late to go up by two. Pleasanton had the opportunity to tie the game at the free throw line with 1.8 seconds left. The free throws were missed, and Adam Central gets the win, 48-46. It stops a 40-game winning streak for the Pleasanton Lady Bulldogs, who will fall to 11-1 on the season. Adam Central improved to 8-4, a fabulous way to get us started. Then in game number two, Malcolm against North Central. It was a low-scoring, tough, hard-fought defensive battle, but it went to overtime. And in overtime, Malcolm is able to prevail by one, winning over North Central 33-32 to remain undefeated this season. Malcolm competing in Class C1, North Central competing in Class C2. So those were the first two games of the day. What do we have in store for the final two? We can't wait to find out. The Mullen Lady Broncos are on the court. Mullen taking on the Louisville Lions in game three of this girls basketball showcase. And then our day will conclude with Broken Bow against Oakland Craig. As we get ready to bring you game three of this girls basketball showcase now on KBBN radio, we want to uh, say thanks to all of our radio sponsors that you'll be hearing throughout the course of our broadcast today. And they include the First State Bank of Mullen, BD Broken Bow, Mackey's Grocery, Consolidated, Sand Hills Golf Club, Go to your brother's mortuary with the Arnold and Mullen Funeral Homes, Sand Hills Family Medicine, Nebraska State Bank, Rod's Body and Paint, Grocery Cart, Custer Federal State Bank, Trotter Service, Mead Lumber, Shelter Insurance, Brent Custer, your local agent, A to Z Lawn Pro and Landscaping, Squire Septic Service, Arrow Seed, Team Physical Therapy, and Agland ATV. We also continue live on our video stream for you, and we'll come back and thank those video sponsors after these words on KBBN Radio. First State Bank is proud to be a member of the community. It's their commitment to the people of the region to offer professional banking services as well as personal attention for every customer. That commitment carries on to supporting the area youth as they compete towards a victory in sports. Good work both in academics and in sports from First State Bank of Mullen. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. BD would love for you to be a part of their great team. They offer competitive wages, a team environment, and day one benefits. Some include health, life, dental, tuition reimbursement, and more. Apply online at bd.com slash careers. BD loves supporting youth sports and the bright student athletes who work hard to compete in every contest. Remember bd.com slash careers to start your journey to being a part of their great team. For Mackey's Grocery and Mullen, giving their customers the best food values is job one. They offer weekly specials in every department, including the freshest fruits and vegetables on the market. Their meat department features certified Angus beef. Add to all that selection, friendly customer service, and you'll see why their customers keep coming back again and again. Another proud sponsor of high school sports broadcasts, Mackey's Grocery in Mullen, your Sand Hills Food Center. Consolidated Companies is a proud sponsor of our student athletes. Everyone wants to get to the events and cheer on their students, but sometimes you just can't. Keeping up to date on all the local sports is hard to do, but Consolidated Super Fast Broadband can change that. Find all the latest information on local school and broadcast channel web pages, along with news and weather. For more information, call Consolidated at 1 800 742 7464. Plus, look for them now on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Consolidated Companies. 
The Sand Hills Golf Club is a proud supporter of this radio broadcast and salutes every second of hard work that these players put into preparing for each game. Sand Hills Golf Club is home to a one-of-a-kind golfing experience in North America, featuring the beautiful Sand Hills, a quiet atmosphere, and a challenging yet enjoyable course. Enjoy the broadcast, brought to you in part by the Sand Hills Golf Club, proud supporters of Central Nebraska High School Sports Action. At Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, they take pride in continuing to serve Central Nebraska and have been putting families first for over 60 years. Visit GovierBrothers.com or call 1-800-354-6340 for Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, where they are committed to the highest standards of service. Sandhills Family Medicine is located in Mullen and open Monday through Friday from 9 until 4.30 to be of service to you. You can reach them at 546-2213 with your questions or for seeking an appointment. They always look forward to new ways to support the community, and by sponsoring this broadcast, they are doing just that. Call Sandhills Family Medicine, Steve and Margaret Boyer, at 546-2213. Sandhills Family Medicine, bringing you this broadcast of high school sports and wishing the Mullen Broncos good luck. And again, we come back to the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow, the site of the first ever girls basketball showcase and what an event it has turned out to be after two games. Again, earlier today, Adam Central holding off Pleasanton 48 to 46. And then in the game that just concluded, Malcolm winning over North Central in overtime 33 32. So we're getting set now for game three of the day, Mullen against Louisville. Again, going to have you with us on video and radio now on KBBN 95.3 FM and KBBN.com. We'll bring in Jeremy Scheib here in a little bit as he'll call the game for you coming up. But first, we want to say thanks to all of our wonderful sponsors who are helping bring you a live video stream of today's game between Mullen and Louisville. So if you're viewing it on our Facebook page or YouTube page or on our Twitter account, we want to say thanks to these businesses that you'll see scrolling across your screen this afternoon. And they include First State Bank of Mullen, BD and Broken Bow, Govier Brothers Mortuary with the Arnold and Mullen Funeral Homes, also Grocery Cart, Mead Lumber, Shelter Insurance, Brent Custer, your local agent, and Agland ATV. Live video streaming of today's game from the Girls Basketball Showcase, also being brought to you by Palmer Monument, Geared for Sports, Insurance of the Heartland, Viero Wireless, Downey Drilling, Triple Blast Boutique, Sandhills PT, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, Liza Simonson, Gardner, Lutzenheiser, and Ryan PC, and also brought to you in part by Lashley Land. Well, the two teams have went into the locker room. They'll be coming out shortly to continue and finish up their warm-ups, and then we'll tip it off. It's game three of the Girls Basketball Showcase coming up between Mullen and Louisville. We'll start to break down the matchup. We'll bring in Jeremy Scheip and visit with him after these words on KBBN Radio. Helping Custer County and its neighbors progress with innovative products and superior service. And they are here with you helping you achieve your goals, reinvesting in our area by involvement, leadership, and donation as a means to help others strive and succeed and to further invest in our communities. With all of their locations here in Custer County, Nebraska State Bank is proud to serve you in Callaway, Myrna, and two locations in Broken Bow, and online anywhere all the time at nesb.bank. Nebraska State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. One thing we definitely desire perfection on is our vehicles. You want something that gets you to where you're going comfortably while looking great. Whether storm damage, deer damage, or insurance claim, take your ride to Rod's Body and Paint Broken Bow. They're the collision specialist. You should call 308-872-5346. Offering over 42 years of experience, they'll get you back on the road quickly without sacrificing quality. From dings and dents to full replacement and auto glass repair. Rod's Body and Paint, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. GK Wine and Spirits has your favorites at awesome prices. Our beer cave has a great selection of Nebraska brews and domestics, wine coolers, and seltzers. The wine selection at the GK has something you can pair with any kind of meal. Great refreshments at awesome prices. For your good time or to wind down your day, a large selection and low prices are waiting for you at the GK Wine and Spirit Shop inside the grocery cart, Broken Bow. 
Custer Federal State Bank has been a home lender since their inception in 1925. They continue their commitment to this day, offering conventional loans, first-time homebuyer loans with grant funds available for down payment assistance, construction loans, and home equity loans. Remember, unlike many traditional lenders, they utilize secondary market funding to offer long-term fixed interest rates in all markets, including ag, commercial business, and home. Custer Federal State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. All loans are subject to credit approval. At Trotter Service, every oil change comes with a multi-point inspection. As a tire pro store, they bring customers only the best brands of wheels and tires at the best prices anywhere and have computer balancing and alignment too. They service semis and provide bulk fuel and propane delivery as well. At Trotter Service, your hometown automotive repair and tire store. Friendly service every time. Quality is what you'll find where your neighbors and your friends go see Trotter. The changing seasons are generally welcomed with open arms, but not in our homes. With the help of Mead Lumber, you can keep the chilly air where it belongs. Upgrading your home's insulation not only conserves energy and lowers your heating and cooling costs, it makes for better living with improved air quality, health, and warmth. Work with those who have pride in a highly trained team to help with your building and projects. The crew at Mead Lumber. Also, be sure to visit MeadLumber.com soon. And we come back to and the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow. Brent Apperson and Jeremy Scheip with you now as we get ready for Mullen against Louisville. Game three of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase taking place at the Indian Gym in Broken Bow. Mullen coming in ranked number eight this week by the Omaha World Herald in Class D2, coming off a great season a year ago when they went 21-5. and five. They were a state qualifier last year but lost to Humphrey St. Francis in the semifinals a state qualifier in 2019 as well. Of course, Mullen led by the UNK commit, Samantha Moore, who we'll get to see on the Indian gym floor here this afternoon. Meanwhile, Louisville, they play in class C1. It's probably, well, it is our biggest gap matchup as far as classification is concerned today. Louisville made back-to-back -back state tournament appearances back in 2016 and 17. They finished last season at 12 and 13, but they did make the district finals falling to what ended up being state runner-up Lincoln Christian in that district final a year ago. So it should be a great matchup as we get ready for Louisville and Mullen. Mullen is 9-2 on the season. Meanwhile, Louisville comes in with an overall record of 7-5. We bring to the broadcast area now the guy who will call the game coming up, Jeremy Scheib. Well, partner, it's not been a bad start to the day. <laughs> Man, uh, two just thrilling, exciting games to get us started. Can't wait to see what we have in store in the final two games coming up. Well, and if you if you told the state of Nebraska going into this that the first two games would be have a gap of three points and two victories, uh, I you know what? I think there are a lot of people that maybe probably said, oh, maybe I should have made the drive to Broken Bow, but uh, we're happy to pass this action along to you folks uh, that couldn't make it in person. Of course, uh, we've had the opportunity to see Mullen on several occasions, Jeremy, through the years. Uh, for Louisville, obviously for you and I, this will be our first experience seeing them, uh, especially this season. Uh, when we look at Mullen, uh, obviously you start with Samantha Moore. She has agreed to play collegiately at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, and she is the one that will lead the Lady Broncos this afternoon. Yeah, she leads them in points per game at just over 12 uh, through nine games, just kind of missing a couple of games in their statistics. But you get a good picture of what Samantha does by looking at the stat sheet. She likes to score it, and uh, she's a very able dribbler, and it really opens things up for the offense of the Broncos. So we are getting ready for the starting lineups. It's going to be Malcolm and Louisville coming up. We will step away and take a short time out. When we come back, we'll turn the mic over to Jeremy. He'll set up your starters, and we'll tip it off. It's game three of the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase coming up on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Success is measured in the number of points scored, in games won, and in championships earned. At Shelter Insurance, we measure success in the quality of our products and services, in our community support, in being there when you need us. In fact, nine out of ten people surveyed with a claim would recommend Shelter to a friend. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Shelter Insurance's auto rates are falling. See Agent Brent Custer for details. 
Whether it's an install, repair, or expansion, when it comes to your lawn looking its best because of a sprinkler system, call A to Z Lawn Pro Landscaping. Get rid of the time and stress of needing to remember to water. Investing in a sprinkler system saves you money in the long run and ups your home's value, too. Sprinklers water consistently and evenly, so you don't have to try to. Have a system but want to cover more of your yard? They can help. Call A to Z Lawn today. 872-5182. Septic emergencies are right up there on the list of worst emergencies to have. Absolutely. The next time you're facing one, give Squire Septic Service a call. 870-0717. He's ready to take your call 24 hours a day. Absolutely. His sewer camera can find problems fast to save you money. Plus, he can clear drains with Roto-Rooter or Jetter. Oh, and Gary has Porta units, too. Squire Septic Service of Myrna. 870-0717. Don't wait to call until it's too late. Absolutely not. Ag producers, now is your opportunity to secure spring seed and save money too. AeroSeed is offering early booking and early pay discounts on alfalfa and summer annual forages. Act by January 10th, 2021 to save 13% on alfalfa and 10% on summer annual forages. AeroSeed has clean quality seed for every need and every budget. Visit your local AeroSeed dealer today to take advantage of the early order and prepay discounts on alfalfa and summer annual forages. Learn more at www.aeroseed.com. Welcome back to the Indian Gym as we get ready for our third matchup here at the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Jeremy Scheip with you here on the Thunderbird and on our streaming platform. So let's take a look at the starters for the Mullen Broncos. Shelby Welsh gets the start. She's a junior standing 5'9". She'll be wearing number three this afternoon. Samantha Moore, number 11. She's a senior standing six feet tall. Kylie Licking, also a senior standing 5'8", wearing number 13. Taylor Swoboda is a junior standing 5'8" wearing number 22 and to round out the starters for Mullen it's Brooke McCauley a senior also standing six feet tall alongside Samantha Moore wearing number 45 Mullen is head coached by Clint Swoboda now for the Louisville Lions their starters look like this Mackenzie Norris wearing number three she is a senior standing five foot seven Lexi Hans she is a, a freshman standing five foot eleven wearing number 21 Number 23 is Avery Heidley. She is a junior standing 5'7". Number 31 is Lauren Bota. She is a senior standing 5'7". And Ella Johnson rounds out the starters for Louisville. She is a freshman standing 6 feet tall wearing number 41. Wally Johnson is the head coach for the Louisville Lions. Well, Brent, both of these teams a couple of classes apart, and that's what these types of events are about, seeing these matchups that we wouldn't get to see in a regular season game, and this one looks to be exciting. Yeah, you know, we visited with Broken Bow head basketball, oh, head girls basketball coach Kelly Cooksley, who was really the one that kind of spearheaded the idea to put together this kind of an event. And he said, you know, I was thinking about what people like to see, and that is smaller schools versus larger schools. And you have a great matchup for that here in game three of this showcase as Mullen takes on Louisville. Samantha Moore and Ella Johnson jump it up in the center circle, and Louisville wins the tip, and they'll work towards the near side of the court for those of you listening on the radio. Louisville in the half court set just underway here in the third game of four here in the Broken Bow India Gym. Johnson with it, works it near side to Hams. Hams tries to enter it inside to Boda, and she has a little bit of trouble controlling it, but it's poked away off the Broncos to stay on this end. Inbounds play here for Louisville. It's a lob into Johnson, tips it around a little bit, finally controls it, puts up the shot, can't get it to go. Samantha Moore, the rebound, she wants to push across the timeline with the high dribble down into the lane, tries to scoop it over to her teammate McCauley, but it's intercepted by Johnson. Here comes Louisville. No score on the clock yet. Zero to zero, a minute gone here in the first quarter between Mullen, D2 ranked team, and Louisville coming out of C1 in the state of Nebraska. Lob down into Johnson. Johnson swims through, and she traveled with it. She drugged that back, had pivot foot, and that's a turnover against Louisville. Broncos gonna face some full court pressure here from Louisville, and it comes immediately. Shelby Welsh immediately felt the defender in her back, throws it off of him, 
Now the Broncos will face this pressure again. Double team comes up on Taylor Swoboda. She fires it up to Samantha Moore. Cross court pass goes over to Welsh. Welsh drives in, puts it up, and scores. A good pass by Samantha Moore. Welsh then able to find the opening on the baseline and score. And back the other way, Louisville throws the ball away. Ella Johnson was who they were trying to get involved offensively. It's off of her hand. Ball back to Moore. Moore tosses it in. Swoboda with the ball. Gets a screen from Licking and is quickly tied up. Jump ball. Possession is going to stay with the Broncos. Right around the half court line is where they'll inbound it. Licking keys it in. Still has it now, gets it in to Moore. Now we're in the half court set for the Broncos. 2 0 lead. Mullen on top of Louisville. Six and a half to go first quarter. Moore pulls for three. Left it long, back rim, rebound to Louisville. Here come the Lady Lions. They quickly try to work it into Ella Johnson again, but good defense from Brooke McCauley. And it, it appears early here, Brent, that Ella Johnson is who Louisville really wants to get the ball to badly. Yeah, you can tell they want to establish her on the inside. Just a freshman, but a very talented one at that. As she receives the inbounds pass, she goes up and scores two on cue. Ella Johnson gets the bucket. Back the other way, licking in the corner, leaves it for more, and she shuffled her feet as she went to drive. And I think that look that you see her give shows that she knew it. Yeah, she stuttered with the feet just a little bit as she was trying to decide, do I pull up and shoot or do I look to drive? And unfortunately for Samantha, the travel occurred. Hands for Louisville, has it slapped away. And she's able to get it across the timeline to her teammates, but almost a turnover forced there by Mullen. Louisville in the half court, 5.45 to go here. First quarter, we're all tied at two. It's a lob, hands, backside, licking, controls the miss. There comes Mullen, they want to push the ball. Stopping short with Soboda, now out to licking. A near side to Welsh, Welsh cuts to the outside. Cross the lane pass to McCauley, she can't get the shot to go. Here comes Louisville off the miss. Work it up to Norris, Norris drives baseline, is met with licking and licking, just takes the ball away. And here we go, Mullen back the other direction. Samantha Moore, great pass over to McCauley, and she's smacked before she can even put the shot up. They call this on the shot attempt. That's, you know, the ideal foul that you're going to have if you're going to foul someone who's shooting. Just foul them to where they can't get the shot up at all. Yeah, the foul was on Johnson. That'll be her first. Boy, great diagonal pass from Moore to McCauley, who was able to get to the line. And Brooke knocks down her first shot. A couple of substitutions come in for both teams. Three substitutions for Louisville and two for Mullen. And the white jerseys for Mullen running in. Hannah Marshall comes into the game, as does Lindy Coble. Second shot from McCauley is no good from the line. Louisville with it offensively. Far side, Kalkowski with it for Louisville. Now up top, Gaston. Leach with it, near side wing. Under five to go here first quarter. Mullen leads it 3-2 over Louisville. Leach tries to feed it inside. She was looking for Voda, but Mullen able to force the turnover. And here they come. McCauley with it far side. Now Moore up top, trying to get a little head screen. Moore pulls for three. Got it. Wow, nice looking shot, Samantha Moore. Here comes Louisville, wanting to answer. Find themselves down 6-2. And we've got a travel called similar to what Samantha Moore did not that long ago on the other side of the, the court. Leah Kalkowski just shuffled her feet going for the drive. Samantha Moore brings it across the half court line as we approach four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Her Mullen Broncos lead at 6-2, to two, looking to extend their lead this trip. They whip it around the outside to Swoboda. Back up top to Moore, wants to repeat the shot she got last time, can't get it to go, and the rebound goes into the hands of Hannah Marshall, but she steps on the line. It'll be Louisville ball. Yeah, Hannah was right along that baseline, reached out, tried to keep her balance and save the ball, but 
It goes out of bounds, and we'll see if Louisville can get something going offensively. Their two points have come from the freshman Johnson on the interior, but at the moment, just not getting a lot of shots up on the rim for Louisville in this opening quarter. Louisville breaks the press, and now we've got to travel just as I say that. Leach shuffled her feet with it. Just a lot of speed coming into this half of the court, and Leach was at an awkward angle to receive the pass. Sixth turnover for Louisville in this first half. Broncos with the ball. Moore brings it up. Under 3.30 to go here. Triple teamed at the free throw line is Shelby Welsh, but she gets it out of there to Swoboda. Swoboda, cross court pass over to Koble. Koble back up top to Moore. She slings it down into Swoboda. Reverse layup is blocked. She gets her own rebound, though, and the ball is controlled by Louisville. And now poked away. The Broncos turn it back over. Here comes Koble, now Moore. 3.15 to go first quarter. Broncos six, Lions two. Air ball is shot up by Taylor Swoboda. And it goes out of bounds on the weak side rebound to Louisville. Licking back into the game. Moore going to take a rest for the Broncos. Now Louisville facing that pressure again. They get it in to Gaston. And Gaston hands it off to Kalkowski. Up to Leach. Tries to feed it in low. Voda has it slapped away from her, and Louisville still committed to getting in there into the lane and down into the block. Seems that those short, those short shots are their offensive game, and they go for one there on the inbounds. Going to the hoop and being fouled is Jennifer Katz. Yeah, great play by Katz on the inbounds play, coming down and sliding down the lane area. Made herself available for the pass and gets to go to the line. Katz's first shot is off the rim, no good. McCauley comes back into the game for the Broncos. In for Louisville comes Johnson, a starter, as well as Norris. And I believe I also saw Hans come into the game as well. Second free throw is good. And we have a 6-3 game. Broncos with the three-point lead. Facing the pressure of Louisville, and they get it across and into the half court. Licking with it up top, now Swoboda. Swoboda, a couple dribbles, has it poked away, controls it back out to Licking, who finds her teammate Koble. Short corner jumper is no good. Fight for the rebound, it's going to dribble out of bounds, and it will stay with Mullen. Two thirty-six to go here, first quarter. Broncos lead it six to three. Licking to key it in. Moore back into the game. She receives it. Moore on the left wing. Now the right wing over to Koble. Moore passes it down into Licking. She's double teamed. Now Moore gets it back on the kick out. Nothing in the lane. Back out to Licking. Up top. Ball goes to Welsh. She drives in. Shot no good. Rebound to Louisville. Louisville trying to work their way up the court. The ball is slapped away. We're going to have a foul called on Samantha Moore. Yeah, Moore went for the steal, and she, I think, thought she got it clean, but the official says, nope, foul committed. For those of you that are watching on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and those of you listening on the radio as well, we'll have a full highlight of all of the great moments from the showcase at the conclusion of all four games. We'll get those clips put together. Boy, have there been some moments so far. We hope to have many more in that highlight package available to you on YouTube and Facebook. Louisville back in the half court, trying to eat into this 6-3 Mullen Broncos lead. They feed it down inside, finding some space. <laughs> down low is Louisville's Gaston, but it hits front rim, and boy, that was the unfriendliest of rolls here on the neutral court. Mullen throws it away the other way. Moore was trying to find McCauley on the opposite block, but it falls out of bounds. It's much like we've seen in the first two games, Brent. Both teams kind of trying to figure out the scoring side of things. The defense is certainly there. Yeah, you, you just kind of get the feel that both teams are kind of getting, uh, trying to get their feel as we play through this opening quarter. Both teams pressing full court. Louisville breaks the press of Mullen this time out. They are down 6-3. to three. The Broncos with the lead. Lions looking to get on the scoreboard. McCauley comes away with it for Mullen, but she passes it to a teammate. Hannah Marshall, who was not 
ready to receive the pass. And now the tie up at half court has a possession arrow to the Lady Lions. Louisville to key it in. In the backcourt, his hands. Gets it up to Norris. Norris loses her dribble. Now kicks it over to Hans. Lexi up to the top of the key. Now they work it back over to High League. High League, a couple of dribbles against Moore. Holds it up. And now Johnson has it. One minute to go here in the first quarter. Louisville gets a shot inside. Ella Johnson gets an opportunity, misses it, gets her rebound, and the follow is an and one. Good job by Louisville to just stay with the play. Johnson missed the first one. They were able to keep the ball alive. It ends up in Johnson's hands again. And now a chance to convert on the and one and tie this game up. Ella Johnson at the line. Shot is up and no good. Our score remains a 6-5 advantage for the Mullen Broncos. Mullen across the line. Samantha Moore gets it over to Swoboda. Swoboda's 15-foot jumper, no good. McCulley fights for the rebound on the far side, and it's going to go over to Louisville. Flip of possession there. Good hustle by Heilig of Louisville. Looked like McCulley was going to get to that ball first, but Heilig was able to hustle after it, and Louisville gets the possession. Louisville with 40 seconds to work with here in the first quarter. They almost turned the ball over. McCauley got her hands on it right at around the free throw line on the Louisville side. So Louisville will inbound it under the basket. 35.5 to go. Louisville down one. They get it in. Now with it in the corner is Norris. She'll kick it up top to Heilig. Heilig dribbling against Moore. Moore pokes it away from behind. High League had it knocked away. Moore last to touch it, poking it away from behind. 26 seconds flat to go here first quarter. It's a lob. They're looking for Johnson. It's poked away, and Johnson controls it. 20 seconds to go for Louisville. Up top, High League. Excuse me, that's hands. They work it around near side to High League. High League pulls for three, the lefty. Side rim, no good. Rebound to Mullen. McCauley has it. Five seconds to go for Mullen. Samantha Moore with it in her hands. Up to Soboda. Ten-foot jumper is off. No good. And that will take us to the second quarter. At the end of the first, it's Mullen six. Louisville five. Back after this on KBBN 95.3 and our streaming platforms, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Are your aches and pains preventing you from doing the things you love? Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. We offer complete one-on-one -on -one physical therapy for you. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. Team Physical Therapy is known as the best hands in town, and we will help you achieve your goals and keep you moving in 2021. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111, or check us out on the web at myteampt.com. Friendly Rivals, Hometown Pride, Wearing your school's colors. Small towns are brought together cheering on their favorite teams. Agland ATV knows how hard the athletes and coaches work year round and are proud to help sponsor the games of our customers and their kids and grandkids. We have built relationships with many of these families through the years and are proud of their success. Best of luck to all the local athletes from Agland ATV and Broken Bow. 872-3424. Agland ATV, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. 872-3424. Well, here we go, Brent, the end to another quarter, and a one-point deficit is all that is up on the scoreboard. Another tight one here so far as we get the second quarter underway. Licking with it to Moore in the corner. Moore tries to fit it in on the high post to Welsh. Welsh had it poked away and tracks it down. Now Swoboda with it far side. Back up to Welsh. Now over to Licking. Licking survey still has her dribble. Now he uses it, goes to the top of the key. Over to McCauley, now Swoboda, one dribble, puts up the three, front rim no good, McCauley tracks down the rebound, Moore quickly into Licking, Licking, one dribble, tries to feed it up, it dribbles off to Swoboda, her free throw line jumper is no good, rebound to Norris of Louisville. Norris works it up the court, and now we're back in the front court for the Louisville Lady Lions. One minute gone here in the second quarter is a good baseline drive for Mackenzie Norris Gets the Lions the lead, 
and the bucket. Swoboda double teamed right across the timeline. And we've got an over and back called as Shelby Welsh went back to pass the ball up the court. She drug her foot across that half court line. So now Louisville looking to capitalize. Just sees the lead last time down, seven to six. Now they want to extend it. And we've got a travel called. Lexi Hans thought she was gonna get away with that one, but the whistle came in and it's a turnover against the Lions. Yeah, each team has kind of struggled a little bit with the turnovers. Mullen unofficially was six in the first half and now Louisville up to nine. So Boda feeds it off to Welsh. Now Moore, the jumper from the three, four, three point line is no good. Several players on the ground and we've got a tie up. Jump ball will flip the possession back to Louisville. 6.36 to go here first half, Louisville seven, Mullen six. Our third game of four here this morning, afternoon, and evening with you here on KBBN and on our streaming platforms. Louisville in the half court, licking, forces the pickup of the dribble. Now Louisville has a little bit of light going up for the shot is Norris and she is fouled on the attempt. Two good aggressive moves by Norris on back-to-back -back possessions for Louisville. Wells tried to make the recovery defensively, but ends up picking up the foul. Five seniors on this Louisville Lions team, and Mackenzie Norris is one of them. She knocks down the first one. She just has that poise that a senior has that's, that's been out there, has played a lot of basketball, and Mackenzie's really leading her team now. They've got a two-point lead. And Norris makes it a three-point lead as she rattles that one in. Nine to six now. Louisville with the lead over Mullen. Six to go here. Second quarter as Moore walks it up. Now to Swoboda near side. McCauley comes out and gets it at the high post. Now licking. They work it down in the post to Welsh. She goes up for a shot and is fouled on the attempt. She'll head to the line. And I believe that's going to be Ella Johnson, the six-foot freshman, and that'll be her second. Well, and that's unfortunate because there's only two team fouls, and they both belong to her. So while the team foul situation might not look that bad, the foul situation for her is really bad here early in the second. Her shot was no good for Shelby Welsh. Welsh's second shot, side rim no good. Rebound to Mackenzie Norris. Norris will bring it right up and across the timeline. Under six to go here now, first half. Ball's poked away, running to track it down as Leach. She'll bring it back across. Leach with it, now up to Heilig. Heilig wants to drive against Moore. Gathers it and scores. She left Moore at the free throw line. Moore was hoping one of her teammates would be able to help her after Heilig went around her, but Heilig just kept going and scored. Now Licking misses the 10-footer on the other side, and Louisville looking to extend their lead further. It's an 11-6 lead for them right now. Heilig pulls for three. The lefty can't get it to go. Tracking it down is Voda. Now another baseline drive for Norris. Can't quite get the shot up to the rim, and she's going to be fouled. This is either going to be on McCauley or on Swoboda. And it is going to be on Swoboda. Well, you feel, Jeremy, in this second quarter, Louisville has started to settle in a little bit more, especially offensively, as they're starting to attack the basket much more aggressively in quarter number two. First shot for Mackenzie Norris is no good. Licking and Welsh will take a seat for the Broncos. Second shot is good for Norris. Coming in for Mullen was Lindy Coble. I believe I also saw Hannah Marshall run in for Mullen. Mullen now finds themselves down six with five minutes to go here first half. Would love to have a good possession here, but the ball's poked away by Louisville, and we've got a jump ball. It'll stay with Mullen. McCauley to inbound it. Gets it up to Swoboda, who walks it up. Now Moore. Moore drives baseline. Pulls up from 15. Gets every bit of the rim, but can't go down. Fight for the rebounds on the ground right under the basket and another tie up. This time it goes to Louisville. Well, Mullen has been stuck on six for a while. Those six points came rather early and now we're, 
Well, over three minutes into the second quarter, and the Broncos still stuck on six as they trail by that amount as well. Louisville gets the ball in, and they break the press of Mullen with the dribble. Leach with it. Works it far side. Now getting it back up top is Gaston. Gaston gets it off to Heilig. Heilig drives in. The ball's poked away behind, from behind by Moore. It was last off of Moore. Yeah, it looked like Louisville was going to get a, a, a trip to the rim area again, but Moore with the reach around from behind able to knock it away. Louisville attempted to get the ball into Leach, but it's poked away, so we'll switch sides of the baseline and give it another try. Now they do get it into Leach, and she is fouled as she receives the pass. This one going to go on Hannah Marshall. So now as we have these fouls not being on the shot attempt, we're really just racking up the amount of fouls to get towards the bonus, but we're almost we're about 4.30 away from halftime here. Louisville throws the ball away. I don't believe I saw any tip on that, and there wasn't. And the officiating crew does a good job of confirming that before they inbound the ball here to Mullen. Mullen would love a score here, down six, 12 to six to the Louisville Lions. Moore keys it over to Coble. Now Coble skips it over to Soboda. Squares up to the basket now over to Samantha Moore. Couple of dribbles, fits it over to Hannah Marshall. And Marshall back up to Moore. Moore between the legs a couple of times, whips it all the way over to Coble. And now quickly down to Hannah Marshall. She fires it up, but it hits the bottom of the rim and goes out of bounds. It'll be Louisville ball. We well, look quickly at these two records of these teams coming into this one, Brent. Of course, Louisville C1 and Mullen D2. Mullen 9 and 2, Louisville 7 and 5, but now we've got a, a foul. Coble commits the foul on the press. Yeah. Leach will go to the line, but the, the record for Louisville doesn't really indicate how talented they are. They've played some Class B teams, C1 teams. They've played them all. Yeah, they have. Yep. Both teams have played some good competition this season. Leach to the line, can't get the shot to go. Rebound licking. Moore wants to push across the timeline now. Under four to go. Gets it over to Coble. She puts up a shot. No good. Gets her own rebound. And this time, the bank shot is good for Lindy Coble. Mullen back on the scoreboard for the first time in a while. Now they trail eight to two. And Moore gets her hands on a ball defensively as trying to fit it over to Leach was Kalkowski. And we've got a timeout on the floor. Seems like, has this been our first timeout? Seems like we haven't it stopped be, for yeah. a long time <laughs> since the quarter break. We'll take one as well here on KBBN 95.3 and on our streaming platforms, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. First State Bank is proud to be a member of the community. It's their commitment to the people of the region to offer professional banking services as well as personal attention for every customer. That commitment carries on to supporting the area youth as they compete towards a victory in sports. Good work both in academics and in sports from First State Bank of Mullen. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Welcome back to the Indian Gym. 3.38 to go here, first half. Mullen recently on the board. They've cut the lead to four. Louisville leads it 12 to eight. The Lions looking to inbound it, getting close to a five-second call, and there it is. Leah Kalkowski had a couple of options there, none of which she liked very much, and that leads to the turnover. Yeah, good defense by Mullen. Unofficially 11th turnover the first half for Louisville. Here comes Samantha Moore for Mullen. Across the timeline, 3.30 to go here, first half. She has a beautiful pass into Shelby Welsh, who is fouled. But uh, that trip to the line for Shelby Welsh really created by the pass of Samantha Moore. She threw it right in the bread basket and gave her a good angle. Yeah, it was a really good lob and good job by Welsh to make herself available for it as she steps to the line. Her first shot is side rim, no good. McCauley comes back into the game, does Swoboda. Coble will get a rest as will Hannah Marshall. Welsh at the line for her second attempt. 
and she knocks this one down, all nylon. We've got ourselves a three-point game. Here comes Leach for Louisville. Gets it over to Katz. Katz pulls for three immediately. This one goes high, and it did touch the support. Boy, good eyesight there from the official. I didn't even see that, but that spring is bouncing around up there, so turn over to Mullen. So Boda with it, quickly down to McCauley in the half court. McCauley is smacked across the arm as she was looking to get it to Moore out from the block. Louisville leads it 12-9 to over the Mullen Broncos. Mullen with the ball underneath their own hoop. 3.13 to go here first half. The margin in this game right at this moment is the total margin of victory for the first two games total so far here in the showcase. Wow, what a pass by Samantha Moore down into Welsh. Her shot's no good. Rebound to Brooke McCauley. She puts it in. Now we've got a one-point game. Back the other way comes Louisville. Looking to answer. Three from Norris. Got it. Wow, Mackenzie Norris. Big shot there. Here comes Mullen looking to answer down four after cutting it to one. Nice pass from Moore to McCauley, but she missed the layup. And here comes Louisville. 2.30 to go first half. Hans with it for Louisville. Licking, picking her up, making her turn over and over and over again. Now Norris controls it. Brings it up top, now kicks it across to Hans. She pulls for three. It's no good. Rebound to McCauley. Hands it off to Soboda. But getting involved in that little handoff there was Louisville's Jennifer Katz. And I don't know really who she fouled. I think she fouled both Mullen Broncos in the area, honestly. Coble back in. Moore will get a rest. Mullen brings it up. No pressure this time from Louisville. They settle into the 2-3. Soboda with it up top. Off to Welsh. Welsh kicks it out to Coble. Far side wing gets a screen from Swoboda. Now over to Licking. Licking near side, kicks it over, and it's intercepted by Louisville's Katz. Katz wants to run. A, a dribble in the lane. She puts up a shot. It's no good. Oh, my goodness. That's why the coach always says, hey, always throw that ball towards the rim. You never know what could happen. She did just that. It fell no good, but she'll get two at the line. And it almost went in. Cat's a little bit out of control, but like you said, get it up on the rim. You never know what can happen as she steps to the line. First shot for Cats is no good. Samantha Moore will come back in. Licking will take a rest. 153 to go here, first half. Louisville with the 15-11 lead. Second shot from Cats back rim and falls out. And we've got a foul called on Lexi Hans for Louisville as they were trying to track down the rebound. Just got into the back of Welsh of Mullen. Yeah, now with just under two minutes to go in the half, both teams will be in the bonus the rest of the way. Moore gives it to Welsh, and here comes Mullen. And Moore gets the ball back and will key the offense in the half court. Facing a 2-3 defense is Mullen. Welsh with it, high post, kicks it over. They get it into McCauley on the block. Ball is poked away, and we've got a jump ball. It'll stay with Mullen. Moore to key it in under their own basket. Tries to fit it over to Swoboda, but good awareness there from Jennifer Katz of Louisville. She knocks it out, and we switch blocks, and Moore will key it in there. Moore waiting, waiting, nothing available. Now kicks it all the way up to Soboda at half court. Couple of dribbles, now back over to Moore. She pulls for three, far side. No good, rebound to Louisville. 125 to go here, first half. Louisville up 15 to 11, looking to make it more. Norris, no one's picking her up. She loses the ball into the hands of Leach. And it's a jump. The game has gotten frantic here in the last couple of minutes, a hasn't bit. it? Yeah, it has. The senior Mackenzie Norris to inbound it for Louisville. Mackenzie looking, running out of time. Lobs it in. Nice pass into the block. Now she gets it back and runs in. Leach with it up top. Gets the call from her head coach on the sideline. 
as her teammates move to get things set up. Leach, a crossover to Voda. Leach gets it back, pulls for three. Back rim, no good. And Swoboda pulls down the rebound for Mullen. She wants to push it immediately into a one-on-three situation, and she carried it. Just got a little ahead of herself, did Swoboda. Fifty-two seconds to go here, first half. Louisville, fifteen to eleven. They enjoy the lead right now as Leach brings it up, almost dribbles it out of control, out of bounds, but controls it eventually. Cats with it now. She puts it on the floor. Jennifer Katz, spin move. Puts the shot up, no good. Licking the rebound, off to Moore. Moore glances at the clock. See, she has 30 seconds. Beautiful pass up to Swoboda. She gets the layup to go. Just yeah. let the defense fly right by. Yeah, you said it. Great pass by Moore, but then the uh, shot fake allowed Swoboda to get free. Somehow Moore saves it in and fits it up to Shelby Welsh, Welsh on the receiving end of that layup, and now Mullen has tied things up. Ten seconds to go, first half. Louisville with it in the corner. Norris wants to drive. She's shut off there, and we've got to travel. The pressure was there from Mullen, and Mackenzie Norris shuffled those feet. Boy, big flurry by Mullen here in the final minute. I'd say four seconds to go. Moore with it, two seconds at half court. Puts up the shot and can't get it to go. Boy, a flurry from Mullen is right. They score four points in the last 30 seconds to tie this game up at 15 apiece. We'll go into halftime here on KBBN and our streaming platforms when we come back. We'll take a look at some of the stats with Brent as uh, we had a very enjoyable first half of this one. As we go to the half, it's Louisville 15, Mullen 15, back after this. BD would love for you to be a part of their great team. They offer competitive wages, a team environment, and day one benefits. Some include health, life, dental, tuition reimbursement, and more. Apply online at bd.com slash careers. BD loves supporting youth sports and the bright student athletes who work hard to compete in every contest. Remember bd.com slash careers to start your journey to being a part of their great team. For Mackey's Grocery and Mullen, giving their customers the best food values is job one. They offer weekly specials in every department, including the freshest fruits and vegetables on the market. Their meat department features certified Angus beef. Add to all that selection, friendly customer service, and you'll see why their customers keep coming back again and again. Another proud sponsor of high school sports broadcasts, Mackey's Grocery in Mullen, your Sand Hills Food Center. Consolidated Companies is a proud sponsor of our student athletes. Everyone wants to get to the events and cheer on their students, but sometimes you just can't. Keeping up to date on all the local sports is hard to do, but Consolidated Superfast Broadband can change that. Find all the latest information on local school and broadcast channel web pages, along with news and weather. For more information, call Consolidated at 1-800-742-7464. Plus, look for them now on Facebook, facebook.com slash Consolidated Companies. The Sand Hills Golf Club is a proud supporter of this radio broadcast and salutes every second of hard work that these players put into preparing for each game. Sand Hills Golf Club is home to a one-of-a-kind golfing experience in North America featuring the beautiful Sand Hills, a quiet atmosphere, and a challenging yet enjoyable course. Enjoy the broadcast brought to you in part by the Sand Hills Golf Club, proud supporters of Central Nebraska High School Sports Action. At Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, they take pride in continuing to serve Central Nebraska and have been putting families first for over 60 years. Visit GovierBrothers.com or call 1-800-354-6340 for Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, where they are committed to the highest standards of service. At the half, we are all knotted up. The Louisville Lady Lions, 15, and the Mullen Lady Broncos, 15, with a look at how we got there. Here's Brent. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. Yeah, tight game at halftime. Mullen scored six early points and then uh, just kind of went stagnant offensively, but then a little bit of a flurry there 
in the final moments of quarter number two to force this game tied at 15 all. We take a look at the scoring. Leading the way for Mullen is Shelby Welsh. She has five points, three of the five coming in quarter number two. Lindy Coble with two. Samantha Moore an early three, but that's been it for Samantha here this afternoon. Taylor Svoboda with two and Brooke McCauley with three for the Lady Broncos of Mullen to account for their 15 first half points. Meanwhile, you look at Louisville and Louisville was led by Mackenzie Norris. She had eight points in the first half, all of those coming in the second quarter. Jennifer Katz got to the line four times, made one of four. She's got one point in the half. Avery Heilig with two, and Ella Johnson, the freshman, had four early points, but also picked up an early second foul and kind of sat the bench a little bit in that first half. So uh, we'll see how uh, Louisville coach Wally Johnson handles that scenario as we get ready to start the third quarter in a few minutes. So again, your score is tied at 15 all. We are at the half. It is Mullen and Louisville tied up. Mullen led six to five at the end of one, and then at halftime, Louisville able to uh, outscore uh, Mullen 10-9 to to even things up at uh, 15 all here at halftime. All right, thank you very much, Brent. Well, if the second half is as entertaining as the first half was, we're going to have another great game. Again, if you're just joining us, our first game was a two-point victory for Adams Central over Pleasanton. The second game went to overtime between Malcolm and North Central. That was a victory for Malcolm, 33-32. to So two games and a margin of victory of a total of three points. So rolling right into this third game, we are right on track. We'll take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll be that much closer to second half action between Mullen and Louisville. Sandhills Family Medicine is located in Mullen and open Monday through Friday from 9 until 4.30 to be of service to you. You can reach them at 546-2213 with your questions or for seeking an appointment. They always look forward to new ways to support the community, and by sponsoring this broadcast, they are doing just that. Call Sandhills Family Medicine, Steve and Margaret Boyer, at 546-2213. Sandhills Family Medicine, bringing you this broadcast of high school sports and wishing the Mullen Broncos good luck. Since 1917, Nebraska State Bank has been helping Custer County and its neighbors progress with innovative products and superior service. And they are here with you, helping you achieve your goals, reinvesting in our area by involvement, leadership, and donation as a means to help others strive and succeed and to further invest in our communities. With all of their locations here in Custer County, Nebraska State Bank is proud to serve you in Callaway, Myrna, and two locations in Broken Bow, and online anywhere all the time at nesb.bank. Nebraska State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. One thing we definitely desire perfection on is our vehicles. You want something that gets you to where you're going comfortably while looking great. Whether storm damage, deer damage, or insurance claim, take your ride to Rod's Body and Paint Broken Bow. They're the collision specialist. You should call 308-872-5346. Offering over 42 years of experience, they'll get you back on the road quickly without sacrificing quality. From dings and dents to full replacement and auto glass repair. Rod's Body and Paint, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. If you're having a party or celebration, you need food and drink for your guests. Come and see us at the grocery cart. We're ready to help at the deli and the GK Wine and Spirits. In the deli, you can't beat delicious Chester's Chicken or order a meat and cheese tray. You can't beat the convenience of a smoked rack of pork ribs either. Then stop by the GK Wine and Spirits for savings on your favorite beers, wines, or spirits. For any get-together, stop at the deli and the GK Wine and Spirits shop inside the grocery cart in Broken Bow. Custer Federal State Bank has been a home lender since their inception in 1925. They continue their commitment to this day, offering conventional loans, first-time homebuyer loans with grant funds available for down payment assistance, construction loans, and home equity loans. Remember, unlike many traditional lenders, they utilize secondary market funding to offer long-term fixed interest rates in all markets, including ag, commercial business, and home. Custer Federal State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. All loans are subject to credit approval. When you want the very best, you'll see Trotter. Where you'll always get more for your dollar. 
We're your little friendly store, and we're right next door. That's what we're here for. Go see Trotter. Trotter Service is your number one partner in keeping your operation running smoothly. Whether you need a new battery, brakes, an alignment, or any other repair, they have a specialist that'll get it done right. Can't get away from the farm or ranch? They offer bulk oil and fuel delivery, and on the farm tire truck service too. Proud to work with the farmers and ranchers of the area. Trotter's Tire Pros. West Highway 2, Broken Bow. Welcome back to the Indian Gym in Broken Bow. Brent Apperson sits to my right. I'm Jeremy Scheib. Glad to have you here on the Thunderbird KBBN 95.3. And on our streaming platforms, thank you very much to those of you that are tuning in, watching our video stream on YouTube, Facebook, and on Twitter. We want to thank one of our uh, sponsors that's through, uh, with us throughout the year. And uh, we teamed up with them when we started doing some video broadcasts. It's Viero Wireless and uh, they provide us with high-speed wireless internet to video stream high school sports along with some of our radio broadcasts at KCNI KBBN Radio. Uh, the Viero store is open in Broken Bow Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. They also have stores located nearby in Ord, Lexington, and North Platte. They offer some great internet. They're the 82nd largest fixed wireless provider in the United States, and they offer service in five states. And let me tell you, folks, when you're driving through the sand hills of Nebraska, there's a good chance you're going to have some service from Viero. So thank you very much to them for giving us the opportunity to bring this broadcast to you. If you want to call their number, it's 877-484-2376, or stop by one of those locations I mentioned and talk to them about what special deals they have going on. They're running specials pretty often. Well, Brent, what's going to be the key for both of these teams? It's essentially like a brand-new game. It's 15-15 all heading into the second. Yeah, nothing's been decided yet. I think taking care of the basketball is going to be big. Uh, Louisville, we had them unofficially for 13 turnovers in the first half. Mullen for uh, eight. So, you know, taking care of the basketball. Uh, we'll see what happens on the interior, too. Ella Johnson Six-foot freshman for Louisville starts the half with two fouls. Right out of the gate, Moore pulls for three on the near side wing. And it's off of, I believe Welsh was down there, and it was off of her as it goes out of bounds. Louisville will earn their first offensive possession. Just underway here in the second half. Norris dribbles it up right into the corner across the timeline. She just shoves Licking out of the way to gain some room, but throws it away to Swoboda. Swoboda holds up just across the timeline. Moore drives in, puts her shoulder in, and has the ball slapped away. Good defense there from Ella Johnson. Here comes Louisville. No score yet here in the second half. Tied at 15. Norris pulls for three. No good. Rebound Johnson. She puts it up. It is no good. Rebound to Licking. Now Moore across half court. Moore wants to push. Finds McCauley in the lane. McCauley's shot is short. Good box out by Ella Johnson. Louisville back the other way again. The pace super fast here to start the second half. High league with it for Louisville. Wants to drive. Moore working defensively on her. One minute gone here in the third. Still tied at 15. Hans with it. Far side. Now dribbles it up top and sets up the half-court offense. Against the man defense of Mullen. Here comes Louisville. Norris passes it off. And now near side, it's Hans. Hans dribbles. Top of the key. Hands it off to Johnson. Now Heilig. Heilig, the give and go to Johnson. Johnson puts up the shot and is fouled. She'll get two at the line. Yeah, good return pass to Johnson. Got to the rim. Not able to finish, but does get to the line. That's two on Svoboda. Johnson to the line. First shot is up and rims out no good. No subs from either team this time around. Make sure you join us for our fourth game, Broken Bow and Oakland Craig. That's sure to be a good one as well. Excited to bring that one to you. Second shot also no good for Johnson. Here comes Mullen. We're still tied at 15. Minute and a half gone here in the second half. Moore, fake the three, one dribble, and the free throw line jumper is good. Yeah, that was a great shot fake to be able to dribble in and get a little bit closer, gets a better look for Moore as she knocks it down. Now Louisville throws the ball away, facing that press of Mullen. So now Mullen can extend their lead, which they just gained. Swoboda with it. Passes up the pass to Moore. 
Puts up the shot, rims out no good. Louisville with possession. Facing that pressure of the Mullen Broncos again. Moore intercepts it, goes up, scores two, and gets the hoop and the harm. She'll go to the line looking to complete the three-point play. Boy, just great body control by Moore. She knew she was going to get bumped when she went up for the layup attempt. Uh, kind of positioned herself to where she could absorb the contact and then able to finish on the shot. That one for sure will be finding the highlight reel later. Four-point victory or four-point uh, swing here recently for Mullen. They're looking to make it five. We've got a timeout on the floor. When we come back, we'll have Samantha Moore's free throw. 19 to 15 is the advantage for the Broncos over the Louisville Lions. Ready or not, here comes the chilly season. Are you already noticing some cold drafts coming into your home chilling the air? Don't make your heating system work harder than it needs to. Talk to Mead Lumber and Broken Bow about insulation solutions to keep the cold where it belongs, outside. The helpful staff at Mead Lumber and Broken Bow can offer solutions that will save you money when the weather gets chilly. Talk to them today, East Highway 2, Broken Bow, Nebraska. Moore's shot is up at the line and hits all nylon. She makes it a three-point success. And now the Broncos with a five-point lead, 20 to 15. Heilig fires it up. Norris tracks it down for Louisville. Now we're in the half court. Heilig with it again. Moore defensively on her. She pulls back. Moore sends it back to her, but Heilig controls it. And now a five-on-four situation for Louisville for a short moment. And Norris, good move there in the lane, a little spin, put up the shot and got fouled. Yeah, that was a good move by Norris. Able to spin toward the rim and... As you said, draw the foul. Boy, great start to the sec uh, third quarter, excuse me, for Samantha Moore. Had a three early, then has just been quiet, but boy, uh, kind of sparking things for Mullen as she has all five of their points right now in the third quarter. First shot for Mackenzie Norris is good. Also worth noting, that was the third foul on Taylor Swoboda. So we'll keep an eye on that as Norris knocks home the second and pulls her Lions team to within three, 20 to 17, 5.30 to go here, third quarter. Mullen with the lead. Moore with it again, driving baseline. Nice find in the lane. Layup is missed though. Shelby Welsh had that one served up to her on a platter but couldn't get it to go. And on the fight for the rebound, it'll go to Louisville. Boy, Ella Johnson. <laughs> I got a good look at her facial reaction when she reached in right away. She's looking at the ref. Oh, it's going to be a jump ball, not a foul, I hope. Because <laughs> that would have been Johnson's third, but jump ball and Louisville with the ball. Heilig pulls for three, can't get it to go. And now a good defensive play by Mackenzie Norris as there was a long leak out into the hands of Koble. She wanted to run it out and had her eyes set on a layup, but dribbled it off of her leg from the pressure of Norris. So here comes Leach for Louisville. Five minutes to go here, third quarter. Mullen up 20 to 17. High league with it, four so far side. Working around near side to Norris. Norris left to right. Now cuts back. And she picked up that other hand and made contact for just a split second. That's a double dribble. Moore will bring it up for the Broncos. Fits it into McCauley. McCauley, one power dribble, shot no good. And we'll go back the other direction to Louisville. Good play on both ends there, even though the shot was not made. Moore feeding, in, uh, feeding McCauley in the block area, challenging Johnson, who's got those two fouls. Johnson did a good job of defending, making the shot tough to pick up without committing the foul. Oh, boy, a few passes just barely get through for Louisville, and it was the third one that bit them. And the pressure from Mullen turns it over, and here comes Moore into the half court again. 4.20 to go here, third quarter. Mullen up three. Moore near side. Now gets it back up top. Koba with it. Just playing a little catch with Moore. Now Moore controls it. Flips it up top to Marshall. Marshall still has her dribble, doesn't use it, fits it over to Licking. Licking far side wing. Down to Moore in the short corner, uses her dribble, goes into the deep corner, is hit on the leg a little bit. Looks like she's got a bit of a dead leg there. Gets it to Licking, who fires a three. It's no good, and we'll have a tie-up on the fight for the rebound. McCauley 
and Voda working hard down there. Jennifer Katz into the game for Louisville. Swoboda also into the game. Moore going to have to rest that leg a little bit. Just kind of got clipped a little bit running around that corner on the far side. Swoboda to licking. 18-foot jumper, no good. We've got a whistle on the near side and a foul. This is going to be away from the ball on the weak side. McCauley was trying to get position for the weak side rebound, but just trying to do that maybe in too tough a way. We'll put it that way. Yeah, was it Cole? Oh, it was McCulley, her second. Yep. Inbound for Louisville. Again, facing the pressure of Mullen, almost turning it over. Hiley does good to control it. Now ahead to Leach. Leach into the half court, and here comes Louisville looking to cut into this three-point lead. They can pull to within one or tie it. Katz with it, one dribble. Feeds it down to Johnson. Ella back out to Heilig. Heilig, nice give into Johnson, and Johnson gets two. Yeah, that was created by Heilig with the dribble penetration, able to feed Johnson for the easy two. Licking triple teamed at the half court line, and now it's a four on two situation, and Swoboda takes advantage and knocks it down for three. Now back the other way, Louisville throws it away. Mullins pressure again, creates another long pass situation. Now they want to extend that 23 to 19 lead, which they just gained off the three from Swoboda. Licking with it near side, she loses the ball. Katz comes away with it, and Ella Johnson will get it up to Leach. Leach forward to Voda. Voda puts up a shot, no good, and it's going to go out of bounds off of Mullen. 2.37 to go here, third quarter. Mullen with the 23 to 19 lead. Big three pointer really helping out that lead from Swoboda. Inbounds goes to Ella Johnson. Her shot's no good. Now we've got a foul. I believe this is going to be a push on Voda. If I'm right, which I'm, I'm thinking I am. Yep, they're checking her number. <laughs> and it is Lauren Voda. Just her first, Mullen gains possession as Moore comes back in, stretching that leg out as she jogs to the baseline. Four point lead as Moore brings it up. Gets it to Licking, Licking lost the ball. Almost kind of looked like she did it on purpose as it whipped around back behind her. Louisville ties it up and gains possession. Not much flow here the last couple of minutes. Last score we saw was that three-pointer from Swoboda for Mullen. But since then, it's been a bunch of tie-ups and turnovers. Says there's one there from Louisville. Mullen with the ball. Moore with it up top. Backs it out a little bit. One-handed pass goes over to Koble. Koble down to Welsh. Now back out to Moore up top. Heilig pressuring Moore. Moore goes near side. One-hand pass it clear across the court. Over to Koble. Koble gets it down to Welsh. Has it blocked. Coming away with it was Ella Johnson, and she was fouled after she controlled the block. Yeah, good play by Johnson to step over and provide the help defensively. And then Marshall reaches in and commits her second. Mackenzie Norris back into the game. We also see Leah Kalkowski in for Louisville, as well as Jalen Gaston. And now this is going to almost go out of bounds. Now it's it's going to be a turnover. Louisville lost the ball on the inbounds. I thought that went off of Mullen there right at the end, but I don't think the official had nearly, oh, I know he didn't have the angle that we had up here in the corner, but it stays with, it goes to Mullen rather as the three-point shot is up for Moore. Fight for the rebound is controlled by Mullen. Welsh with it up top, now Moore. A couple of dribbles just inside the three-point line. Ball was tipped as she passed it down. And Hannah Marshall is fouled on the far side block. Yeah, I think it was Kalkuski who came in from behind and kind of took a swing trying to bat the ball away. And as the arm came down and through, made contact and got whistled for the foul. Moore to inbound it, gets it to McCauley. Now it's Coble with it, gets it back to Moore. She is trapped, and we've got a timeout call by Mullen. 1.31 to go here, third quarter. Mullen enjoying a 23-19 lead. Back after this on the Thunderbird, KBBN. 
Growing up, my parents always encouraged me to do what's right, even if it wasn't easy. I'd always hear my mother's voice say, do the right thing. That stuck with me. Every day, just do the right thing. That's it. The rest takes care of itself. At Shelter Insurance, we believe in doing the right thing for our customers and our communities. Shelter Insurance's auto rates are falling. See Agent Brent Custer for details. Welcome back to the Indian Gym in Broken Bow. Jeremy Scheip and Brent Apperson with you here on the Thunderbird. Make sure to join us for the fourth and final game of our day of broadcasting. Coming up next after this one is over, Broken Bow and Oakland Craig going to be do in battle, but we've got plenty more action ahead in this one between Mullen and Louisville. Louisville slaps the ball away and gains possession, but it's tied up and goes out of bounds. They call it off of Mullen. It will stay with the Lady Lions. Yeah, I thought for a moment they were going to just call a jump ball, but they kind of let the possession play out, and Welsh reached in and ripped the ball away. It goes out of bounds and goes to Louisville. The senior Mackenzie Norris will bring it up one-on-one -on -one against Coble. Gets it up to Katz. Katz left to right. Up to Kalkuski. Now back over to Norris. Norris wants to drive. Kicks it out. A near side wing is Kalkowski. And they work it back around to Katz. Under a minute to go here, third quarter now. Louisville looking for a good shot. It's a three from Norris. Excuse me, that's Katz. It's no good. Moore, the rebound. Moore wants to push it. And good job getting back by Jennifer Katz. She gets her hand in there and prevents an open layup for Shelby Welsh. Yeah, you said it. Great hustle by Katz to get back and knock that ball away. If she doesn't, Mullen would have had any, an easy two. Ella Johnson back into the game for Louisville, the six-foot-tall freshman. Moore gets it in. Now Licking controls it up top. Moore now near side. They're trying to get it into McCauley on the block. Licking, one dribble, had it blocked. And... I believe we had a foul called on that. Yeah, I don't think they called the foul on the block. Well, yeah, maybe they did. I guess they are going to call it on Katz. And that'll be her second. Licking's first shot is left short off the front rim. 35.8 to go here third quarter. We've been stuck on this 23 to 19 for what seems like ages. <laughs> And we will remain there as the second one from Licking is no good. Norris controls it. Double team, dribbles out of it. Gets it up to Katz. Katz puts it on the floor. Now back to Norris. Louisville really having to work hard to break this press. Now the shot is up on the block from Jalen Gaston. And she gets two to go and pulls her team to within two with 15 to go here third quarter. Samantha Moore with it. Free throw line jumper. Front and back rim no good. Rebound is... Going to go to Louisville. Wow, great presence of mind down there. Laying on the ground. Gaston gets it out quickly. Now Norris. Norris puts it up. Oh, oh back rim. Mackenzie Norris almost gets a three at the buzzer to go. But the deficit remains two for the Louisville Lady Lions. The Lady Broncos of Mullen lead it 23-21. to 21. Eight minutes back up on the clock. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this. Whether it's an install, repair, or expansion, when it comes to your lawn looking its best because of a sprinkler system, call A to Z Lawn Pro and Landscaping. Get rid of the time and stress of needing to remember to water. Investing in a sprinkler system saves you money in the long run and ups your home's value too. Sprinklers water consistently and evenly, so you don't have to try to. Have a system but want to cover more of your yard? They can help. Call A to Z Lawn today, 872-5182. Septic emergencies are right up there on the list of worst emergencies to have. Absolutely. The next time you're facing one, give Squire Septic Service a call. 870-0717. He's ready to take your call 24 hours a day. Absolutely. His sewer camera can find problems fast to save you money. Plus, he can clear trains with Roto-Rooter or Jetter. Oh, and Gary has Porta units, too. Squire Septic Service of Myrna. 870-0717. Don't wait to call until it's too late. Absolutely not. Welcome back to the Indian Gym. Eight minutes back up on the clock, and we've got ourselves a two-point game. If you're just joining us, our first game was a two-point victory for Adams Central. Our second game was a one-point victory for Malcolm, and this one right now sits at a two-point uh, advantage for Mullen. 
as Moore makes it a five-point advantage. The three-pointer is good on the near side for Moore. Second three of the game for Samantha, who now goes into double figures to lead the Broncos. 30 seconds gone here in the fourth quarter. It's a five-point advantage now for Mullen as Johnson wants to cut into that for Louisville, but she has to kick it out. Heilig with it now. Moore on her defensively. Back up to Ella Johnson. And they work a far side to Hans. Hans gets it down low to Voda. Voda can't get her shot to go, gets her own rebound, and is fouled on the putback attempt. Boy, great opportunity for Voda down low in the block area. Not able to get the shot to go, but you love the way that she stayed with the play and was able to get her own rebound and ultimately get to the line. Second foul on Licking. Voda's first shot no good. Voda's second shot is good. And that cuts the lead to four. Mullen facing the pressure of Louisville again, so Voda just dribbles around it. Moore calls for the ball, gets it, a couple of dribbles, and the jumper's good from just inside the free throw line. Samantha Moore is heating up again. Yeah, we've got her for 13 now in the game, and 10 of those coming in half number two. Samantha Moore settling right in around that per game average that she came into this one with, with 6.50 to go in the fourth quarter. And now she commits the foul as Highly dribbled around her. She tried the reach around to try to poke the ball out of there, but got a little bit too much contact. Well, she's been able to make that play a couple of times in this game, but that time got a little piece of the arm and wrist, got whistled for the foul. Oh, wow, what a lob into Ella Johnson. Ella got the ball, put the shot up, got her own rebound, and as she was falling to the ground, tried to just desperation heave it up at the rim, and they get the whistle. But again, that's what the coaches say, just throw that ball up there. You might earn yourself a shooting foul. I think they're going to call this a one and one. It was on the floor. Okay. Foul was on McCauley. That was her third. Shot was no good for Johnson. And here comes Swoboda. 28 to 22 is the advantage for Mullen. Swoboda into the lane, out to Licking. Over to Moore. Moore, one dribble. Back out to Licking. Now corner Swoboda. She wants a three. She gets a three. Great ball movement side to side by Mullen. Freed up Svoboda for the open look from the corner. Here comes Louisville desperately needing an answer. Norris across the timeline. Up to Heilig, working against Moore again. Swim move through the lane. Misses it, gets her own miss, and puts it up and in. That just shows that when you miss a shot, you know better than anyone where that's going to come off the rim, and she showed it there. She just ripped it right down, licking. Now oh. listens to the crowd and fires for three and gets all nylon. The Mullen Lady Broncos heating up from three now. Licking thought about passing that one. The crowd yelled at her to shoot it, and she did and knocked it down. Now the shot from Highly gets no good. Louisville desperately needing some scoring now. Swoboda the rebound and gets it over to Licking near side. Licking thought about shooting it again. Over to Soboda. She shoots it. She almost gets it to go. And the long rebound will flip possession over to Louisville. 34-24. Just like that, Brent. It yeah. balloons to a 10-point advantage for Mullen. Well, that's what the three-point shot does, right? I mean, Mullen knocks down three threes in this fourth quarter. And what was a two-point game coming into the quarter now has the Broncos up by 10. Louisville breaks the press and gets into the half court. Norris with it there. 5.15 to go, fourth quarter. 34-24 the lead for Mullen. High league hands it off to Hans. Hans now near side to Norris. Norris gets it all the way over to High league. She dribbles to the top, loses her dribble. Moore comes up on her, and she gets it over to Norris. Norris, that baseline drive she loves, puts up the shot. A little bit of... Hand on the ball there as she put the shot up, causes the miss, and the fight for the rebound results in a jump ball. Louisville to inbound on their near side block, and Louisville calls a timeout. 4.54 to go here in the fourth quarter. Mullen with a 34 to 24 advantage. Well, Brent, this gives us a little bit of time uh, to maybe talk about what these teams need to do down the line 
10 point advantage. Obviously, if you're the Louisville Lady Lions, you got to get your offense figured out. Yeah, I mean, this is a critical two, three minute stretch coming up for Louisville for sure. Down by 10, you got to be able to make some things happen on the offensive end. But, you know, really, it also, it also begins on the defensive end, too, right? I mean, you can't let Mullen really score anymore. You got to find stops, you got to find a way to score if you're the Lions. Meanwhile, for Mullen, Boy, just got hot in that little flurry right in the fourth quarter. They lead by two to start the quarter, and then Mora three, licking a three, Svoboda a three, and that's the way the three-point shot can change the game. When you're able to knock down a couple, boy, the next thing you know, you're able to create a little bit of a cushion like Mullen has going up by 10. Well, the time to get hot is towards the end of the game, and Mullen has certainly done that. They've knocked down a few shots here in a row to get this 10 point lead, which they have right now, 34-24. Just under five minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. I believe this is the largest lead we've seen by any team all day long so far. Well, Adam Central actually had a 13 point lead oh, in their right. game against Pleasanton, although Pleasanton came back. They did. Boy, did they ever. <laughs> that game ended in a two point victory for Adam Central. Highly. Dribbling against Moore, puts up the shot, it's no good. Licking tracks down the miss. Moore wants to push, long strides into the half court. Kicks it out, shot's no good for Koble. And we've got a foul going the other direction. They say Hannah Marshall got, oh well actually, uh, the near side official here is signaling Lexi Hans. Yeah, I, I think he kind of initially just pointed the wrong way. Hannah, okay. Hannah Marshall, had good position down low to get that rebound. And then the official blew blew the whistle right away, but I think I think he just kind of pointed the wrong way at first. Moore, oh. nifty dribbling, beautiful shot. She's showing everything she can do right there in that one after inbounding it. Louisville desperately needs a score. Down 12 and they turn it over. Two players on a different page. Highly thought she was going to dip, and Hans thought she was going to dive. Turnover into the hands of Mullen, looking to extend their lead. Moore receives the inbound, working against Norris. Between the legs, goes near to far. McCauley in the corner. Back to Moore, pulls up from 18, got it again. Oh my goodness, she's red hot. Yeah, she's starting to take over now. 17 in the game for Moore. 15, or excuse me, 14 of them coming here in the second half. 3.40 to go in the fourth. Louisville in desperation mode. They need some scores. Mullen is heating up offensively. Norris pulls for three knowing that. Front rim no good. Moore tracks down the rebound in the corner. She's double teamed and scoops it out to McCauley who has it. McCauley a couple dribbles now back to Moore. Mullen content to burn some clock here late. Now we have the largest lead of any team all day long as Mullen is up big 38 to 24. And we've got a timeout on the floor. I believe it was taken by Mullen with 3.08 to go here in the fourth quarter. Well, now this is a 14-point lead here, Brent. We're kind of getting down even further into this game. Louisville pretty much at this point needs to hit a couple of threes. We talked about how the three-point game can really make a difference, and they'd love to have it make a difference for them. Yeah, Mullen has just found their rhythm offensively here in this fourth quarter. They've made some threes. Samantha Moore has gotten hot here in the second half and they've been able to build this thing up to a 14-point lead. Remember, this was a two-point game mm -hmm. going into the fourth quarter, but uh, Mullen has outscored Louisville 15-3 to here in this fourth quarter to kind of uh, gain the big advantage with just over three minutes to go. Well, what a great day it's been, though, right? I oh, mean, great. The, the day started with uh, undefeated Pleasanton, number one ranked in D1, taking on Adams Central, who was top 10 ranked in C1, a great battle. Pleasanton erased a 13-point second-half deficit, got the game tied. Adams Central scored late. Pleasanton went to the line with 1.8 seconds left with a chance to tie, couldn't make the free throws, and Adams Central went on to win. And then 
in game two. Malcolm winning by one in overtime over North Central. Back to the action here between Mullen and Louisville. Mullen in the half court. Ball is slapped away, and I thought it dribbled out of bounds. Now the whistle comes, and we'll flip possession. Louisville with the ball. Clock just ticked under three to go here in this one. Louisville down 38-24 to Mullen. Norris with it near side. Couple of dribbles. Louisville really needs to value every single possession, but they've got to pick up the scoring pace a little bit here. Got to start getting some shots up. Almost on oh. cue, putting up the shot is highly. That was almost a step back three look, and she knocks it home. That'll help. Yeah, that was desperately needed for Louisville as they try to fight their way back into this. So Boda with it up top, double team, kicks it back to Licking, but she was fouled in doing so. It'll be one and one. No, I don't think so. I think that's just the sixth team foul against Louisville. Oh, yep. I, I hate to blame it on the official, but he did say one and one. I just I just can't <laughs> I can't let it go. I was just gonna let it flow. <laughs> oh man. Okay, now we're one and one. And he There he you go. It didn't he, take long. Yeah, he puts, You're he, right. He puts up the one and one that time as Moore was trying to receive the inbounds pass and was kind of hitting the back. She'll go to the line for one and one, and he kind of ironically put his fingers to the air too to signal that one. Moore's first shot is good. She earns the second. Well, Samantha Moore has kind of showed here in the second half why UNK said, come play for us. She has really taken over here in the second half. Second shot also good. 2.22 on the clock. Norris pushes it up for Louisville. They need to score quickly. Now she steps into a three. Side rim no good. McCauley with the rebound and gets it out to Moore. Moore wants to push up to Swoboda. Swoboda, a couple of dribbles. Moore flares behind her, gets it. Flips it to McCauley, five-foot jumper, no good. McCauley fights for the rebound with a couple of Lions, and it's a jump ball. Well, that makes it really intense when you announce it that way. McCauley fights for the rebound with a couple of Lions. <laughs> yeah. You just turned on the radio all of a sudden, didn't know what was going on. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Sobota to key it in. Gets it to the red hot. Samantha Moore, and she knocks down the jumper. Yeah, she has just taken over, especially in this fourth quarter. Shot on the other end is put up by Katz. It's no good, and it goes out of bounds back to Mullen. Well, I think this is going to be one of those games where you say the final score was not indicative of what this game was like. This was a two-point game going into the fourth, but Mullen has been able to just get hot and pull away here in this final eight minutes. McCauley with it, gets it to Moore just across half court. Dribbles out of harm's way. Gets it over to Swoboda. Ten-foot jumper is good. Samantha Moore with the assist there. Boy, she's hot shooting the ball, but she's also given her teammates some great opportunities in this one to hit, and Swoboda takes advantage there. Here comes Katz for Louisville. Work it around far side to Kalkowski. One dribble. Now out to Gaston. A near side to Leach. Leach goes baseline. Dribbles into the lane, puts up a shot, no good. Weak side rebound pulled down by Kalkowski and a jump ball underneath as the clock goes under one minute to go in this one. Broncos of Mullen, 44. Lions of Louisville, 27. Louisville to key it in. Nothing there initially. Close to a five second call and they finally get it in. Ball's on the floor in the lane. And we'll have a jump ball again, this time to Mullen. 56 flat showing on the time clock. So Boda will bring it up for Mullen. She gets it up to Welsh, and Welsh will attack. Goes down on the block, has it slapped away. McCauley the rebound, she misses. Rebound Welsh, she goes up, has the ball stripped away, and now here comes Louisville. Leach with it, facing a double team, and she double dribbled it. 36.5 on the clock. Mullen going to get this victory 
in the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. First annual. We hope it becomes annual. Driving in as Coble puts up the shot. Weak side rebound is pulled down by Louisville's Voda. Here comes Leach for Louisville. Quickly up to Katz. Katz far side corner. They work it around. Now driving baseline is Kalkowski. Get it out to Leach. Ball dribbles out there. Leach leaves it for Katz in the corner. Now up top to Gaston. Ten seconds to go. Louisville searching for one final shot. Katz gets it in the lane, drives in, puts up the shot, no good. And that will do it in our third game of four here today on KBBN and our streaming platforms. It's Mullen getting the 44 to 27 victory over the Lions of Louisville. We'll take one last commercial break and when we come back, we'll take a look at the stats from this one with Brent and that'll get us ready for our fourth and final broadcast of the day between Broken Bow and Oakland Craig. It's all coming up right here on 95.3 KBBN, as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Are prairie dogs or pocket gophers wreaking havoc in your fields and pastures? Then get rid of them with Rosol from Arrow Seed. Rosol for prairie dogs is a restricted-use pesticide approved for use by licensed pesticide applicators between October 1st and March 15th. Rosol for pocket gophers can be used year-round. Rosol is an easy-to-use bait that provides excellent acceptance, has superior weatherability, and proven reliability. To learn more about Rosol, call or stop into Arrow Seed in Broken Bow. Are your aches and pains preventing you from doing the things you love? Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. We offer complete one-on-one -on -one physical therapy for you. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. Team Physical Therapy is known as the best hands in town, and we will help you achieve your goals and keep you moving in 2021. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111, or check us out on the web at myteampt.com. Friendly Rivals, hometown pride, wearing your school's colors. Small towns are brought together cheering on their favorite teams. Agland ATV knows how hard the athletes and coaches work year-round and are proud to help sponsor the games of our customers and their kids and grandkids. We have built relationships with many of these families through the years and are proud of their success. Best of luck to all the local athletes from Agland ATV and Broken Bow. 872-3424. Agland ATV, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. 872-3424. Welcome back to the Indian Gym as we just wrapped up our third game of four here on KBBN and on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter with a look at the stats. Here's Brent. All right, Jeremy, thanks. Boy, this was a two-point game going into the fourth quarter. Then Mullen outscores Louisville 21-6 in the final eight minutes to pull away for a 44-27 victory. They were led by Samantha Moore. What a huge second half. She finishes with a game-high 21 points. 18 of them, excuse me, came in the second half, and the big quarter was the fourth where she scored 13 of her 21. So Samantha Moore, the UNK commit, leads the way for Mullen tonight with 21 game-high points. Rest of the scoring for Mullen went like this. Shelby Welsh with five. Lindy Coble had two. Kylie Licking with three. Taylor Svoboda in double figures with 10, and Brooke McCulley with three, all of those coming in the first half. Meanwhile, for Louisville, they were led by Mackenzie Norris today. She finished with 10. Eight of those came in the first half. The rest of the scoring for the Lions, Jennifer Katz with one, Avery Heilig with seven, Lauren Voda with one, Jalen Gaston with two, and Ella Johnson with six. So Mullen picks up their 10th win of the season as they improved to 10 and two overall, knocking off Louisville by a final score of 44 to 27. Mullen pulls away by outscoring the Lions 21 to six in that game changing fourth quarter. All right, thank you very much, Brent. Before we go to our fourth and final game of the morning, afternoon and evening, we wanna thank our sponsors that made this Mullen and Louisville broadcast available to you. They include First State Bank of Mullen, BD of Broken Bow, Mackey's Grocery, Consolidated, Sand Hills Golf Club, Govier Brothers Mortuary with the Arnold and Mullen Funeral Homes, Sand Hills Family Medicine, Nebraska State Bank, Rod's Body and Paint, Grocery Cart, Custer Federal State Bank, Trotter Service, Mead Lumber, Shelter Insurance Agent Brent Custer, A to Z Lawn Pro and Landscaping, Squire Septic Service, Arrow Seed, 
Team Physical Therapy and Agland ATV. Those were your radio sponsors this afternoon. Your video sponsors were Lashley Land, Liza Simonson, Gardner, Lautzenheiser, and Ryan PC, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, Sandhills PT, Triple Bless Boutique, Downey Drilling, Vieira Wireless, Insurance of the Heartland, Geared for Sports, Palmer Monument, Agland ATV, Shelter Insurance Agent Brent Custer, Meat Lumber, Grocery Cart, Govier Brothers Mortuary, BD, and First State Bank of Mullen. And that takes us to the fourth game, Brent. It does, yeah. Uh, they have put a little over 30 minutes up on the clock now, so it looks like we're going to have a little bit of time before we go into our final game between Broken Bow and Oakland Craig. It was uh, scheduled for 5 o'clock, and we haven't even hit 4.30 wow. yet, so that's how smooth this showcase has run today. So we're going to start right up at 5 o'clock. That means we've got a little over a half hour before the tip-off of Broken Bow and Oakland Craig. So with that said, we're going to step away and take a little break ourselves. We've been at this for a while, too, the three of us. And so uh, we're going to take a little break. We'll play a little bit of music. And then coming up shortly, it'll be live coverage of Broken Bow and Oakland Craig, the final game of the 2021 and first-ever Girls Basketball Showcase will be coming up on KBBN 95.3 FM and KBBN.com and continuing on our live video stream on all of our media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube.
your local agent. A to Z Lawn Pro and Landscaping, Squire Septic Service, AeroSeed, Team Physical Therapy, and Agland ATV. We've got a lot of businesses helping us with our live video stream of this game as well, and we're going to come back and thank them after these words. Saving for retirement can be easier when you make wise choices about your money. That's something Thrivent Financial has been helping Christians do for more than 100 years. We offer a wide range of products and services that help you meet your goals. And our financial professionals can guide you in choosing a retirement option that's right for you. Let's get you to where you want to go. Take the first step now. Call Scott Harvey today at 872-2511. Visit Square One Boutique soon, located inside Chapin's Furniture on the Square in Broken Bow. Their fall and winter items are all 30% off right now, and they have a clearance rack that is 50% off. That Christmas tree is down, and now it's time to spruce up the home. Chapin's has great home decor, furniture, and more that can make your house a home. Chapin's Furniture is so much more than a furniture store. Visit Chapin's and Square One Boutique on the south side of the square in Broken Bow. Mike Borders with Borders Law Office invites you to call him at 308-872-3311. The young people of Central Nebraska are our future, and that's why Mike supports broadcasts of high school sports. He knows it all starts with students learning the importance of balance, more specifically the balance of academics and sports. Call Borders Law Office at 872-3311. From general practice to real estate and agricultural law, Borders Law Office and Broken Bow, proud sponsors of this broadcast. The team at Clark Dental has been bringing bright smiles to the Broken Bow area for over 20 years. Dr. Brad Clark has a team of dedicated professionals who work hard to let every patient know they're in good hands. Family-friendly, helpful staff that will have you smiling with confidence. Clark Dental offers a full line of dental services from regular checkups to crowns, bridges, and implant-supported dentures. Call today for an appointment. A brilliant smile thanks to Clark Dental in Broken Bow. Is your New Year's resolution for 2021 to focus on your financial goals? Then Bruning Bank has your back. Get custom notifications with our new alerts feature. Simply sign in to your online banking to customize the alerts that suit your needs and choose how you would prefer to receive them. It's that easy. The Bruning Bank mobile app now features Credit Sense to help you monitor your credit score as well. And with the addition of Zelle, it's never been easier to send and receive money between family and friends. Call today or visit BruningBank.com for more information. Bruning Bank, member FDIC. If you are looking for a great place to live in Broken Bow without the responsibility of owning your own home, call Susan with Legacy Apartments at 870-0638. They have a two-bedroom apartment available now. Enjoy central air and heat with refrigerator, dishwasher, and your own washer and dryer. Great outdoor lighting provides a sense of security and snow removal is provided. Legacy Apartment Complex is located east of the post office in Broken Bow. Call Susan at 870-0638 to find out more on this great opportunity. Well, as we come back to well, the Indian Gym back. here in Broken Bow, want to send out a few more thank yous before we start talking basketball here tonight. And we want to say thanks to all of the businesses that you'll see flashing across your screen in case you're watching our live video stream tonight, which is available on all of our media platforms, including Sandhills Express Facebook page, also our Twitter feed at KBBN Sports, and on the KCNI KBBN YouTube page. Helping us with our live video stream today of Broken Bow and Oakland Craig from the Girls Basketball Showcase is Chapin's Furniture, Borders Law, Clark Dental, Legacy Apartments, Gateway Motors, Broken Bow Legends Neighborhood Grill, Downtown Broken Bow, Govier Brothers Mortuary with the Arnold and Mullen Funeral Homes, BD Broken Bow, Geared for Sports, Power Solutions, Nebraska State Bank, Grocery Cart, Meat Lumber, Shelter Insurance, Brent Custer, your local agent. Also live video stream coverage of today's event brought to you by Agland ATV, Palmer Monument, Insurance of the Heartland, Viero Wireless, Downey Drilling, Triple Bless Boutique, Culligan, Cobblestone Hotel and Suites, and Lashley Land. Oh boy, a big thank you to everybody helping us with our live video streaming and the radio coverage of this game coming up between Broken Bow and Oakland Craig. We'll take another time out when we come back. We'll be joined by Jeremy Scheip, and we'll start talking about the game. 
It's the final one of the day. Broken Bow and Oakland Craig coming up on Central Nebraska's Sports Source. Way Motors and Sandhills Motors, they offer warranty forever. It's exactly what it sounds like. No cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, and no deductible. It's powertrain coverage you can get on qualifying new and pre-owned vehicles with less than 100,000 miles. If you need a truck bed, they are now CM truck bed dealers too. Gateway Motors in Broken Bow and Sandhills Motors in Arnold, home of warranty forever. Ask them about it today. Legends Neighborhood Grill, your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant with a healthy twist. Located conveniently right on the square in Broken Bow. The kitchen opens up every day at 1130, ready to serve the whole family with delicious options. Takeout, curbside, and carryout are options, too, if you can't stay. Open every day of the week except Tuesday. Bring friends, bring family, bring everyone to Legends and Broken Bow. Open for your pre-game or post-game meals and drinks. At Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, they take pride in continuing to serve Central Nebraska and have been putting families first for over 60 years. Visit GovierBrothers.com or call 1-800-354-6340 for Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, where they are committed to the highest standards of service. BD would love for you to be a part of their great team. They offer competitive wages, a team environment, and day one benefits. Some include health, life, dental, tuition reimbursement, and more. Apply online at bd.com slash careers. BD loves supporting youth sports and the bright student athletes who work hard to compete in every contest. Remember bd.com slash careers to start your journey to being a part of their great team. It's time to get your tan on. Costa Styling Salon is thrilled to announce that right now you can get one month of unlimited tanning for just $25. Plus, it's available 24 hours a day. You go in and tan whenever it's convenient for you. They have two 20-minute beds and a 10-minute stand-up booth, all with new bulbs. That means a stronger tan. Special events, a vacation to a warm climate. Two reasons among many more to tan. One month of unlimited tanning for $25 at Costa Styling Salon in Broken Bow. Geared for Sports and Broken Bow has the gear and sportswear you need from head to toe. Right now, their focus is on your feet. See them for 20% off all regular price shoes. Also save an additional 10% off all clearance items. Brands like Brooks, Asics, and Under Armour are ready for you to browse. Open Monday to Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturday, 10 to 4. Geared for sports on the west side of the square in Broken Bow. Central Nebraska Electric in Ansley is a proud supporter of this broadcast and area high school sports action. Playing hard throughout the season takes a lot of work, and Todd salutes that dedication. Any electrical work you need done right the first time deserves a free estimate from Central Nebraska Electric. Call them at 750-6458. That's Central Nebraska Electric in Ansley, sponsoring this broadcast and wishing area teams good luck this season. And we come back to the and Indian Gym back. here in Broken Bow. This is the site of the first ever girls basketball showcase, an idea that really came from what has been established in Grand Island with boys basketball with the Heartland Hoops Classic, which happens in mid-February. Broken Bow head girls basketball coach Kelly Cooksley has attended that event. He's like, hey, do you think we could do something like that with girls basketball? Well, they have started it this year, and it has been a huge success with the game's that we have seen so far. And now we've got one game left as Broken Bow gets ready to take on Oakland Craig. We welcome in Jeremy Scheip who joins us. And Jeremy, as we start setting up the matchup of the final game of the day, Broken Bow undefeated, 11-0 coming in. At the beginning of the week, ranked number three in Class C1 by the Omaha World Herald. Now last season, they set a school record for most wins in a year, finishing the season at 23 and three, but they fell a step short of qualifying for the state tournament as they fell to Adam Central, who we actually saw earlier today in the girls showcase, uh, falling to Adam Central in the C14 district final. Meanwhile, Oakland Craig, they're eight and four this season, but had a great year last year. They competed in class C2. They move up to C1 this year. 
They were actually the top seed in C2 entering the state tournament a year ago as they entered the tournament at 25 and 1 overall. They lost in the semifinals to Ponca, but a great season last year for Oakland Craig. They come into this season really with a lot of youth. You look at their starting five, they've got three sophomores who are going to start. Their leading scorer is a sophomore. And the one thing that we will certainly see today is really good guard play because both of these teams have good sets of guards. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, and I'm really excited to see Sadie Nelson get out on the court. Uh, she leads Oakland Craig in scoring with just under 17 per game, and she also gets pretty active on the boards. But uh, when you talk about rebounding, Oakland Craig really depends on, uh, let's see here, I'm mixing up my names here a little bit. Shay Johnson, she she pulls down a lot of rebounds, nearly eight a game for them. So between the scoring of Nelson and the rebounding of Johnson, I think it's it's going to be a, a really fun game to see between these two teams. On the other side, got to see Broken Bow play last night. I was here in the Bow Dome and uh, had some trouble shooting the ball. And you know what? I just like to tell myself that, they were uh, saving them up for the next day. So we'll see if uh, if all those shots start following for Broken Bow tonight. Yeah, both teams played last night. You talked about Broken Bow in that hard, low-scoring defensive battle with Holdridge winning 30-18. to And Oakland Craig was on the road at Stanton last night and now comes to Broken Bow. They defeated Stanton 50-28 to last night. Again, Oakland Craig 8-4 and on the season, and Broken Bow is 11-0. and We'll take another time out. When we come back, we'll start setting up your starters. We'll try to do a little recap if you're just joining us as to what has happened so far today at this girls' basketball showcase. It's all coming up on KBBN Radio. your local Vermeer dealer. With Vermeer equipment, you're getting more than a machine. You're investing in quality parts, local service, and support from your Vermeer dealer. Also remember if you have a pickup truck or any diesel powered engine not working to your standards, Power Solutions can get it running strong. Whether it's shop service or field service repair, sales, service, and new equipment on hand, Power Solutions, your local Vermeer dealer and sponsors of this sports broadcast. Since 1917, Nebraska State Bank has been helping Custer County and its neighbors progress with innovative products and superior service. And they are here with you, helping you achieve your goals, reinvesting in our area by involvement, leadership, and donation as a means to help others strive and succeed and to further invest in our communities. With all of their locations here in Custer County, Nebraska State Bank is proud to serve you in Callaway, Myrna, and two locations in Broken Bow and online anywhere all the time at nesb.bank. Nebraska State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. One thing we definitely desire perfection on is our vehicles. You want something that gets you to where you're going comfortably while looking great. Whether storm damage, deer damage, or insurance claim, take your ride to Rod's Body and Paint Broken Bow. They're the collision specialist. You should call 308-872-5346. Offering over 42 years of experience, they'll get you back on the road quickly without sacrificing quality. From dings and dents to full replacement and auto glass repair. Rod's Body and Paint, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. Need a snack or dish but don't want to stress about making it? The Grocery Cart Deli has your back. Give us a call at 872-2206. Meat and cheese trays are always a good go-to. Pick up your rack of pork ribs or a famous Chester's Fried Chicken and chicken strip boxes or meals. Need a cake? We can decorate it how you like. Don't stress about figuring out what dish you whip up. Ask for the help from the GK Deli. 872-2206, inside the grocery cart, Broken Bow. Custer Federal State Bank has been a home lender since their inception in 1925. They continue their commitment to this day, offering conventional loans, first-time homebuyer loans with grant funds available for down payment assistance, construction loans, and home equity loans. Remember, unlike many traditional lenders, they utilize secondary market funding to offer long-term fixed interest rates in all markets, including ag, commercial business, and home. Custer Federal State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. All loans are subject to credit approval. At Trotter Service, every oil change comes with a multi-point inspection. As a tire pro store, they bring customers only the best brands of wheels and tires at the best prices anywhere and have computer balancing and alignment too. They service semis and provide bulk fuel and propane delivery as well. 
at Trotter Service, your hometown automotive repair and tire store. Friendly service every time. Quality is what you'll find where your neighbors and your friends go see Trotter. The changing seasons are generally welcomed with open arms, but not in our homes. With the help of Mead Lumber, you can keep the chilly air where it belongs. Upgrading your home's insulation not only conserves energy and lowers your heating and cooling costs, it makes for better living with improved air quality, health, and warmth. Work with those who have pride in a highly trained team to help with your building and projects. The crew at Mead Lumber. Also, be sure to visit MeadLumber.com soon. Well, we come back to the well, Indian Gym the here in Broken Bow, affectionately known now as the Bow Dome. And we get ready for the final game of this girls basketball showcase between Broken Bow and Oakland Craig. Before we set up the starting lineups for this matchup, let's quickly get you caught up to date on what has happened so far here at the showcase in case you're just tuning in. Great opening game today. Adams Central, top 10 ranked in Class C1 against Pleasanton, the number one ranked team in Class D1, who had a 40-game winning streak coming in. It went right down to the wire. Pleasanton battled back and overcame a 13-point second-half deficit, tied the game late at 46. Adams Central scored late to go up by two. Pleasanton went to the line with 1.8 seconds left with a chance to tie it from the free-throw line. They couldn't convert, and Adams Central holds on to win it 48-46. Game two went to overtime, a hard, tough defensive battle that Malcolm was able to win over North Central in overtime, 33-32. And in the game that just finished, Mullen winning over Louisville, 44-27. It was a two-point game going into the fourth quarter, but then Mullen outscored Louisville 21-6 in the fourth, highlighted by Samantha Moore. The UNK commit had 13 of her game-high 21 points in the fourth quarter as Mullen won it over Louisville, 44-27. to 27. All right, let's take a look at your starting lineups now. For Oakland Craig, 8-4 and four on the season. Chaney Nelson, a 5'8 sophomore. Sid Gazinski, a 5'8 sophomore. Edie Anderson, 5'4 senior. Sadie Nelson, 5'9 sophomore. And McKenna Pearson, a 5'11 senior. The head coach is Scott Gazinski for the Oakland Craig Knights. Now for the Broken Bow Lady Indians. Undefeated, 11-0 on the season coming in. They're starting five. Kaylin Scott, 5'5 junior. Callie Staples, 5'7 senior. Callie White, 5'6 junior. Kaya Scott, 5'7 junior. And Cassidy Saborin, a 5'10 senior. In his fourth year as head coach, Kelly Cooksley leading the Lady Indians. Those are your starters. The tip is coming up next. Your voice lets him know he's safe. Shelter insurance does the same for you. Roadside assistance is now included with your auto policy. So if your car leaves you stranded, just call and we'll take care of you while you take care of what's most important. Find an agent at shelterinsurance.com. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Some restrictions apply. Shelter insurance's auto rates are falling. See agent Brent Custer for details. Whether it's an install, repair, or expansion, when it comes to your lawn looking its best because of a sprinkler system, call A to Z Lawn Pro and Landscaping. Get rid of the time and stress of needing to remember to water. Investing in a sprinkler system saves you money in the long run and ups your home's value, too. Sprinklers water consistently and evenly, so you don't have to try to. Have a system but want to cover more of your yard? They can help. Call A to Z Lawn today, 872-5182. And we're back to the and Indian gym the here Indian. in Broken Bow, getting ready now for the tip-off between the Lady Indians of Broken Bow and the Lady Knights of Oakland Craig. Kind of an interesting storyline here. These two teams met a few months ago in a district final in volleyball, which Broken Bow was able to win and then moved on to the state tournament. So as far as faces, the two teams kind of know each other, but we'll see how they shake out on the basketball court. Are you ready to go, Jeremy Scheip? I'm very ready. Here we go. We'll jump in the center circle in the tip controlled by Oakland Craig. Sadie Nelson averaging 17 points a game. She's a leading scorer for Oakland Craig. She handles it, now passes off. Kaylin Scott reaching in, trying to force the takeaway, but Oakland Craig able to hang on to the ball. Sadie Nelson to her left, picks up the bounce, looking inside. 
throws it in to Sid Gazinski, and then reaching in to force the tie-up is Cassidy Saborin. It's a jump ball, and the possession goes to Broken Bow. Well, there you go. That's the best start you can hope for on defense, getting a turnover somehow, some way. Full court press applied by Oakland Craig. Broken Bow trying to beat it with the bounce as Kaya Scott brings it across half court. Kaya throws it inside to Callie Staples, dumps it inside to Saborn, puts it up, short no good. They fight for the rebound, and a foul will be called. Well, and that's unfortunate for Broken Bow because Cassidy Saborn picks up her first foul just 30 seconds into the game, and you know that she really likes to be down there on the block playing defense for her team. That's tough to pick one up that quick. Full court press applied by Bo. Oakland Craig able to beat it. Sadie Nelson gets to the high post and it's knocked away by Kaya Scott. It's loose on the floor. Kaya goes to the floor, saves it into the hands of Staples. Callie will dribble it out into the corner. Now looks to attack. Spin move, shot up, off the back iron, no good. And the rebound pulled down by Oakland Craig. They'll send it out to Chaney Nelson who goes glass but cannot finish. She is fouled, though, and that'll send Chaney Nelson to the free throw line. That's going to go on Callie White. Callie doing a good job getting back and trying to get into a defensive position. Makes the miss happen, but sends her opponent to the line. And Chaney Nelson knocks down the first. Chaney is one of those very talented sophomore players for Oakland Craig. She averages 10 points a game. Second free throw is good. Made them both, and Oakland Craig leads 2 to nothing as we play just over a minute here in the opening quarter. Callie Staples off to Kalen Scott. Kalen able to bring it across half court with the bounce. Off to Kaya now. Kaya spinning, shoots it off the back iron. No good, but she'll be fouled, and Kaya Scott will go to the line for the Indians. So Kaya will look to answer from the free throw line. Foul was whistled against Sadie Nelson, her first. And the first free throw is no good. Really liked what Kaya did that time. You know, the, the Broken Bow offense is not scored one point yet in this one early. Kaya just said, well, I'm going to put the defense on their heels and force them to make a decision. Do they want to foul me or do they want me to have the layup? Kaya makes the second. So the score is two to one. Broken Bow with the pressure defense in the backcourt able to knock the ball away, but it goes out of bounds and stays with Oakland Craig. Sadie Nelson has the pass deflected into the hands of Kaylin Scott over to Kaya. She'll put it up, not able to finish. Rebound Staples, she lost it. And then as the ball is loose on the baseline, Broken Bow will turn it over. Two to one is our score. All the points have come from the free throw line so far. 6.29 to go in the first. Sadie Nelson for Oakland Craig gives it up to Chaney Nelson. Chaney back over to Sadie. Sadie at the top of the key gives it off to Gazinski who will fire from deep. No good, rebound inside Oakland Craig. Put back good by McKenna Pearson, the 5'11 senior. Well, that was very smart defense from Cassidy Saborin. She came over, made it a point to make sure that her arms were straight up and down so she didn't pick up a second foul. Callie Staples off to Kaya, top of the key. We played two minutes here in the first. Kaya will attack, puts it high up off the glass, count it, it's good, and she's fouled. So Kaya will go to the free throw line with an opportunity to tie the game. And the foul against Sadie Nelson. That Ooh. is her second already. And it goes without saying that Oakland Craig wants her on the floor. Yeah, she averages 17 points a game, but has two quick fouls in the opening two minutes as Kaya Scott knocks down the free throw and ties the game. We're tied at four. We're just under six minutes to go here in this opening quarter. Final game of the girls' basketball showcase here in Broken Bow. Oakland Craig with the ball. Pearson will skip it across to Sadie Nelson. Now back over to Chaney. Chaney Nelson trying to drive on Callie White. Has to kick it out. Sadie Nelson on the wing. Crossover against Kaylin Scott. Jocelyn Coleman into the game. Knocked it away. But Oakland Craig able to retrieve. Sadie Nelson swings it left side. Now gets it back. A deep three on the way. That's off the iron. No good. They fight for the rebound into the hands of Emma Shaw, who has just checked in for the Lady Indians. 
Callie Staples picks up the bounce, sends it ahead on the pass to Coleman. Skips it across to Kalen Scott. Kalen looks to drive. Runner in the lane. Off the back iron. No good. And the rebound pulled down by Oakland Craig. Chaney Nelson pushing it back the other way. Nice move to the rim but can't finish. And the rebound pulled down by Emma Shaw. Off to Staples. Diagonal pass to Coleman. Over to Kalen Scott. Saved it from going out of bounds into the hands of Staples. Now Staples attacks. Pull up jumper from the elbow. Is good. Broken Bow 6, Oakland Craig 4, under five minutes to go, opening quarter. Again, the pressure applied by Bo. Chaney Nelson lost it. Coleman with a steal. Now it's loose up in the air and controlled by Kalen Scott. Broken Bow basketball. Kalen trying to drive on Chaney Nelson off to Callie White. Now it's Coleman. Joe Coleman to her right. Off to Kalen Scott, bringing it back left. Now Callie Staples. Staples. Off to Coleman, little weave action out high for Broken Bow that they love to run. Coleman gets into the lane, puts it up on the rim, and it falls through. Well, I love the aggression there from Coleman. Just reversed her direction and scored. Chaney Nelson in the corner for Oakland Craig, tries to put it up, a whistle, and we're oh. gonna get a foul against Broken Bow. Oh man, that might not be the first entry in how to block a basketball, but it might be the third one in the encyclopedia. Boy, uh, I'm, I'm having a hard time swallowing that one if I'm Coach Cooksley or Emma Shaw. Well, good drive by Chaney Nelson. I mean, that's what you do. You force the official to make a call, and that gets Chaney Nelson to the free throw line as she makes the first. 4.05 to go, first quarter, Broken Bow 8, Oakland Craig 5. Chaney Nelson with her second. It is no good. Bounced around the rim, but there for the offensive rebound is Gazinski. Gazinski enters it down low to Pearson, out to Cheney Nelson. She lost it, but able to retrieve. Gazinski in the corner, lobs it for Pearson. Pearson trying to back down Saborin, kicks it out to Cheney Nelson. Cheney will drive, puts it up, score it, and she's fouled. And that's going to be the second on Cassidy Saborin, so... Oakland Craig with Sadie Nelson with two. Cassidy Saborin has two. And then to round out the fouls, Callie White and Emma Shaw each with one for Broken Bow. So Chaney Nelson with a real good opening quarter leading Oakland Craig here steps to the free throw line with a chance to tie the game. Free throw on the way, good. Got the free throw and we are tied at eight with 3.49 to go in the opening quarter. Oakland Craig will back off defensively and pick up the pressure in the half court. Staples, crossover to her left, hands it off to Kaya Scott, three ball on the way, that's off the mark, no good. Rebound fought for, and Joe Coleman had it, lost it, picked up by Staples. Staples will dump it down low to Emma Shaw, out to Kaya, another three on the way, good! Kaya Scott, a Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer, and Bo leads by three. Chaney Nelson lost the ball, it's loose, picked up by Kaya, Kaya to the rim, she'll put it up and score! Timeout, Oakland Craig. 3.14 to go in the first. Broken Bow 13, Oakland Craig 8. They're right up there on the list of worst emergencies to have. Absolutely. The next time you're facing one, give Squire Septic Service a call. 870-0717. He's ready to take your call 24 hours a day. Absolutely. His sewer camera can find problems fast to save you money. Plus, he can clear drains with Roto-Rooter or Jetter. Oh, and Gary has Porta units, too. Squire's Septic Service of Myrna, 870-0717. Don't wait to call until it's too late. Absolutely not. Well, when someone makes a three-point shot tonight, it'll be brought to you by the Prairie Eye Care Center. Long-distance shooting requires precision, accuracy, consistency, and great vision, all qualities of the Prairie Eye Care Center. Back to action after the timeout. Oakland Craig with the basketball. Three minutes left to go now in the opening quarter. Broken both 13, Oakland Craig 8. Ball deflected, but into the hands of Gazinski. Off to Sadie Nelson, back over to Cheney now. They'll enter it to the high post to Shade Johnson, who's into the game. Now Sadie Nelson, a three. Good. Sadie Nelson from the top of the key. And that brings Oakland Craig to within two. Callie Staples brings it across half court with the bounce. Off to Joe Coleman, and now it's Kaya Scott. Kaya looks to attack. Off to Staples now. 
Callie to her left, gets into the lane, puts it up in traffic, no good. Shaw there puts it up, no good. It's batted around, out of bounds. Last touched by Broken Bow. Well, Jeremy, this may be the most fluid offense in an opening quarter that we've seen today. I mean, both teams are shooting the ball pretty well. Yeah, they're they're both hitting the hitting the net quite a bit when they put the ball up there. And I think what that what the difference is is we're seeing a lot of making the easy pass in this game as opposed to the previous three games. Oakland Craig turns it over, Broken Bow with another steal. Here's Kaya from the top of the key. That's off the back iron, no good, and the rebound pulled down by Shade Johnson. Off to Sadie Nelson, who sends it ahead to Gazinski. Gazinski will go around Shaw, gets to the rim, and lays it up and in. And Kel Coach Kelly Cooksley is not very happy. He wanted Shaw, you know, not to commit the foul, but I think he's upset she didn't move her feet at all. Game tied at 13 with under two minutes to go in the first quarter. Kaylin Scott will dribble it to her left, crossover back to the right. Kaylin will put it up over Johnson, rolls off the rim, no good. And the rebound pulled down by Oakland Craig. Sadie Nelson wasn't ready for the pass and Broken Bow steals it again. And then at half court, Kaya went over and then back and got whistled for the turnover. Well, and I believe that by my mark anyway, unofficially that is Broken Bow's first turnover. So they make it to the 135 mark here in the first quarter before they commit their first turnover. On the flip side, they've turned Oakland Craig over five times. With the basketball, Oakland Craig, they swing it left side. Now Sadie Nelson bouncing it to Edie Anderson. Anderson back out to Sadie Nelson, and now it's Gazinski out to Anderson. Anderson looking to attack. Now they'll send it back out around the perimeter as Sadie Nelson bounces it back over to Anderson again. Inner pass to Pearson, up no good. Rebound controlled by Kaylin Scott. We near a minute left to go in the opening quarter. Tie game at 13. Kaylin Scott will give it up to Callie White. Now it's Staples at the top of the key as Broken Bow will reset the offense. Callie's going to launch it for three off the back iron, no good. And the rebound controlled by McKenna Pearson of Oakland Craig. They'll send it ahead to Edie Anderson. Anderson dribbles around White. She'll attack, put it up, and short, no good. Rebound fought for, still fought for, and finally pulled down by Callie White of Broken Bow. Off to Staples. Staples will bring it across half court with 30 seconds to go. Hallie McCaslin, a three, good! Hallie McCaslin, the freshman who just checked in, knocks it down for a Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer. 20 seconds left to go in the quarter. Broken Bow 16, Oakland Craig 13. Anderson handles deep on the wing. Back out to Nelson. Under 10 seconds to go. They find Gazinski, turnaround jumper. Shawl may have gotten a piece. Pearson saves it from going out of bounds. Here is Gazinski in the lane. Out for the three at the buzzer. Banked it in, they'll count it. Wow. Wow, what a quarter. <laughs> at the end of one, we're tied at 16. Any finches in your backyard? If not, then you need to get to Aeroseed and pick up their special finch blend. Aeroseed offers nine different varieties of bird seed to attract almost any type of bird to your feeder. Available in economically priced bulk quantities from one pound to 50, you can get as much or as little as you need at a great price. If you need a feeder, Arrow Seed carries a good variety of those as well. To attract and keep birds in your yard, stop into Arrow Seed in Broken Bow today. Are your aches and pains preventing you from doing the things you love? Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. We offer complete one-on-one -on -one physical therapy for you. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. Team Physical Therapy is known as the best hands in town, and we will help you achieve your goals and keep you moving in 2021. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111, or check us out on the web at myteampt.com. Oakland Craig's Sadie Nelson hitting a Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer at the buzzer to end the quarter, and so we are tied at 16 as we start the second. Oakland Craig with the basketball. Sadie Nelson throws it inside to Gazinski, enters it out to Anderson for a three. That's good. Another Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer. That from Edie Anderson, and Oakland Craig has taken a three-point lead. 
Staples sends it ahead to Kaya Scott. Kaya over to Callie White. Callie, one dribble, passes it off to Kaitlin Scott. Now Staples again. Callie, crossover to the high post, kicks it out. Callie White, a three. Yes, sir. <laughs> Noah, two. Her foot was on the line. Boy, the two teams just exchanging shots here in the opening half. Cheney Nelson dribbling through traffic. Leaves it for Gazinski, who can't hang on to the pass. She'll lose it out of bounds, and the ball goes back over to Bo. Well, if you look over at the coaching staff of Oakland Craig, several of them did the whole two-hand motion pushing towards the ground, which just means calm down. That was an unforced error there. Kaya Scott with the basketball. Broken Bow looking to retake the lead as they trail by one. Callie White off to Kaya. Deep three on the way. It's off the mark. No good. And the rebound controlled by McKenna Pearson of Oakland Craig. Just over a minute gone here in the second quarter. Pass deflected into the hands of Kaya Scott. She'll go up and not able to finish. Pearson pulls down the board. Sadie Nelson will bring it across the half-court line, send it ahead to Cheney Nelson. Nelson lost it, got it back, and then got whistled for the travel. Well, I think a lot of people would have been upset if that didn't end up being a travel call. That was a big switch of the pivot feet. <laughs> Emma Shaw coming back in for Broken Bow. Jocelyn Coleman has returned. So for Bow now, it's Coleman, Kaya Scott, Staples, White, and Shaw. Callie White to inbound the basketball, got a hurry, and she throws it away. Sadie Nelson the steal, off to Anderson, short with the shot. Chaney Nelson there for the offensive board. Chaney over to Sadie. Sadie, top of the key, back over to Chaney Nelson. Back to Sadie again. We've played over 90 seconds here in the quarter. Oakland Craig 19, Broken Bow 18. Kick out pass for a three on the way. It's off the mark, no good, it's out of bounds. Last touch by Oakland Craig. Well, that was good recovery there from Broken Bow. They, they really had to get in there and play some good defense after turning it over on their opponent's side of the court, but no harm on the scoreboard. Callie Staples lobs it for Callie White at the elbow. Callie looking for Staples on the give and go, gets it, puts it up high off the glass, no good. Staples, her own rebound, put back is good. And Bow reclaims the lead at 20 to 19. Backcourt pressure applied by Bo. Sadie Nelson to Cheney, knocked away by Callie Staples. Staples will challenge, and she scores. Sadie Nelson playing with two fouls, had to back away, and Staples was able to get the layup. Cheney Nelson across half court, lobs it ahead to Lauren Johnson, who's into the game now for the Knights. Back over to Cheney Nelson, entry pass down low to Pearson, up and under, right by Shaw, and puts it up with the left hand and scores. Wow, that was a great move. She got Shaw going up in the lane and then just scooped right around underneath. Kaya Scott, deep three, good! Kaya Scott, a Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer. Oh my goodness, the team's going back and forth with five minutes to go in the half. Sadie Nelson off to Anderson, inside to Pearson. Pearson goes up over Shaw and scores again. Broken Bow 25, Oakland Craig 23. And we haven't even played midway through the second quarter yet. Kaya Scott, spin move in the lane, kicks it out to Staples, a three on the way. Good! <laughs> Staples, a Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer. And the lead is five for Bo. We could just cut the last four or so minutes of actual timeout and put that together as one highlight. Wow. Bounce pass intended for Pearson. Knocked away, and Pearson takes it away from Shaw. Pearson has it blocked, but a foul will be called. And that'll send McKenna Pearson to the free throw line. McKenna Pearson, boy, really working hard down low. And Pearson will go to the line to shoot two. And with that foul, Coach Kutzley is, uh, is visibly upset because he's got to make the decision on what to do here for some size down in the lane. Both of his posts, each with two fouls each, Cassidy Saborin and Emma Shaw. Pearson made the first of two free throws. Well, Shaw's going to come out. Saborn will come back in. Hallie McCaslin is checked in as well for Broken Bow. 
Also on the court for the Indians, Kalen Scott, Jocelyn Coleman, and Callie Staples. Pearson misses the second of two free throws, but able to control the rebound is Lauren Johnson. Then she throws it away into the hands of Scott. Lobs it ahead to Staples. Staples gets into the lane. The pull-up jumper short. No good. Saborin chasing down the loose ball, and she will be fouled. Great to have you with us for this game between Broken Bow and Oakland Craig. We're live on the radio, KBBN 95.3 FM. Our radio call also accompanying our live video stream on all of our media platforms. Timeout on the court, 4.04 to go, first half. Broken Bow 28, Oakland Craig 24. I'm Pride, wearing your school's colors. Small towns are brought together cheering on their favorite teams. Agland ATV knows how hard the athletes and coaches work year-round and are proud to help sponsor the games of our customers and their kids and grandkids. We have built relationships with many of these families through the years and are proud of their success. Best of luck to all the local athletes from Agland ATV and Broken Bow. 872-3424. Agland ATV, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. 872-3424. Well, what an entertaining well, what an first inter half. Man, it has been up and down. Broken Bow 28, Oakland Craig 24 with just over four minutes to go in the first half. Staples will throw it into McCaslin out of the timeout. She'll drive, and she's fouled. Foul, I believe, on Cheney Nelson. That is her first, and it will send McCaslin to the line to shoot two. Love that aggression there. Got the inbounds and went right for the basket. And the free throw is good. Well, Broken Bow scored a total of 30 points in their game last night against Holdridge. With 4.01 to go in the first half, they have 29 here against Oakland Craig. Free throw by McCaslin, good. You know what, a lot of people talk about, you know, being nervous about playing two days in a row, but a lot of the time, it just kind of gets a lot of things out of the way going into that second game, playing two days in a row. Does some help, too. Broken Bow with the pressure in the backcourt. Oakland Craig, oh boy, a timeout. Coach Gazinski was right on top of it. He was counting right with the <laughs> official, and he called timeout before Oakland Craig turned it over. We'll keep it right here, 3.50 to go in the first half. Broken Bow leading Oakland Craig by a score of 30 to 24. Want to say thanks to Four County Heating and Air Helping us with our coverage today, owners Brian Hogg and Austin Cox serve the area with a combined 20 years of experience in the HVAC industry. They provide free estimates and 24-hour service. Make sure your heater is ready for the cold weather. Call Four County Heating and Air in Broken Bow, 872-2258. Well, this event was put together to showcase girls basketball in the state of Nebraska. And with the games that we have had in the first half here, boy, the game has certainly been showcased well. 3.45 to go in the second quarter. Broken Bow leading 30 to 24. Oakland Craig with the basketball. Gazinski off to Sadie Nelson. Sadie back over to Cheney now. Cheney Nelson to her left. Cut off by Coleman, now back out to Sadie. Over to Cheney again. Oakland Craig continuing to pass it around the perimeter. Here is Lauren Johnson with it. Johnson gives it back up to Sadie Nelson. Three ball on the way, it's off the mark, no good. And the rebound pulled down by Kaya Scott. Off to Coleman. Jocelyn Coleman guarded by Sadie Nelson as she sends it ahead to Kaya Scott. Kaya will turn and kick it out to Kalen. Kalen looks to drive, and there's going to be a foul call. Well, now we've got Cheney Nelson with two fouls as well as Sadie Nelson. So really for both teams, the foul's not really spreading out at all. This could get really interesting once we work our way into the second half. Kalen Scott misses the free throw. Yeah, you look at Broken Bow, their foul trouble has come with their inside players. Oakland Craig's foul problems have come with their guards. Mm -hmm. That could play into the offense plan for both of these teams too, taking the ball right at those players who have those high amounts of fouls. 
Kalen Scott converts on the free throw. Broken Bow by seven. This is their largest lead of the game as we hit three minutes left to go in the second quarter. Sadie Nelson throws it away. Callie White with a steal ahead to Kalen Scott. Oh, good hustle from behind by Cheney Nelson who knocked the ball away. It'll go out of bounds and stay with Broken Bow. Callie Staples to throw it in from the baseline. Callie, got to hurry, got to hurry. Oh, she didn't get it in. So Oakland Craig forces the turnover. Oh, that was amazing defense from Oakland Craig. They were denying close to the ball, and those far away had their eyes on the inbounder. Gazinski will send it ahead and over the head of Sadie Nelson. Another turnover for Oakland Craig as Broken Bow gets the ball back. 2.48 to go, second quarter. Broken Bow 31, Oakland Craig 24. That's Oakland Craig's 12th turnover. I only have Broken Bow down for a couple. Kalen Scott off to Staples. Three ball from the corner. Off the mark, no good, but they're going to call a foul, and I think it is Sadie Nelson. Well, she was the only one within about six or seven feet of her, so, yep, and it is against her. That's three in the first half, and you know that she's a big part of this team offensively and defensively, so it's going to be interesting here to see what Coach does. And that was a three-point attempt, so Staples goes to the line to shoot three. The first one is missed. Now the second of two on its way, good. Sadie Nelson will have to come out with the three fouls. Lauren Johnson will come in to replace her. Staples at the line for her third from the line. And the free throw good, made two of three. And the lead is nine now for Broken Bow. 2.35 to go in the first half. Kalen Scott with the quick hands, knocks the ball away on the inbounds pass. Ball stays with Oakland Craig, and the Knights will try to inbound again. Oakland Craig basketball. The Knights have went a little cold all of a sudden offensively as they trail by nine now. Broken Bow really applying the pressure in the backcourt. Kaczynski will send it ahead, losing it. Chaney Nelson got it back, though, and now a whistle. And we're going to get a foul called against Broken Bow, I believe. Foul will be on Kaya Scott. That'll be Kaya's first. Both teams one away from the bonus. This is a big final 220 of this quarter for Oakland Craig, trailing by nine now. Here is Edie Anderson with the ball, gives it up to Gazinski. Gazinski between the rings, finds Pearson at the high post. Back out to Gazinski for a three. It's off the mark, no good. Rebound, though, to Anderson. Gazinski now in the corner to Johnson. Back to Gazinski with under two minutes to go here in the second quarter. Gazinski looks to drive out to Cheney Nelson. Cheney gets into the lane, throws it up, no good. Rebound fought for, and Saborin rips it down for Bo. Outlet to Staples. Staples crossover to the left, goes Glass, can't finish. Rebound fought for and controlled by Oakland Craig. A minute 35 to go first half. Broken Bow 33, Oakland Craig 24. Here is Anderson, had it poked away from behind, and it's another turnover for the Knights. Staples leading the break back the other way. Kaya Scott, three ball, but first a whistle, and they'll say she took an extra step yeah, before kinda, she launched it. Kind of hopped into that one a little bit, and I think that was just because of the momentum of the last couple trips down the floor. Don't see her do that very much, and I just think the pace kind of caught up with her. Wanted to make that quick shot, and boy, what a shot it would have been, too, because that would have extended it to double digits. A minute 20 left to go here in half number one. Oakland Craig with the basketball. They'll send it ahead to Sadie Nelson, who comes back in with those three fouls. Sadie over to Cheney Nelson. Cheney looks to drive, now finds Sadie again. We've got one minute left to go in the second quarter. Sadie Nelson backs it out, now puts it in motion with the bounce. Off to Cheney. Cheney uses the ball screen, gets inside and loses it. Another turnover for the Knights. Staples with a basketball for Bo. Staples sends it ahead to Kalen Scott, back to Callie. Callie Staples will bring it to the top of the key, and Broken Bow might be slowing things down here a bit 
as we come to the end of the quarter. Jocelyn Coleman off to Cali Staples. Deep three. It's off the back iron. No good. Coleman the offensive rebound and the putback is good. 30 seconds left to go in the half. Broken Bow by 11. Their largest lead of the game. Sending it ahead to Sadie Nelson, and she throws it away. Staples the steal, and she's fouled at midcourt. That's the seventh team foul by Oakland Craig, so Staples will go to the line and shoot the one and one This one going to go again against Gasinski, her first. And, Brent, you talked a couple minutes ago about how this is going to be a big final couple minutes for Oakland Craig. Now I think, you know, they're begging for the locker room. They've just got to get into the locker room, talk things over, and get out here for the second half. Staples misses the front end. Rebound to Oakland Craig. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. In trouble is Gazinski, and now she throws it over the top of the defense to Cheney Nelson. Off to Pearson, now out to Sadie Nelson. Now Gazinski back to Sadie. Six seconds to go in the quarter. Cheney Nelson off to Gazinski. Two seconds to go. She'll launch it. It is no good at the buzzer. Boy, a solid closing to the second quarter for Broken Bow as the Indians will lead it at the half, 35-24. to 24. You're listening to live coverage of the Girls Basketball Showcase on KBBN 95.3 FM and KBBN.com. Also live video streaming going on on all of our media platforms. We'll come back for halftime, take a look at the numbers after this. Save Mike Visits Borders with you. Borders Law Office invites you to call him at 308-872-3311. The young people of Central Nebraska are our future, and that's why Mike supports broadcasts of high school sports. He knows it all starts with students learning the importance of balance, more specifically the balance of academics and sports. Call Borders Law Office at 872-3311. From general practice to real estate and agricultural law, Borders Law Office and Broken Bow, proud sponsors of this broadcast. The team at Clark Dental has been bringing bright smiles to the Broken Bow area for over 20 years. Dr. Brad Clark has a team of dedicated professionals who work hard to let every patient know they're in good hands. Family-friendly, helpful staff that will have you smiling with confidence. Clark Dental offers a full line of dental services from regular checkups to crowns, bridges, and implant-supported dentures. Call today for an appointment. A brilliant smile Thanks to Clark Dental in Broken Bow. There's still time to set new goals for 2021. Bank smarter and stretch your dollar further with Premier Checking from Bruning Bank. With Premier Checking, you earn interest on your account for completing simple actions you already do. Currently have an account with us? Transitioning takes less than a minute. Interested in setting up a new account? Sign up is quick and easy. Stop in or call one of our friendly customer service representatives to get started. Visit BruningBank.com for rates and details. Bruning Bank, member FDIC. If you are looking for a great place to live in Broken Bow without the responsibility of owning your own home, call Susan with Legacy Apartments at 870-0638. They have a two-bedroom apartment available now. Enjoy central air and heat with refrigerator, dishwasher, and your own washer and dryer. Great outdoor lighting provides a sense of security and snow removal is provided. Legacy Apartment Complex is located east of the post office in Broken Bow. Call Susan at 870-0638 to find out more on this great opportunity. At Gateway Motors and Sandhills Motors, they offer warranty forever. It's exactly what it sounds like. No cost to you. Unlimited time, unlimited mileage, and no deductible. It's powertrain coverage you can get on qualifying new and pre-owned vehicles with less than 100,000 miles. If you need a truck bed, they are now CM truck bed dealers too. Gateway Motors in Broken Bow and Sandhills Motors in Arnold, home of warranty forever. Ask them about it today. Legends Neighborhood Grill, your family-friendly sports bar and restaurant with a healthy twist. Located conveniently right on the square in Broken Bow. The kitchen opens up every day at 1130, ready to serve the whole family with delicious options. Takeout, curbside, and carryout are options, too, if you can't stay. 
Open every day of the week except Tuesday. Bring friends, bring family, bring everyone to Legends and Broken Bow. Open for your pre-game or post-game meals and drinks. At Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, they take pride in continuing to serve Central Nebraska and have been putting families first for over 60 years. Visit GovierBrothers.com or call 1-800-354-6340 for Govier Brothers Mortuary and the Arnold Mullen Funeral Home, where they are committed to the highest standards of service. And we bring you back to and the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow, Nebraska. We are at the half as Broken Bow leads it over Oakland Craig by a score of 35 to 24. Been a very entertaining opening half. The two teams really shot the ball well for the majority of the half. Oakland Craig kind of cooled off, especially in that final three, four minutes of the second quarter. That allowed Broken Bow to go on a run and get this lead out to 11. Well, it's certainly been an exciting day here at the Girls Basketball Showcase. As earlier, we had three very entertaining games. The first two games were about as close as it, and as exciting as you can possibly get. Adams Central stopped Pleasanton's 40-game winning streak as Pleasanton comes in. They're number one ranked in D1. They go up in class to take on top 10 ranked Adams Central in C1 here in the showcase. And Adams Central comes away with a two-point win. 48 to 46 and then in game two it went to overtime where North Central was uh, fell to Malcolm by a score of 33 to 32 and then in the game before this one Mullen able to pull away with a 21 to 6 run in the fourth quarter and then defeat Louisville 44 to 27 and as I'm rejoined by Jeremy Scheib Jeremy this first half very entertaining I mean we talked about how good the guard play was going to be and we saw it in that first half as the two teams just went right up and down the floor against one another. Yeah, the guard play was great, and so was the scoring. You know, besides that flurry that Mullen gave us uh, in the later parts of that game, really we've seen a lot of defense here today, but uh, it was kind of refreshing to see some offense and some good flow uh, between these two teams here early. I think we're in for a exciting second half. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. Oakland Craig had a hot first quarter, scored 16. They only got half as many in the second quarter with eight, 24 points. Their scoring rundown looks like this. Seven points for McKenna Pearson, six points apiece for Cheney Nelson and Sadie Nelson. Sadie Nelson's came on a pair of three-pointers in the first quarter. Cheney Nelson did a lot of work at the free throw line. She was four of five from there. Three points for Edie Anderson and two points for Sid Gasinski. And uh, all together as a team, Oakland Craig 5 of 7 from the free throw line there in the first half. For Broken Bow, their scoring breaks down like this. Kaya Scott with 12 to lead the Indians. Callie Staples right behind her with 11. 5 for Hallie McCaslin. Knocked home that 3 in the first quarter and then a couple of shots from the free throw line to make her 5. Jocelyn Coleman has a 2 in each quarter for her 4. And Callie White knocked home one from the field for her two. One point was from Kaylin Scott. She was one of two from the free throw line. As a team from the free throw line, Broken Bow 7 of 10. So shooting 70%, a good first half from the line for Broken Bow. Uh, looking at the comparison between these two teams and the stats that I wrote down, were dead even by my mark on rebounds. I think the story of this first half, Brent, comes when it, comes to the turnover category. Broken Bow, by my mark, only turning it over a handful of times. Oakland Craig, 15 times. So I know the Knights are going to want to clean that up going into the second half, and they could start to eat away with, at this lead if they do so. All right, Jeremy, thank you very much. And I think we better put it out there. Happy birthday, Jeremy oh. Scheib. <laughs> thank you. Are you going to tell everybody how old you are? Uh, yeah, I will. Okay. I will for one more year. I'm 29. Uh Oh, uh, actually, I turned 29 about four hours ago, so I'm four oh. hours into my 29th year on this <laughs> earth. All right. Well, hey, happy birthday, and thanks for spending your birthday up here at the Indian Gym with us. Hey, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It. We've had some good basketball to see, so that's a good birthday present. We have. Second half action is coming up. Broken Bow and Oakland Craig will be back to bring the second half to you after these words. 
BD would love for you to be a part of their great team. They offer competitive wages, a team environment, and day one benefits. Some include health, life, dental, tuition reimbursement, and more. Apply online at bd.com slash careers. BD loves supporting youth sports and the bright student athletes who work hard to compete in every contest. Remember bd.com slash careers to start your journey to being a part of their great team. It's time to get your tan on. Costa Styling Salon is thrilled to announce that right now you can get one month of unlimited tanning for just $25. Plus, it's available 24 hours a day. You go in and tan whenever it's convenient for you. They have two 20-minute beds and a 10-minute stand-up booth, all with new bulbs. That means a stronger tan. Special events, a vacation to a warm climate. Two reasons among many more to tan. One month of unlimited tanning for $25 at Costa Styling Salon in Broken Bow. And we come back to the and Indian Gym the here in Broken Bow. Want to say thank you to Viero Wireless for providing high-speed wireless internet to video stream high school sports, along with some of our radio broadcasts on KCNI KBBN Radio. Stop by their store in Broken Bow at 841 South D Street or call 872-1535 to find out how Viero Wireless can provide you with quality services with a plan to fit your needs and budget. So here we go, second half action is underway now. Broken Bow with the basketball. Callie Staples will throw it inside to Kaylin Scott. Kaylin trying to back in Sadie Nelson, who again is playing with three fouls. Staples with the ball off to Kaylin. Kaylin to her right. Picks up the bounce and now looking for help. Hands it off to Kaya. Kaya back out to Kaylin for a three. Off the mark, no good. Rebound pulled down by Oakland Craig. Both teams with their starting five on the floor to start the second half. Sadie Nelson off to Chaney. Chaney Nelson gets into the lane, puts oh. it up, and scores. Wow, what a move. It's kind of like a, if it was at the three-point line, you'd call it a step-back three. That was like a step-back layup. Kaylin Scott across half court. Broken bow 35, Oakland Craig 26, just underway here in the third quarter. Kaya Scott at the elbow, sends it off, and it's taken away in midair by Edie Anderson. Another turnover for Bow ahead to Chaney Nelson. Chaney picks up the bounce, and yeah, that's charge gonna be, yep. will be called. She threw that arm out there and didn't like the pressure that the double team was sending and just kind of shoved that elbow out there, and that's three. Yeah. That's, uh, that's Chaney Nelson and Sadie Nelson, both with three fouls with seven minutes to go in the third. Just over a minute gone here in this third quarter. Broken Bow 35, Oakland Craig 26. Callie Staples lobs it for Callie White, and then she throws it away. Uh, and that's just unfortunate. Callie White thought that she was going to be out there and as fast as Kaylin Scott is, she already had made the cut by the time the pass came out. Sadie Nelson trying to chase down the ball and does. Saves it from going out of bounds. Oakland Craig maintains possession. Kaczynski dribbles through the double team. Good pass fake. Gets to the rim. Can't finish, though. Rebound Pearson. And we're going to get a jump ball call. Wow. If she would have finished that play, that would have been highlight reel material for sure. Holy cow. And me, it threw my eyes out to the three-point line. I would have been faked out. Possession arrow leaves it in the hands of Oakland Craig. Sadie Nelson a three, it's good. Sadie Nelson a Prairie Eye Care Center three pointer. And Oakland Craig making a run here to start this third quarter. Kaya Scott off to Callie White. Callie will dribble to her left, reaching in to knock it away as Anderson White able to get it back though. Off to Kaya Scott, Kaya will dribble in on Gazinski, take the shot, short no good. And a foul gonna be called. Cassidy Saborin runs into Gazinski, and now Saborin has picked up her third. And that, that's tough, not only because it's her third foul, but I really thought that was pretty close to a 50-50 ball that both players were equally fighting for. I, I think the official saw contact there, but I think you could have called that one on either player. Oakland Craig has scored the first five of this quarter. They are to within six, and now Chaney Nelson gets whistled for a double dribble. That looked like the official signal double dribble, but he meant to do uh, a travel. Either could, way, could it's a turnover. Either, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of everything going on there. 
5.46 to go in the third. Broken Bow 35, Oakland Craig at 29. Broken Bow yet to score here in this third quarter. We've played over two minutes in it. Kaya Scott, top of the key, off to Callie White. Callie will try to go baseline. Cut off there, throws it out to Jocelyn Coleman, who checks in. Coleman, runner in the lane, off the mark, no good. Saves it from going out of bounds, and Broken Bow maintains possession. Chaney Nelson reaches in. Knocks the ball away. It goes out of bounds off of Oakland Craig. And Broken Bow will inbound on the side. Jocelyn Coleman will throw it into Callie Staples. Callie off to Callie White. Now it's Kaya Scott. Kaya picks it up deep beyond the arc. Off to Callie Staples again. Callie dribbles in, now dribbles out. Passes to Scott, mm. and Kaya took an extra step. Yeah, she was really invested on doing that shot fake, although it already kind of seemed like she had made her mind up that she was going to drive, and that caused the shuffle of the feet. Backcourt pressure applied by Bo. Oakland Craig breaks it. Here's Gazinski. We've played three minutes here in the third. Broken Bow leading by six. The dump down low to Pearson shoots, and she's fouled. That's going to be on Shaw. So now both of Broken Bow's post people Emma Shaw and Cassidy Saborin have three fouls. Well, it only makes sense that it would happen this way, right? Chaney Nelson and Sadie Nelson, the guards for Oakland Craig, each have three. And then we follow that right up with the two uh, post players for Broken Bow, each picking up their three. It's just like how the fouls were picked up in the first half, just one right after another. McKenna Pearson at the line, her first one no good. And Pearson will have one more coming. Free throw is no good. Missed them both. Shaw chases down the long rebound. Staples will bring it across the half-court line. Callie Staples off to Jocelyn Coleman. Coleman back to Callie. Deep three on the way. It's way off. No good. And it will go out of bounds off of Broken Bow. Well, Broken Bow was red hot really shooting the ball overall in the first half. But here in the third quarter have become a little cold. They've yet to score in this third quarter as Oakland Craig has trimmed what was an 11-point halftime lead down to six. Chaney Nelson through traffic has it knocked away from behind out of bounds. Last touch by Bo, and Oakland Craig will inbound on the baseline. Lauren Johnson will come in for Oakland Craig. Coming out, Edie Anderson. The lob for Sadie Nelson, misses off the back iron, no good, and now a foul gonna be called on McKenna Pearson. Emma Shaw with a good box out underneath, and Pearson gets whistled for the foul. That's her second. Callie Staples breaking the pressure with the bounce and then throws it away. Pass off the fingertips of Jocelyn Coleman. And it's a turnover for Broken Bow. Broken Bow's caught the turnover bug here early in the third quarter. Only about half of the quarter gone, and they've got four turnovers opposed to Oakland Craig's one. Sadie Nelson cut off at the elbow, throws it out to Chaney Nelson. Chaney trying to dribble by Kalen Scott, now passes off to Gazinski. Back over to Chaney Nelson. Chaney dumps it down low to Pearson. Out to Gazinski. Gazinski to Chaney Nelson. She'll step in, step back, fire from deep. Rims out. No good. Oh, man, that thing went half down and then popped out. Callie Staples ahead to Kaylin Scott. Layup. No good. She missed it. And the rebound to Chaney Nelson. Off to Sadie Nelson. Sadie left side of the lane. Gets inside. Puts it up and scores. And Oakland Craig is to within four. Again, Broken Bow yet to score in this third quarter as we've played over half of it. And now a whistle and a foul at the other end. Boy, things really heating up here. This officiating crew doing a good job of just kind of talking things over with the players on the, on the court and the coaches on the sideline. And it's just the natural progression of things that things are going to get a little bit more intense as we get into the later moments of this game. But they're really doing a good job of explaining everything to those on the floor. And Callie Staples, oh boy, they got bailed out. There's going to be a foul before the inbounds pass. Callie Staples was having all kinds of trouble getting the ball inbounded. 
was very close to a five second oh count, but then they get Cheney Nelson with a grab before the ball was inbounded, and Cheney Nelson has been whistled for her fourth foul. Well, and I was watching that middle lane, the grab was there. She held the player back from getting through, but away from the ball on an inbounds is a tough way to pick up your fourth. Jocelyn Coleman for a three. That's off the back iron, no good. Kalen Scott, the offensive rebound. Throws it out to Staples. Staples crossover, left side of the lane, kick out. Kalen three, off the mark, no good. Rebound fought for. Emma Shaw comes up with it. Ball's loose, picked up by Kaya, throws it up, no good. But she draws the foul. A little bit of running there from Emma Shaw. Tracks it down in the corner, ran out of real estate, just kind of had to throw it back in play. And fortunate for her, a teammate was there, and Kaya didn't hesitate, just went right for the score. Can Broken Bow score in this quarter? Yes, they can. The first point of the third quarter for Broken Bow after scoring 35 in the first half. 3.19 to go in the third. Kaya's second, no good, one of two. Broken Bow 36, Oakland Craig 31. 3.16 to go in the third quarter. Sadie Nelson sends it ahead and now gets it back. Sadie off to Gazinski, back over to Sadie Nelson. Now Gazinski again. Little perimeter passing shown by the Oakland Craig Knights. Lauren Johnson looks to drive baseline, throws it out to Sadie Nelson, touch pass over to Gazinski. Now the open look for three. It is in and out, no good. Rebound pulled down by Emma Shaw. Shaw will pass it off to Staples. Under three minutes to go in the quarter. Staples crossover into the lane. Kick out Kaya for a three. Good! Kaya Scott from downtown. A Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer. And Coach Kelly Cooksley calls timeout. 2.38 to go in the third. Your score, Broken Bow 39, Oakland Craig 31. Geared for Sports and Broken Bow has the gear and sportswear you need from head to toe. Right now, their focus is on your feet. See them for 20% off all regular price shoes. Also save an additional 10% off all clearance items. Brands like Brooks, Asics, and Under Armour are ready for you to browse. Open Monday to Friday, 10 to 6, and Saturday, 10 to 4. Geared for Sports on the west side of the square in Broken Bow. Well, as you've been hearing well, throughout been the hearing. broadcast tonight, every three-point shot made is brought to you by the Prairie Eye Care Center. Long-distance shooting requires precision, accuracy, consistency, and great vision. These are all qualities that Prairie Eye Care is known for. Stop by Prairie Eye Care Center on the square in Broken Bow with any vision questions you may have. 2.38 to go in the third. Broken Bow 39, Oakland Craig 31. Broken Bow finally able to score in this quarter. Big three just hit by Kaya Scott. Sadie Nelson quickly advancing it to the offensive end for Oakland Craig. Nelson in the corner, drives by Kaya Scott, keeps the bounce alive, a wild reverse layup try, no good. Rebound fought for, still loose on the floor, and it's still loose. Finally picked up by Oakland Craig, and Sadie Nelson lays it up and in. Well, and the far side official raised his hand completely in the air, never blew the whistle. I think he wanted to call that out of bounds, but I, from this far away, I don't know if it was or not, but he uh, he wanted to say it was, but it just didn't. Two minutes left to go in the quarter. Broken Bow with the basketball, leading by six. Kalen Scott off to Callie Staples. Callie trying to take Nelson off the bounce, gets to the rim, layup, good. Oh, what a great drive and finish by Callie Staples. Backcourt pressure applied by Bow. McKenna Pearson right at midcourt. She'll turn and face and send it ahead of the line to Lauren Johnson. Make that Edie Anderson my fault. Sadie Nelson, a deep three, rims out, no good, and the rebound pulled down by Kaya Scott. Kaya sends it ahead to Jocelyn Coleman. Coleman will attack, cut off in the block area, out to Kaya for a three. Yes! Kaya Scott, another Prairie Eye Care Center three-pointer, and just like that, the lead is back up to 11 for Bo. Sadie Nelson sends it ahead to Anderson. Anderson in trouble and a timeout. Oakland Craig, a minute six left to go in the quarter. Broken Bow finally finds some offense in the final three and a half minutes of this quarter, and they now lead 44-33. 
Alaska Electric in Ansley is a proud supporter of this broadcast and area high school sports action. Playing hard throughout the season takes a lot of work, and Todd salutes that dedication. Any electrical work you need done right the first time deserves a free estimate from Central Nebraska Electric. Call them at 750-6458. That's Central Nebraska Electric in Ansley, sponsoring this broadcast and wishing area teams good luck this season. Great to have you with us Great for Broken Bow Basketball on KBBN 95.3 FM and KBBN.com. Want to say a special hello to all of you who are tuning in and have tuned in during the course of the day for our live video streaming. We've been here for all four games on our video stream, and we appreciate you all tuning in. A big thank you as well to all of the sponsors that you've been seeing flashing across your screen during the live video streaming of today's first ever girls basketball showcase. Oakland Craig to inbound, coming out of the timeout. A minute six left to go in the third quarter. Broken Bow 44, Oakland Craig 33. Sadie Nelson throws it to the high post and then gets it back. Johnson off to Nelson, under a minute to go in the third. Gazinski now handles it. Bo stays in that 2-3 zone. Rarely, if ever, do they come out of it. Sadie Nelson, they swing it left side to Johnson, inside Pearson, out to Gazinski. She'll look to drive, out to Nelson, a three ball, off, no good. Rebound, Staples poked away from behind, but Callie able to chase down the loose ball. 30 seconds to go in the quarter. Callie Staples will attack, out to Callie White, now Kaylin Scott. Back over to Staples, she'll bring it back between the rings, and Bo will reset the half-court offense. Under 20 seconds to go in the quarter. We come to the end of the third. Staples off to Coleman. 12 seconds to go. A steal, a steal by Edie Anderson. Anderson will lay it up and score. Five seconds to go in the quarter. Will Brokenbow get a shot off? Staples with two, one, she'll launch. No, off the front iron, and it would not go down. So at the end of three, your score. Broken Bow 44, Oakland Craig 35. The eight and fourth, the final eight minutes. I'll get it out in a minute. It's been a long day, folks. I've been here since 10. Uh, the fourth quarter coming up. Then Broken Bow is your local Vermeer dealer. With Vermeer equipment, you're getting more than a machine. You're investing in quality parts, local service, and support from your Vermeer dealer. Also remember, if you have a pickup truck or any diesel-powered engine not working to your standards, Power Solutions can get it running strong. Whether it's shop service or field service repair, sales, service, and new equipment on hand, Power Solutions, your local Vermeer dealer and sponsors of this sports broadcast. Since 1917, Nebraska State Bank has been helping Custer County and its neighbors progress with innovative products and superior service. And they are here with you, helping you achieve your goals, reinvesting in our area by involvement, leadership, and donation as a means to help others strive and succeed and to further invest in our communities. With all of their locations here in Custer County, Nebraska State Bank is proud to serve you in Callaway, Myrna, and two locations in Broken Bow and online anywhere all the time at nesb.bank. Nebraska State Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. All right, back to action as we start the fourth quarter. Broken Bow with a basketball. The shot up no good. Rebound, though, to Broken Bow, and they maintain possession. Just underway, fourth quarter. Kaylin Scott looking to drive. She'll put it up and score. Oh, wow. What a move from Kaylin Scott. Nothing there initially. She backed it out and just took another shot at it and had the defender on their heels. Broken Bow back up by 11. Cheney Nelson, a three off the back iron, no good. Rebound, Kaya Scott. Kaya will lead the break, and now a whistle, and we've got a double dribble called. Broken Bow's first turnover in a while. They they really got control of the turnover bug that they had early in the third quarter to extend this lead back out. Sadie Nelson will bring it across the half-court line. We played about a minute here in the fourth. Broken Bow 46, Oakland Craig 35. Kaczynski will look to drive. Ball knocked away. It's out of bounds off of Broken Bow. Oakland Craig to inbound on the baseline. They'll throw it into Pearson. 
Off to Sadie Nelson. Now in the corner to Gazinski. Gazinski out to Nelson. Back to Gazinski again. She'll look to go baseline. Cut off by Staples. Gazinski will lob it down low to Pearson. Can't hang on to it, but she was fouled from behind. That's going to go against Saborin. And boy, Cassidy has just had a hard time staying on the floor tonight. She picks up her fourth. Yeah, they caught her with her hands in the back. And it's really easy to catch that when the, the person on the offensive side can't get to the ball. Inbounds pass to Anderson, who throws up a three. And that thing actually got stuck on the top of the backboard <laughs> and kind of got pinned up against the support. So it's out of bounds. And Broken Bow will have the ball. 6.35 to go in the fourth. Broken Bow leading 46-35. Callie Staples has had just another solid performance for Bo. Doing a lot of things you don't see in the stat sheet. Kaya Scott, the runner, off the back iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Pearson. Outlet pass to Sadie Nelson. Nelson had it knocked away from behind, but into the hands of Gazinski. Gazinski will lob it down low to Pearson. Pearson cut off by Shaw. Kick out, three ball, off the back iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Callie White. Off to Staples as we've played two minutes here in the fourth. Staples crossover into the lane, leaves it for uh, Kaylin Scott, throws it up on the rim, wouldn't go down, rebound Sadie Nelson, ahead to Chaney. Chaney Nelson will go up and cannot finish. Rebound pulled down by Shaw. Staples back the other way for Bo, sends it ahead to Callie White. Callie to her left, picks up the bounce, looks for help, a whistle, a timeout. Coach Cooksley, 5.41 to go in the fourth, Broken Bow 46. Oakland Craig, 35. We desire perfection on is our vehicles. You want something that gets you to where you're going comfortably while looking great. Whether storm damage, deer damage, or insurance claim, take your ride to Rod's Body and Paint Broken Bow. They're the collision specialist. You should call 308-872-5346. Offering over 42 years of experience, they'll get you back on the road quickly without sacrificing quality. From dings and dents to full replacement and auto glass repair. Rod's Body and Paint, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. Final game of this Final girls' game. basketball showcase being played here in Broken Bow, Nebraska. Games were originally planned to be played at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, but because of the COVID situation, they had to move the venue, and they settled on Broken Bow as the place, and boy, has it been a great day. 5.41 to go in the game. Broken Bow with the basketball. Jocelyn Coleman will hand it off to Kaya Scott. Now off to Callie White, back to Kaya. Kaya, spin move at the elbow, cut off, and she traveled with it. 5.31 to go. Broken Bow 46, Oakland Craig 35. Cheney Nelson will hand it off. With the basketball, Lauren Johnson leaves it for Sadie Nelson. Now off to Cheney. Cheney will give it back to Sadie. Lob down low to Pearson. Pearson kick out to Gazinski. Boy, Broken Bow really closes out well on the perimeter when they're in that 2-3 zone. And now we've got a foul coming. It'll be whistled against Broken Bow. Kaya Scott whistled for the personal, her second. But just the fourth team foul for Broken Bow. Oakland Craig will lob it for Nelson. Gets a good look at the basket, and she's able to score. Back to a nine-point game now as Jocelyn Coleman brings it across half court, leaves it for Hallie McCaslin. She'll put it up. No good. Gets her own rebound and scores. Boy, the freshman has given Brokovo some good offensive production off the bench tonight. A steal. Oh, McCaslin knocked it away, but right back into the hands of Cheney Nelson. Now the ball deflected up in the air again. Kaya Scott rips it down for Bo. Scott right at midcourt. Sends it ahead to Jocelyn Coleman. Back to Kaya. Kaya had it knocked away from behind, and it will go off the foot of Edie Anderson and out of bounds. It's off of Oakland Craig. Broken Bow will inbound on the baseline. I do want to mention real quick, Brent, to those of you that are watching our live stream on Facebook uh, we have nearly streamed for eight hours straight today. Facebook does have an eight-hour limit on their stream, so if our stream ends, it will be continuing on YouTube or you can listen on the radio. We hope it doesn't, but just in case, there's your, your warning. All right, Jeremy, thank you. Oh, Chaney Nelson coming out to 
challenge Kalen Scott is going to get whistled for the foul, and Chaney Nelson has fouled out with 4.28 left to go. And Coach Gazinski is pleading his case and pleading the case of his talented sophomore guard, Chaney Nelson. But unfortunately, Chaney will have to exit with 4.28 left to go in the game. That's tough because when she's been on the court, she's been playing super, super hard and tough, and you can tell that bench is the last place she wants to be. Broken Bow basketball, we still got 4.25 to go. They dump it down low to Saborn, who's back in for Bow. She's playing with four fouls. Callie Staples off to Kaya Scott. Three ball, short, no good. They chase for the rebound. Kaya gets it, lost it. Ball's loose, ripped away by Pearson, who gets it into the hands of Edie Anderson. Sends it ahead to Sadie Nelson. Sadie at the elbow, kicks it out to Lauren Johnson. Now Pearson trailing on the play, gives it back to Johnson with four minutes to go in the fourth. Edie Anderson controls now. Boy, Broken Bow really extends out high in that 2-3 zone. Gazinski with it. Swings it left over to Nelson, now gets it back over to Sadie. They dump it down low to Pearson, kick out. Gazinski for a three. It's off the back iron, no good. They fight for the board. And a whistle will be called against, a uh, foul will be called against Oakland Craig. Well, if you're Cassidy Saborin, you could almost see it when she turned around. Just a breath of fresh air. She's like, oh, my goodness, a call down here that didn't go against me. It's It's been tough sledding down there for Emma Schall and Cassidy Saborin, the post for Broken Bow, but this one goes the other way. Foul whistled on McKenna Pearson, and that's going to be her third. So Cassidy Saborn will go to the line. 3.38 to go in the fourth. Broken Bow 48, Oakland Craig 37. Saborn's free throw attempt is no good. Missed the front end, and the rebound controlled by Oakland Craig. Kaczynski will dribble by Kalen Scott. Now bounce it out to Edie Anderson. Over to Sadie Nelson. Gazinski now, Gazinski looking inside, nothing available, goes to Nelson. Nelson way out on the perimeter. Broken Bow just not letting Oakland Craig get anything in the middle of that zone right now. Lauren Johnson make it Gazinski trying to lob it inside, kick out Sadie Nelson for a three, no good. Rebound though to Edie Anderson who keeps the possession alive for Oakland Craig. Back to Nelson, Sadie for a three, off the mark again, no good. They fight for the rebound and a foul will be called. Well, those inside out passes, when they're able to get it in the post to Pearson, she's doing a great job of finding her teammates that are out outside of the wing for those three pointers. They're just not falling. And here in the fourth quarter, Oakland Craig just kind of coming up short on those shots that they were knocking down in the first half. And defensively, just a little bit slower to get to the ball when Broken Bow's moving it around. And now Pearson has picked up four fouls. And the free throw by Saborn is good. That Cassidy's first point of the night? That it was, yes. Second one for Saborn. Good, made them both. Now Saborn will come out. Emma Shaw comes in to replace her. 2.59 to go. Broken Bow now with their largest lead of the game at 13. They lead 50 to 37 with under three minutes to go in the fourth. Sadie Nelson sends it ahead to Lauren Johnson. Johnson had the ball knocked away, and it's taken away by Coleman. Whistle and a timeout. Broken Bow. Final game of the girls' basketball showcase. We've got 2.48 left to go in the fourth. Your score, Broken Bow 50, Oakland Craig 37. is proud to help bring you this sports broadcast featuring some amazing student athletes. At the grocery cart, we turn on the lights and unlock our doors every day, ready to serve you with a smile and helpfulness unmatched. We work hard to offer you great prices. Visit us online at thegkbrokenbow.com or seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. at the grocery cart in Broken Bow. Well, as we're starting well, to get close now to the end of this girls' basketball showcase, the first year for it, Jeremy, I would say it has been a success. What a great day. I'd say so. And I think there are going to be several people that are here in the gym and 
watching and listening at home that are going to want a second year. Jocelyn Coleman to lob it in, and she does to Callie Staples. Staples back over to Coleman. Coleman will bring it across half court. 2.40 to go in the game. Callie Staples swings it left side over to Kaylin Scott. Kaylin back over to Coleman. Coleman will look to attack, pull up jumper, off the back iron, no good. Rebound, Shawl put back, no. They fight for the board, and it's pulled down by McKenna Pearson of Oakland Craig. They send it ahead to Sadie Nelson. Sadie will send it off to Johnson. And now back over to Sadie Nelson. They dump it down low to Pearson. Pearson will turn and face. Reaching in is Kaya Scott. Oh. And they're going to call her for the foul. I, I'm going to have to voice my opinion on that one and not agree. Kaya did a great job. Got one hand over the top of the ball, one hand underneath. And the play progressed away from the official. Unless he can see through bodies, I don't think he saw that arm come in contact. And a steal by Bo. Kaya Scott steps in front of the pass and takes it away. Kaya will send it ahead to Callie Staples. We near two minutes left to go in the game. Broken Bow trying to improve to 12-0 on the season. Callie Staples will look to drive on the baseline. Cut off nicely by Johnson. Now sends it out to Kaya Scott. Kaya back over to Callie. We are under two minutes to go. Callie Staples brings it into the lane. The pull-up jumper off the back iron, no good. Rebound, Shawl. She'll put it up, can't score. And then Shawl went over the back and commits the foul. And she knew it, too. <laughs> she tried to do that little tiptoe backwards when she was going for the ball. But I, I feel her pain. When, when you've got height and you've got long arms, that ball is just its like high-hanging fruit. You just try to reach out there and grab it, and you can't stop yourself. Sadie Nelson will send it over left side to Johnson, back over to Sadie. Bo's defense in this fourth quarter has just been really solid in that 2-3 zone. Gazinski, a nice drive to the hoop. Scoop shot, no good. And the rebound pulled down by Kaylin Scott. Kaylin off to Cali Staples. Just a minute 24 left to go. Broken Bo leading 50-37. to Cali Staples off to Kaya for a three. Back iron, no good. Rebound McKenna Pearson of Oakland Craig. Then Kaya Scott knocks the ball away out of bounds. It'll stay with Oakland Craig. The Broken Bow really seeing this one through. They're playing tough all the way to the finish, staying in those passing lanes. Sadie Nelson with the ball. Just a minute five left to go. Sadie Nelson off to Lauren Johnson. Johnson has the ball taken away in midair by Callie Staples. Callie Staples will bring it out, and now Broken Bow could very well just dribble the clock out. 50 seconds to go. Broken Bow looking to go to 12 and 0 on the year. They got tested today, though. Great effort by a good young Oakland Craig basketball team. Ball knocked away by uh, from Kalen Scott, able to retrieve it though. Now Kaya handles it. And we got 30 seconds left to go. Callie Staples. Callie Staples keeps the ball alive. They're trying to foul her, but she just keeps dribbling away. Now off to Kaya Scott, 20 seconds to go. And we've got a timeout call. And I think that Coach Cooksley is going to go to his bench for the final 18 seconds. So we will just keep it here. And it will give us an opportunity to say thanks to all of the wonderful businesses that you have been hearing on our radio coverage or watching on our live video streaming coverage who have brought you this full day of basketball from here at the Indian Gym. Of course, we had the final two games featuring Mullen and now Broken Bow on the radio for you on KBBN. And then all day we've had the live video stream on our media platforms, and we can't do it without the great business support that we get. And we want to say thanks to all of the businesses who joined us for our coverage of this Nebraska basketball showcase today. All right, substitutions for Bo. Madison Jackson is in, McKinley Toby is in, Gracie Olchin in, Kennedy Garcia in, and on the inbounds pass, Garcia receives it and gets whistled for the travel. And now Co Oakland Craig will go to their bench as well. So we got... The reserves going against one another for the final 12 seconds of this game. Here's a batted ball by Kennedy Garcia. Garcia chasing after it. 
Oakland Craig able to hang on to the possession, though. Morgan Ray will give it up to Macy Johnson, who's into the game. Here's the shot up, no good. And that's the way the game is going to come to an end. So Broken Bow able to improve to 12-0 on the season as they outlast Oakland Craig in the final game of this girls basketball showcase. Your final score, Broken Bow 50 and Oakland Craig 37. Jeremy will add up the numbers. We'll come back and give them to you after these words on KBBN Radio. Custer Federal State Bank has been a home lender since their inception in 1925. They continue their commitment to this day, offering conventional loans, first-time homebuyer loans with grant funds available for down payment assistance, construction loans, and home equity loans. Remember, unlike many traditional lenders, they utilize secondary market funding to offer long-term fixed interest rates in all markets, including ag, commercial, business, and home. Custer Federal State Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. All loans are subject to credit approval. When you want the very best, we'll see Trotter. Where you'll always get more for your dollar. We're your little friendly store, and we're right next door. That's what we're here for. Go see Trotter. Trotter Service is your number one partner in keeping your operation running smoothly. Whether you need a new battery, brakes, an alignment, or any other repair, they have a specialist that'll get it done right. Can't get away from the farm or ranch? They offer bulk oil and fuel delivery, and on the farm tire truck service, too. Proud to work with the farmers and ranchers of the area. Trotter's Tire Pros. West Highway 2, Broken Bow. Ready or not, here comes the chilly season. Are you already noticing some cold drafts coming into your home chilling the air? Don't make your heating system work harder than it needs to. Talk to Mead Lumber and Broken Bow about insulation solutions to keep the cold where it belongs, outside. The helpful staff at Mead Lumber and Broken Bow can offer solutions that will save you money when the weather gets chilly. Talk to them today, East Highway 2, Broken Bow, Nebraska. What happened to paying one price and getting everything included? You buy an airline ticket and pay extra to bring a change of clothes, book a hotel room, and you're shelling out for Wi-Fi and overpriced bottled water. <laughs> really? Imagine my delight when I found out roadside assistance is now included with my shelter insurance auto policy. So if I get a flat tire and need a jump, I just call and they take care of me. There's no additional cost, but some restrictions apply. Shelter Insurance's auto rates are falling. See Agent Brent Custer for details. Whether it's an install, repair, or expansion, when it comes to your lawn looking its best because of a sprinkler system, call A to Z Lawn Pro and Landscaping. Get rid of the time and stress of needing to remember to water. Investing in a sprinkler system saves you money in the long run and ups your home's value, too. Sprinklers water consistently and evenly, so you don't have to try to. Have a system but want to cover more of your yard? They can help. Call A to Z Lawn today, 872-5182. We come back to the Indian Gym the here Indian. in Broken Bow. A great day of girls basketball. The idea of this event was to showcase girls basketball in the state of Nebraska, and it was showcased well here today. Our final game concludes with Broken Bow winning over Oakland Craig by a score of 50 to 37. And with your final numbers, here's Jeremy. We'll start with the Lady Knights. 37 points in this contest. Had a great first quarter and first half. 24 points in the first half, 13 in the second half to round things out. They were led by Sadie Nelson with 15, 9 there in the second half. Had a great third quarter. She knocked in 7 in the third. Uh, she was followed with 8 points. Cheney Nelson, 7 points for McKenna Pearson, 5 points for Edie Anderson, and 2 points for Sid Gazinski, Oakland Craig kind of caught the turnover bug there in the first half, really figured things out in the second half. They finished with 18 total turnovers, 19 rebounds for the Lady Knights. On the side of Broken Bow, 50 points, hot first half. More specifically, the second quarter for Broken Bow scored 35 points in the first half, 19 in the second quarter alone. They were led by Kaya Scott with 19. Callie Staples had 13. Seven points this afternoon for Hallie McCaslin. Great game for her. Four points for Jocelyn Coleman. Three points for Kaylin Scott. And two points apiece for Callie White and Cassidy Saborn. Of note, Broken Bow, 10 of 15 from the line. Oakland Craig, 5 of 9 from the line. So Broken Bow doing a good job of getting to the line. Things were pretty even when it came to rebounds. Broken Bow with 24 and you remember Oakland Craig had 19. So there's a look at the stats in this final game here today. And, Brent, we had good games all day long. It was awesome. Yeah, we did. It was just a great day of basketball. 
Uh, sometimes Coach Kelly Cooksley will come up and join us following a game, so we're going to give him a, just a couple more minutes to do that. Don't know if he will tonight or not because uh, he is kind of, uh, well, certainly one of the main organizers of this event, so whether he'll have time to come up and join us, I'm not really sure. But, uh, yeah, it's just a great day of basketball. And, again, I think I said this earlier in our coverage Listen, we knew the idea of the event was a great idea. But ultimately what makes the event is the games. Mm -hmm. And, boy, the games made for a great event today. Well, and you know that Coach Cooksley keeps an eye on not only the, the basketball that his team plays, but he really does good, do a good job of keeping an eye on all the basketball going on at all kinds of levels across the state. And when these matchups were being put together, I think they were put together well. Uh, we saw guards that matched up well together. We saw post players that matched up and, and really played against each other really well. And I think this is exciting for the future of this event. I certainly would put my vote in for wanting more events in the future. I think you'd probably be right alongside me, right, Brent? Yeah, I would. Uh, just a great day for girls basketball really across the entire state of Nebraska. We'll take one final time out. We'll come back to the Indian Gym here in Broken Bow after these words. Get there on the list of worst emergencies to have. Absolutely. The next time you're facing one, give Squire Septic Service a call. 870-0717. He's ready to take your call 24 hours a day. Absolutely. His sewer camera can find problems fast to save you money. Plus, he can clear drains with Roto-Rooter or Jetter. Oh, and Gary has Porta units too. Squire's Septic Service of Myrna, 870-0717. Don't wait to call until it's too late. Absolutely not. Gallagher Power Fence Systems from AeroSeed are safe, easy to install, and an economical way to contain your livestock. Choose from a wide range of fencing options, both permanent and portable, and from solar, electric, or battery operated to help you easily control and rotate your grazing areas. If your fencer ever needs repaired, AeroSeed can usually fix it in-house. Stop by AeroSeed and Broken Bow today for all your power fence needs. You've never really had a fencer until you've had a Gallagher fencer. Are your aches and pains preventing you from doing the things you love? Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. We offer complete one-on-one -on -one physical therapy for you. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111. Team Physical Therapy is known as the best hands in town, and we will help you achieve your goals and keep you moving in 2021. Call Team Physical Therapy, 872-5111, or check us out on the web at myteampt.com. Friendly Rivals, hometown pride, wearing your school's colors. Small towns are brought together cheering on their favorite teams. Agland ATV knows how hard the athletes and coaches work year-round and are proud to help sponsor the games of our customers and their kids and grandkids. We have built relationships with many of these families through the years and are proud of their success. Best of luck to all the local athletes from Agland ATV and Broken Bow. 872-3424. Agland ATV, West Highway 2, Broken Bow. 872-3424. And we are back to and wrap it up now. Oh, I think the coach is, I think the coach is going to come up. All right, this will be great. Great way to end the day. This was his idea. Coach Kelly Cooksley, and I think he's headed up to join us. As he does, we'll give you a quick recap of what went down here today at the Nebraska Girls Basketball Showcase. Game one, what a thriller. Went right down to the wire. Pleasanton battled back from a 13-point second half deficit, tied it early, but uh, tied it late, excuse me. But Adams Central able to win it over Pleasanton in game one, 48 to 46. Then in overtime, Malcolm winning over North Central in game two, 33 to 32. In the third game of the, game, uh, of the day, Mullen used a 21-6 run in the fourth quarter to pull away from Louisville and win it 44-27. And then in the game just concluded, Broken Bow able to win over Oakland Craig and improved to 12-0 on the season as Bow wins it by a final score of 52-37. And we have the coach of Broken Bow Girls Basketball with us now. Coach Kelly Cooksley joins us. Coach, before we talk about the game, between you and Oakland Craig, let's just talk about the day. Man, you have to be so thrilled with the way this day played out. I was talking about it earlier in the day. The idea for the event, everybody knew. What a great idea. But what ultimately makes the event are the games. Absolutely. You had great games today, partner. Yeah, yeah wow. we did. Uh, we had a little bit of everything. We had uh, a winning streak come to the end. 
or come come to the end um, with Pleasanton's 40 game winning streak coming to an end. Um, Adam Central really played a great game in that one. Um, then the next game, uh, Malcolm uh, North Central. I'll tell you what, North Central really played tough uh, defense on Malcolm, made things tough on them, and that was a back and forth affair as well. And uh, overtime, of course, we had to have an overtime game. Oh yeah, so, you bet. Um, but then that Louisville game, how about Samantha Moore, man? Well, she, she took over in the yes, fourth quarter, yes, didn't she? Yes, she did. She did. Uh, Louisville's a young team, and, uh, you know, Sam really kind of got after him a little bit there in that fourth, uh, played really well, and showed why she's a great player. Then our game, uh, back and forth, up and down, a lot of action, and um, I was pretty happy with it. And that's a good team. They're young as well, and they're, they're one of those teams that you want to play early. Uh, mm. mid-season not end of the season because they're they'll be a tough out um coach guz and uh coach anderson do a really good job and um uh it was I, I, and i gotta i have to give a shout out to all of the administrators mm. and coaches um this was a thing that might not have happened because of covid but everybody said hey let's see what happens and We'll come there. That is not an easy drive from Oakland. We went no. there two years yeah. ago for a summer camp, and it is a brutal drive. And uh, credit to them for willing to take that game, kind of anybody, anytime, anywhere. Uh, they've been to the state tournament, state semifinals, I believe, the last two years. So um, that was a that was a great win for us, and I'm super proud of uh, our team. But very thankful for the administrators and the coaches for their willingness to, I guess, what's the word I'm looking for? The willingness to, you know, kind of be flexible. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, 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 well said. And, you know, a lot of these, I mean, you guys did it. I think Oakland Craig played last night. Pleasanton played. You had a lot of teams here that were playing the night before yeah. and then came here to play this. Yeah. One of the things about the full day that really impressed me was you could tell that even to the players, this was a special day because you can tell by the energy that is out on the floor. Yeah. And, man, I tell you what, there was energy put into these games today. Absolutely. Uh, I think most – each team – or, excuse me, each uh, game had a top ten team in it. Uh, Oakland started the year preseason top ten. Yeah. So, I mean, they're not – they're not chopped liver by any means. Um I mean, there's just great matchups and teams and players and all over the floor today, and uh, hopefully we can keep building it up for yeah. next year. We already got a couple games lined up. Good, so, I'm glad to hear that. Yep. Yeah, once we get those contracts signed, uh, we'll start announcing them. And uh, you know, hey, girls deserve a day like this too. Absolutely. We have some, we have some tremendous um, female athletes in this state. I mean. There's a lot of girls out there going to the next level to do something. And, uh, you know, sometimes I think they get overlooked a little bit mm -hmm. by the boys. And uh, I'm a little partial because I've only coached girls for most of my career and uh, got a soft spot for them. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. But I want to give them their due. And uh, I was really happy with the way some of the girls were showcased today. So, uh, One final question. Your team moving forward, 12-0 and 0 start. Good performance today. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, the, the keys for your team moving forward? Great week for our program. We went undefeated, started on Monday with 9-10, uh, and then tough week. I mean, we went to McCook, played JV varsity there, then uh, had a couple days, played a very defensive, tough Holdridge team. We used a lot of legs last night. Mm -hmm. I was a little worried about that tonight. And uh, these guys get up and down on you too. And uh, I thought our girls really answered the 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 bell i really do uh next week carney catholic we go back to carney uh catholic where we have not played well there ever mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so um and they'll be ready to play coach petrie's an amazing coach he's won titles uh he's been to state he knows what he's doing and uh they'll always have kids that uh can dribble pass and shoot so and that's part of the game and then uh, Wood River, they're going to be, I think yeah. they're 10, 11, and 1 now. So, uh, and they got two two players as good as you'll see all year. And uh, it's going to be good for us. I mean, I love playing in games where you don't know if you're going to win. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's, what, that's what you really find out a lot about yourself. So, uh, 
thank you guys too for for coming here and doing this. Uh, I know our patrons at Bo, and then all the people across the the state that tuned in. I don't know what you guys could tell if you had any numbers or views and stuff. We, so. we had a few. Let me tell you, good. people were interested. Good, yeah. good. So I'm really I'm really thankful for you guys and your willingness to do this and uh, showcase some of our great Strive kids. Uh, we got a lot of compliments on that, and, and we have some of the best play-by-play -play in the state. So thank well, you guys for yeah. everything you do, and uh, we're showcasing the kids. So Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, thank you very much, yep. and uh, Mr. Ellis, of course, for all the things yeah. you do for us. I got to get you out of here. The Bucks kick off at 7. Oh, there's a game? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> like you, like you hey, didn't I know. My, I think I got my, my Bucks uh, face mask here. So. No, All I'm, right. I'm, I'm ready to go home and uh, kick the feet up and watch I, Tom, I, Tampa Tom throw for about 450 and four touchdowns. All so. right, man. You, de you right. deserve it. Hey, yep. thanks for all you do. Yep, thanks, guys. All right. Coach Kelly Cooksley joining us here on Casey and I and KBBN Radio. And that is the perfect way to conclude the day. Again, as we give you the scores, game one today, Adams Central 48, Pleasanton 46, Malcolm in overtime over North Central 33-32, Mullen over Louisville 44-27, and Broken Bow defeats Oakland Craig 50-37. That's going to do it for us. Big thanks to Gavin Higgins, Jeremy Scheib, who joined me throughout the day. Can't do what we do without these two guys. Appreciate them so much. Thanks to all the sponsors who helped us with the coverage, and thank you folks for tuning in and watching and listening. I'm Brent Apperson. Good night. Thank you for listening to our coverage of high school sports. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Also, a special word of thanks goes out to our sponsors who make our coverage possible. You, too, can thank those businesses by allowing them to be of service to you. Join us again next time for our continuing coverage of high school sports on Central Nebraska's Sports Source.